What's up, guys? Hey, guy. Hey, Sash. How's it going? Ready, ready to continue? A bit more Steins Gate Zero today. We just finished the first chapter yesterday. We're on chapter two now. Apparently, we had a route split at the end of yesterday's stream, so we'll see how that turns out. Hey, wandering. Gonna wait a couple minutes to get started, as per usual, just to give people time to join. If they so choose, you know, wait for those YouTube notifications. It usually takes them a couple seconds to go out. How was the copyright? Um, 21 copyright strikes on yesterday's stream. So there's been worse. Hey gamer. Also sub Kylie. What's the most you had? Uh, I think 21 copyright strikes is the most I've ever had, and that was also one that was during the My Darlings Embrace streams. The, uh, the Steins Gate streams are definitely the most copyright strikes I've ever had. And I've done live reactions to, um, um, <laughs> like, the Game Awards and stuff, where there's a lot of, like, marketed trailers and everything. <laughs> and, like, I occasionally get copyrights on those, but this one's definitely, this series has definitely brought the most copyrights, for sure. Is also a record label, yeah. That's so weird they're a record label though. Do they like use the games to promote their music? Or like is it all just a cycle? They make games, they make music for games, and then they make, you know, they just try to sell everything. started in just a second. Popcorn's ready. Hey, you did bring me popcorn. I'm like all out of snack foods. I definitely need to go and get some. <laughs> the main menu music hits though? Yeah, you're not wrong. I like the uh, music a lot better in this game than St OG Steins Gate, I think. Though I did really like the opening song for um, OG Steins Gate. Alright, my memes are posted to advertise my stream. Classic q -by maneuver. You guys want to go and drop some upvotes on those? Probably not as high quality as the um, 
meme I posted yesterday, but still. Another one I photoshopped nonetheless. Rockstar has its own record label now. Really? I mean, I guess that's not surprising. They're a pretty huge company now, thanks to our GTA 5. I mean, I guess they've always been one, but GTA 5 has been an actual, like, money machine for them. The artists are only allowed to work on mage games or their own singles. I mean, if they can work on their own singles, I, I guess they still have, like, a decent amount of freedom. Who's Kaneko? Was that, like, the person who made the soundtrack for this game? I just noticed this unlocked my um, my save here. I had locked this, but then I quit out of the game after I pressed locked. So it didn't like save that I locked the save. The irony in that. They're the people who make the OPs. Ah, gotcha. I've got my fitting outfit for today's stream as well. the standard uh, scientific white dress shirt and tie. <sighs> Have an event to attend? Well, if it's only four hours, I'll probably be streaming by the time you get back. The chapters in this game seem so much longer, so we might not actually beat uh, Chapter 2 on today's stream. It'll, I guess it'll kind of depend on how things go. But I was very shocked by how long Chapter 1 was. But people were saying that the game is, like, the same length as OG Science Gate, so maybe the route split that I took makes Chapter 2 a bit shorter. Chapter 1's really long to, like, establish everything and give you a bit of a recap of the last game. But I saw some people in chat were talking yesterday about how, um, um, like, some people were suggesting to play these games in, like, different orders. Um, but I genuinely can't believe how you would play this game without playing the OG Steins Gate. Like, this would completely ruin the experience. I'm only one chapter in, and I feel like everything would have been ruined about the original Steins Gate. Unless you guys were maybe talking about different science adventure games. And not just like this specifically, but God, this would completely ruin your experience of the OG game if you played this one first. Like, actually insane. So yeah, my recommendation would definitely be don't listen to those people. I hope my boy flashed yesterday. I don't know if he was here, but um, he was here for yesterday's stream and said he was he was gonna watch the vod. I hope he uh, watched the vod and had a good time. No, Steins Gate chronological order is dumb. What does that mean? Like release order is dumb. I guess you have to explain that one to me. I cracked my neck, like, just before I went live, and now I desperately want to crack my neck again. Skipping to zero is like skipping JoJo parts. It's true. Well, I'm not a huge fan of, um... JoJo Part 1. It's definitely a required watch. You gotta do it. And it's not like JoJo Part 1 is bad, but, like... You just can't skip that. Alright, I think we've waited long enough. I know some people are still going to get notifications late, but that's alright. Give a little bit of time for people to get in here. We left off at the end of last stream, for those of you who couldn't stick around for the entire time and haven't had a chance to watch the VOD yet. Um, we left off last stream with Okabe about to go to uh, Maho and the Doctor 
to give a report on his conversations with AI Kurasu, and uh, he had a panic attack and is now about to decide that he no longer wishes to be a part of the AI Kurasu program. Hey, look at that. I can remember things one day later. <laughs> Technically, it hasn't even been 24 hours, if you think about my eight-hour stream. I want to stop being a tester. When I started the conversation with that, both the doctor and Maha looked shocked. We were meeting in a room at a luxury hotel in the heart of Tokyo. Why don't we just meet at the office? It felt like the sort of secret meeting you'd see in a spy movie. Or maybe only felt that way because the old me wasn't completely gone. You can't just... It's irresponsible. Didn't she, like, specifically give us, like, multiple outs to not be a part of the program? Maho seemed to finally understand what I meant, and her anger was clear. Maho, Calm down, Maho. Linthalo is the only one helping us with this test. Or is the one helping us. I'm grateful you took up the offer at all. <laughs> Thank you, Sash. I appreciate that. If you quit here, you're not being irresponsible at all. Don't worry. The doctor smiled and offered me his hand. I took hold, hold of his giant hand and shook it back, but I looked down, unable to look him in the eye. I'm sorry. Still, I would have liked it if you could have continued. I took a quick look at the logs, and I see you've been talking to quite a bit. And the way AI Kurosu speaks to you is very different than what we hear at the lab. I'm gonna start referring when like they quote her like this, I'm gonna start referring to it as AI Kurosu. Because it's a bit easier to say than Amadeus Kurosu, but like helps everyone know that we're referring to the AI, not specifically real Kurosu. Even though we kinda know, because obviously real Kurosu being dead, it's hard to like different it's not hard to differentiate the two too much, but occasionally we go back and talk about memories. That's just a small thing I'm gonna start doing. Humans, by nature, are social animals. They change their words and actions depending on the situation and who they're speaking with. We can assume Amadeus is doing the same thing. That's why I wanted to continue the test a while longer. By the way, why did you decide to quit? Did talking to Amadeus become painful? No, it's the opposite. The opposite? Talking to Amadeus, to AI Kurosu, it's a lot of fun. But that scares me. And then I desperately tried to explain the feelings that were welling up within me, even though I still didn't quite understand them myself. I told them how scared I was that I was starting to see Kurosu and AI Kurosu as the same. I thought this might put a lot of stress on you. I'm really sorry. But the reaction of yours is interesting. In the sense that you're interacting with Amadeus from the perspective of someone who isn't a scientist, it's very valuable. I hope you'll forgive me for saying that. I'm a scientist to the core, you see. I understand that I'm the one being selfish here. Maho hadn't said a word for a while. She was frowning and seemed to be intently focused on studying the logs. I didn't want her looking at me because it made me feel guilty, but... Alright, if you want to stop, that's what will happen. But do you mind if we leave the access program on your phone? <laughs> that way you can still be tempted to talk to her? <laughs> From now on, it's up to you whether you want to talk to Amadeus or not. I'll tell, I'll tell AI Kurosu not to talk to you. 
are not to contact you. I don't want a relationship with you to end today. You're the first friend we've made in Japan. Also, Maho would be sad. <laughs> Professor? <laughs> I enjoy that he likes to uh, give Maho a lot of shit. It felt like giving in, but at the same time, I didn't want to lose my relationship with the doctor. My goal of going to VCU hadn't changed at all. But then the doctor got a call. Excuse me, I have to take this. Maho, make up with Lintolo while I'm gone, okay? The doctor left the room with a mischievous wink. I feel like something's up with the doctor, man. I feel like he's in on something. Gotta keep those connections. I mean, yeah, you can't just, like, sever the connection for no reason. It's important to network, especially when in college and things like that. The stream is not loading on my end, is it for you guys? Well, I mean, obviously, if you're watching this and responding to stuff. Weird. I wonder if it's just my phone. I was alone with Maho. I'm sorry for yelling at you. No. The professor is right. We're the ones asking you for a favor. Amadeus is like a sister to me. Or more like a child. I can't see the stream right here, you. Thank you. I appreciate the feedback. And it felt like you were throwing her away, so... I'm sorry, I can't help. I think I understand how you feel. Or at least I thought I did. Maho side. Man, a lot of people are fucking sighing in this game. Suzaha. This chick. Everyone just sighs at Okabe. His depression is like a big yawn. I'm no good, am I? My prefrontal cortex probably came out all screwed up when I was born. That has to be it. Huh? The prefrontal cortex is one of the parts of the brain that defines your personality. It handles information filtering. When there's something you don't want to admit, it cuts out that info, or deceives you as to its I don't understand. <laughs> In other words, it tries to hide your emotions and it tells lies. Not to other people, but to you. Nerd. <laughs> like how I'm trying to hide how I feel behind a wall of scientific jargon right now. She's like the less Sundere version of uh, Kurosu. She like she's old enough and mature enough now to acknowledge that she's being Sundere, but she can't stop herself. But she knows she just starts spouting scientific nonsense like this. <laughs> I think it's my prefrontal cortex that's doing it. That would apply just as well to the old me, Kiyoma. When I realized that, there was nothing I could say. I think that's true for everyone. It's worse for me. Just from now on, whenever you feel like it, talk to Amadeus. It doesn't have to be for long. I'll think about it. Thanks. Maho flopped back on the sofa. Can I ask you a question about Kurosu's mom? I happened to hear you and the professor talking about her at the party one time. Sundere Gate? The writer sure does like to put all those uh, Sundere's in this as possible, so... We know that for sure. You said that something happened at Kurosu's house. Oh, that. Maho seemed to remember quickly, and she nodded. 
We got a call from Karasu's mom. Someone set their house on fire. Was she okay? She said she was gone that day, so she was alright. That's a relief. After all that happened, I really didn't want Karasu's mother to have to go through any more. Karasu's mom seemed to really like me. <laughs> She would invite me over on my off days all the time. So I'm worried. I hope she's not caught up in anything weird. Weird? I noticed the way she said the phrase. A cold chill ran down my back. It wasn't just an arson case? Well... She seemed unsure if she should tell me. I urged her to speak. She nodded. Well, at first, local police investigated, but after that, some people are saying that they were with the, they were with the FBI. Wait. Some people saying they were with the FBI. Oh, okay. The FBI showed up. The FBI? This wasn't a case the FBI would usually be involved in. And supposedly, a neighbor saw the arson. And from what she said, they didn't look like your ordinary arsonists. What do you mean? There was more than one. She said they looked like some kind of special forces unit. They barely said a word, and once the fire started, they got right into the car and left. She's getting rounded, boys. I don't know if this is the right word, but they looked really good at their job. They said the fire spread fast. Was she trying to say it was no ordinary arson, but the work of a professional? I mean, I feel like that is the implication, yes. I couldn't laugh that away. I knew for a fact there were people like that in this world. And? And? The neighbors said they were speaking Russian. To remember, no Russian. The last good Call of Duty game, boys. What's the Dere type matchups? I mean, there's just Sundere in this game, I feel like. But the only Dere types I really know are Yandere and Sundere. I guess I'm not enough of a weeb, but those are the only two I know. The first thing that came to mind, whether I liked it or not, was Nakabachi. Half a year ago, he'd stolen a paper about time travel from Kurosu, his own daughter, and used it to seek asylum in Russia. Could that have something to do with it? One more thing. Right after Kurosu's death, something weird happened at the lab. Someone who said they were a Japanese detective visited us with some of the local police. They said it was a joint U.S.-Japan investigation into Kurosu's death. Of course, we helped as much as we could, but... A few days later, the university asked the police. And they said there was no such detective that had come from Japan. So the Japanese detective was a fake? That's not all. The local police said they never even searched our lab. You just, like, let them in to, like, search your shit for no, like, reason? Or, like, without proper identification? In America? In other words, not only was the detective a fake, but everyone who came and said they were with the police. They were also fakes? And after that, I... She shook a little and wrapped her arms around herself. I've started to wonder if there was something else going on with Kurosu's death. I'm not really a conspiracy theorist, but... I think that maybe Kurosu was killed for another reason. And whatever that reason was, it's been covered up. See you later, guy. <laughs> I was the one who killed Kurosu. The police never found out. They never would, probably. No one could prove a murder that it had been committed by a time traveler. So, 
Yeah, I guess, does that confirm then? Because now we're kind of in like the chicken and the egg scenario, right? So clarify for me this. We know in the normal timeline, Kurosu's dad would be the one to do it, right? If Okabe didn't time travel to kill Kurosu. So, in this timeline, is there technically two Okabes in the same timeline where Okabe kills uh, Kurosu? Or at one point, at what point is Kurosu already dead? You know. Or is it just always a loop? Always repeating until the Steins Gate world line. Where Okabe time travel. Okabe always kills her. But at some point, he hadn't time traveled yet, right? At some point, she was just dead. Okabe always kills her. Right, but like at some point, like the only reason Okabe times travels is because she's dead. So at some point, the origin point that caused him to time travel, Okabe's, or er, her dad kills Kurosu, right? Because that's like kind of a paradox thing. It's implied there was a start where Nakabachi killed her. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Is like in the original timeline, um, because Kurosu's death is a convergence point, right? We know she's always gonna die. It's her death that's the convergence point. But um, when we later find out what the real convergence point is. But, so at some point, the origin would have had to have been Nakabachi killing her, right? So are we in that timeline? No, I guess not, right? Because he's has that trauma. So a little bit of the chicken and the egg scenario there, I feel like. Where it's like, which came first? Okabe seeing dead Kurosu or him killing Kurosu? I hadn't really thought about that before. But yeah, at some point, the origin point, there's a world line where Nakabachi does it. Because how else are they investigating this case as well? I mean, it would be hard for them to get any evidence against Okabe. The real explanation is it's the choice of Stein's Gate, that's true. Well, no, it's the work of the organization, because it's a bad thing that happened. The choice of Steins Gate is when good things happen. The work of the organization is when bad things happen. <laughs> so, I mean, I guess... But, like, technically, even Time Traveler Okabe would still have the DNA. The same DNA as modern timeline Okabe. So they could still, like, track that stuff down, right? In the original timeline, Okabe was there twice. He was there twice at the beginning of the game. However, this isn't necessarily the exact same world line, but Okabe did kill her. Okay. I feel like there's just gotta be at least one origin point where he's the one that kills her. Which causes the loop. Not in the, like, OG line, before the line starts, like, when you're starting here, Nakabachi kills um, Kurosu. Okabe sees dead Kurosu. Time travels. Whoop. Kills Kurosu. And then loops. Hey, what's up, Magneta? What's happened since you weren't here? Um, nothing particular has happened yet. We've only been going for like 10 minutes so far. Um, basically, Okabe is like turned in his badge and doesn't want to be a beta tester anymore. For AI Kurosu, and Maho is revealing that she believes there's more to Kurosu's death than a, just a random murder. Because as we see here, the police had announced a foreign thief had snuck into the storeroom with the Radicon 
and Kurosu had been killed because she saw the thief. Supposedly, there was an international warrant out for the thief's arrest because he left the country. And when I killed Kurosu, there was one other person there, Dr. Nakabachi. It was eerie that his name hadn't come up at all. Russia, CERN, the time machine. I remember the future that Suzaha, or perhaps I should say John Titor, had spoke of. She said World War III was going to start within a decade. And it would be the time machine that set it off. Because, yeah, I guess my first thought would be here, too, is if, like, when they're investigating, would the logical conclusion to who the murderer was be Nakabachi? Like, he's confirmed to be at this place to give a conference. His daughter ends up dead in that same building. He flees the country. But, yeah, I guess now this kind of explains that, right? That CERN's covering it up. Or Russia. Somebody's covering it up. The EU and Russia would be in a race to develop the time machine, and then even America would intervene. That would be the spark. Classic America intervening at the last second during a war. Was I... Were we at the center of a chain of events that would result in the deaths of five billion people? Bro, Suzaha has explained this to you. This is like another one of those things where he's like, wait a minute, AI Kurosu, are you keep recording our conversations? And Kurosu's like, uh, yeah, I, I told you that already. Like, we, I said that straight up, like, to your face. And now he's having another one of those moments where, like, he's gonna run back to the, the lab and be like, Suzaha, do I start World War Three? And Suzaha will be like, Yes. <laughs> hey, Pletch. Thanks for coming. Have a good night, my friend. Thanks again for the shiny, by the way. I have immediately benched my King's Gambit in exchange for your King's Gambit. I appreciate it, as always. The master of shiny hunting, everybody, in Pokemon. Pletch. I couldn't help but feel that way. Because it's not a feeling. It is a fact. It's a certifiable fact. Susan had time travel to basically smack you upside the head and be like, you started World War III. Fix this shit, Okabe. That's not a feeling. Kurosu won't be able to rest in peace like this. I want to know the truth. What did you say? I was making fun of somebody on Discord? What? Okay, it wasn't anyone in our Discord. Uh, I was basically saying how, like, Okabe has just, like, come to the conclusion, like, 20 minutes too late for that he's the cause of, like, or he's at the center of World War III. The truth? I couldn't stop myself from shaking as I looked at Maho's face. You want to know the truth? That was dangerous. If she tried to learn the truth, there would be no doubt she'd put herself in danger. Ooh, they didn't HD up the henchmen. The rounders who came crashing through the Veil of Night. They just pulled this CG from the last game. Don't. Oh, they pulled that one too. My childhood friend who died in my arms after being shot in the head. And after that, the nightmarish and seemingly endless times loops. It's interesting that they keep using that one. She died in many other situations, but I guess that's the one that's, like, the most brutal. Well, technically, I think the one that would have been the most brutal, that we didn't actually see a CG of, is the taxi one. That's the one that freaked me out the most. Because all of the others are, in, like, she has instantaneous deaths, so it's, like, not as bad. The worst one is where he's trapped in the taxi, and the dude comes in and, like, shanks Mayuri as she, like, dies slowly. <laughs> 
It was her first death? No, the, her falling in front of the train wasn't her first death. That was like several down the line. But the worst one is for sure where she gets shanked. Now I know obviously they show the gunshot one because that's like the big turning point for Okabe as a character. But like, she has several other deaths. I guess the train is the most like cinematic one though. But yeah, luckily we didn't see the CG of her getting shanked in the taxi. That would have probably been a bit too much for me. That one was uh, pretty rough. Because if you think about it, all of her deaths are like instantaneous except that one. That's why that one stunned out to me. Or stuck out to me during all the loops. Is because that's the one where she's actually like going through it. Like all the others, pretty much gone. Well, I think the one where she gets hit by a car... Um, protecting Okabe, she doesn't immediately die. Um, but that one, she can at least feel happy because she gives her life to protect uh, Okabe. So, like, she's at least dying for what she really uses as a cause. Like, she's protecting her friend. So, she's not miserable. But the taxi one is just, like, senseless. She gets murdered. Like, fucking rough. That one's, that one's the one that stuck out stuck out to me the most. And they just kind of gloss over it, which is, I think, probably what contributes to it being so, like, freaky. Anyway, enough, enough discussing traumatic events in the past. We have future traumatic events to experience. All the horrors that I'd experienced in the Alpha World Lion King flooding back, and I fought to stifle a moan. But that's... that's something you should leave to the police. Do you think so? If nothing else, you shouldn't think you can do something about it yourself. Oh, poor Okabe. Old Okabe would have absolutely been like, I can do this myself. There's just so little one person can do. After I said that, I regretted it, but it was too late. Her gaze had turned into a piercing glare. Do you know something about what happened? My panic was about to show. I quickly covered my face with my hands. <laughs> it's like, what? What a defense is that? If I can't see you, you can't see me. If I can't see you, you can't see me. <laughs> Not suspicious. That's impossible, right? So. Yeah. Sorry. Whenever Karusu gets involved, I just can't help myself. I really like her. She was a really good girl. An amazing one. I liked her too. That's such a weird way to say that. She was a really good girl. Like you're talking to your sub. Yeah, I can tell by watching her. A heavy silence filled the air between us. I felt like I had to say something, but fortunately, the doctor came back just then. How about dinner? Maho and I nodded and stood up from the sofa. Okabe, will you tell me more about what Kurosu was like when she was here sometime? Uh, yeah, whenever you like. How about over dinner? I was just barely able to smile back. I saw a dark blue van come around the corner of the underground parking lot. Its tires squealed. It wasn't a Japanese car. It was a station wagon that looked like a sports car from some foreign manufacturer. I don't know a lot about cars, but supposedly if you purchased it from a dealer, it could easily go over 8 million yen. The reason I knew this was because the car's owner had told me. This is a Subaru? Very generous to say that a Subaru looked anything like a sports car. I thought he was gonna say it looked like it was like a Range Rover or something. Uh, 
Associate Professor Izaki came out from the driver's side. While I was eating with the doctor and Maho, he called me about something. When I told him I was having dinner with the two of them, he'd offered to drive us home. Doctor had, the doctor had tried to refuse, but Izaki had insisted so much he had no choice but to accept. He has a pretty nice car for an associate professor. This was because of a lot of the speculation around the college. Some people said his family was rich. Others said that he was the wife of a CEO or as or some uh, patron. Car sprite. Yeah, car got a sprite before the uh, actual professor did. This is like an advertisement for the uh, Subaru. Like, uh, they're trying to get some sponsorships like they did with IBM and with, uh, Dr. Pepper. Like, maybe we can get some Subaru deals. <laughs> You're right, Wandering, I am. He once quietly told me the truth, that he was single and spent all of his money on this car. <laughs> but who even knew if that was true? Izaki was acting like he was a professional chauffeur, opening the rear door and escorting the doctor and Maho. They thanked him and got inside. Maho went around to the back to load up her luggage. Not bad, Okabe. <laughs> Why does he sound so, uh, <laughs> skeevy? Not bad, Okabe! <laughs> He grinned and poked me with his elbow. You better not lose this connection, you know, for your future's sake. Yeah. He was a hard guy to hate, but for an associate professor, he seemed kind of shallow. It was one of the unfortunate things about him. He waved to me and opened the driver's side door. Hmm? What was that sound? About the same time I heard the sound, a hole appeared in the window of the passenger side. He screamed and fell. Then the rear window exploded. What the heck? I panicked. Was this some kind of supernatural phenomena? I honestly thought someone got stabbed. Kind of a weird gun sound effect. I was too confused to move. And then in the corner of my vision, I saw someone. A man I didn't know appeared out of the shadow of one of the pillars. He was holding something strange in his hand. It looked like a handgun. It's a... Jesus. What does he mean, strange? It's a gun. I guess he's not an American, he wouldn't know. It was tiny and had a short barrel, and kind of flat. I couldn't see any kind of silencer. Who was that? I remembered him from somewhere. I felt like we'd met. Where? I thought, but nothing came to me immediately. The man was standing there, mumbling something to himself. Woe to the world because of the things that cause people to stumble. Such things must come, but woe to the person whom they come. Your hand or foot causes you to stumble. Cut it off and throw it away. It is better for you to enter life maimed or crippled than to have two hands or two feet and be thrown into eternal fire. And if your eyes cause you to stumble, gouge them out and throw them away. It is better for you to enter life with one eye than to have two eyes and be thrown to the valley of the Hinam. What is that? Name of a valley in eastern Israel. Uh, Hebrew for basically hell. Okay. So this guy isn't CERN, he's just some fucking nut job? Hey, Blood Soul. How are you doing, man? There is an aura of intensity and madness about the man as he pointed his gun at us again. I don't know why that's in quotations. The soul's grant God, the soul is God granted dwelling in us, the children of God. 
They'll never yes, dwell yes, within silicon. Oh, so yeah, he's one of those people that's, that's, that's really mad that the doctor. Um... So that's why they mentioned that earlier that some people were very offended by uh, the mentioning of souls possibly being in technology. Which, to be honest, is quite an arbitrary thing to mention anyway. Just got done eating supper. Nice, what'd you have, man? Izaki stood up, turned around, and fled in terror, like a startled rabbit. The sound again. How many gunshots does this guy have in his gun? It looks so tiny. This guy's got the uh, fucking action movie gun. And the sound was so soft and light. I just realized how messed up my tie was. I kind of half-assed tied it without looking. <laughs> I couldn't even imagine that it was a gunshot. But this time, the car's windows didn't break. And it didn't blow a hole in me, either. It missed? Was he too focused on Izaki? But you won't be that lucky again. Move. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Panicked, Miho. But the doctor definitely just got shot, yeah? I wish, um, like with uh, My Darling's Embrace, I wish the CG gallery was unlocked before you beat the game. So now I gotta, like, manually screenshot some of these. Also, like, half of our view of Okabe is, like, this exact angle for, like, from behind and, like, just over his left shoulder. Uh, that sounds pretty good, Blood Soul. <laughs> I pushed Maho to the back seat and crawled to the driver's side. That seems like a dangerous place to be. Thankfully, the engine was running. I slammed on the pedal without even bothering to shut the door. The sound of the powerful engine shook the underground air. The attacker flinched at the incredible noise of vibration. But the car didn't move. <laughs> I was just gonna say, doesn't Okabe not know how to fucking drive? didn't move. Sift. You need to put it in drive! The doctor and Maho were keeping their heads down in the back seat, shouting loud enough to be heard over the engine. Fucking the one person that doesn't know how to drive got in the driver's seat. What's Maho doing? I guess she's panicking. Okabe's been around enough death to hear the gun go off and just kind of regroup. What game is this? It's a visual novel. Full of lots of trauma. Wait, he's here? Yeah, he got shot. Maho's too short to drive? Oh, wow. I took my foot off the accelerator. I glanced over at the gear shift. It was stuck next to the end. What am I supposed to do? Do you have a license? No! Huh? And then through the windshield, I saw the attacker ready his gun again. Yeah, what's the guy been doing? He was aiming at me. The look in his eyes told me he was ready to kill. Where is this dude? Where is he? A soul will not dwell within silicon. Crap! Cracks like a spider web appeared in the windshield. Something went past the side of my head. Well, it's true. Okabe can't die until uh, the 20, or 2025. So. Is the stream lagging? I just got that notification again. I felt a sharp pain, and at the same time, a ringing in my ears. All their sounds faded away and started to disappear. I felt myself passing out. Then Maho jumped over the seat and slid to the passenger side. Close the door! Why? My mind was pulled back to reality. Just fucking gun it! I slammed the door shut as she told me. She shifted from neutral to drive and leaned over on top of me to grab the wheel. 
Well, you can't just switch the gear without hitting the brakes. How did she switch? Whatever. I slammed the accelerator so hard that for a moment the wheels were almost spinning in place and the car leapt forward. <laughs> I want to screenshot this again as well. So we know she's fine. She doesn't have any blood on her in this CG. The attacker was getting closer. We were gonna hit him. I was about to take my foot off the accelerator when... Leave it! Maho shouted. I gritted my teeth and did as she said. There was no impact. Evidently, the attacker had leapt away at the last second to avoid getting crushed. There was no time to confirm it as the car raced through the parking garage. We were going too fast, and since Maho was controlling the car from the passenger seat, she couldn't keep it going in a straight line. I feel like driving is so easy. I mean, I guess it's just something that you do for a while here in the States that you get used to it. You do, you start driving at such a young age. But like, I have the utmost of confidence that if I was in the passenger seat, I could still drive a vehicle, like, pretty well. I mean, maybe there's a lot of, like, commotion going on here, so she can't, but I don't know. I feel like it wouldn't be that difficult. Maybe if we're gunning it and you're in the passenger seat, I don't know. The car spun left and right, and I was almost flung out the broken window. I grabbed onto the edge of the seat as hard as I could. We headed for the exit, slamming into walls and pillars as we went. Who was that guy? You don't have a driver's license, but you've had nightmares about driving? There's no need to have nightmares about driving, man. It's super easy. Like, actually free. Short people, SMH. Like, don't be uh, worried about driving at all, man. It's li it's just like riding a bike. Like, super simple. You see how many idiots there are on the road? I clicked when I saw Samus cursing. <laughs> Thanks, Matt. Isn't it a great shop? I have no idea. Uh, go right, go right. You let your permit expire four times? Bruh? Dude, I got my license the day I turned 16. I was all about it. I had been working jobs when I was in high school to save up money for a car. Your boy was on it, man. I wanted to drive so bad. I could see an exit sign right in front of us. I can't turn fast enough. I pressed the brake and put my hand on top of Maho's, turning the wheel to the right. But that was wrong. The rear tires slipped. The car spun in a circle. Yeah, don't hit the brake that fast. And then came to a stop. Are you okay? Don't ask the professor if he's okay. Yeah, what about the professor? I looked back and saw the doctor lying face up, giving me a thumbs up. Let me take over. I quickly put my hand on the door and got ready to get out of the driver's seat. Then I saw an old, creaky sedan rumbling towards us. It was the man from a moment ago. He was following us and moving fast. Get out! He's gonna ram us! The door won't open! It had, had it broken when we slammed into the wall? I grabbed Maho out of the passenger seat and rolled outside. The doctor rolled out the rear door. Oh, don't lay on the ground by the car. It was less than a second afterward that the sedan hit. If we'd been even just a little too slow, we would have been turned into mincemeat. It's a Suburban. <gasps> or not a Suburban. A Subaru. Those things have a pretty good crash rating. He could have gotten hit and survived. I stood up and offered Maho a hand, then moved away from the unrecognizable wreck that used to be a car. You okay? <sighs> Thanks. Ooh. I was just gonna say, is that dude alright? He 
certainly looks pretty fucked up. Also looks a bit more, um, feminine now that he's been smashed into the wall. You have no idea how to parallel park? It's probably from my last job, but I'm really good at it. Most cars nowadays have a backup camera anyway that will, like, guide you on, uh, parallel parking anyway, so. I don't think he's alright. What do you mean? I mean, his airbag went off. How did he fuck himself up so bad? <laughs> I was just thinking I should do a thumbnail, uh, but I think because of the blood on this scene, the thumbnail would get, uh, a, like, terms of service violation from YouTube, but... I was thinking, like, <laughs> the, the YouTuber in me was immediately like, I can use this as a thumbnail, and I can be in, like, the, uh, the driver's seat right here, and I would take a picture like this, where I'm, like, holding the wheel, and I'm like, <laughs> he's in the back seat, like, <laughs> smashed. Went on a joyride, and this, and you won't believe what happened. <laughs> You've only driven a handful of times. Do you guys have, like, good public transportation? How do you get places? I mean, it's just because where I would live, public transportation is always, like, absolute garbage, so I always needed to drive. <laughs> the attacker... The attacker's sedan was completely embedded in the rear half of the car we were driving. There was no way he would have survived. Uh, again, just me, I would make sure that the dude was dead or something. Like, if he had just, like, tried to assault me, I wouldn't wait to, like, get caught off guard by this fucker. Like, I would be... Like, I would approach the car and, like, bash the dude's head against the steering wheel or something. He took a couple shots at me. No way would I be like, Oh, man, that car accident probably took care of him. I would investigate. Plus, I would have so much adrenaline, I would be, like, so ready to be aggressive. Like, I know everyone has, like, different reacts to, um, or reactions to, um, like, adrenaline and these situations of, like, fight or flight. But, like, my response when I get adrenaline is, like, always aggression. Maybe it's the American in me. But, uh, like, I remember, like, I personally, I have been hit by a car while I was riding my bike. And my immediate was response was, like, when the guy got out of the vehicle to, like, see if I was okay, I tried to fight the guy. <laughs> like, that was, like, my initial response. But then my, I couldn't, like, stand up on my legs, so it didn't go anywhere. And he, like, just felt bad, so, like, when I got really aggressive and started yelling at him, the dude was, like, super apologetic. Um, but, like, that's my response to, like, this high, these high adrenaline moments is, like, Fah! Let's fucking go! So maybe Okabe would have had a different response. But that's mine. There were no tire marks on the ground, which meant he slammed into us without breaking. I shivered. I'd almost been killed. Anyway, I need to contact the cops. I was about to pull out my phone when the security guards heard the commotion and came running. Excuse me, call the police. Oh, these guys are not going to be your average police or security officers. The security guard nodded and contacted the police. Oh, never mind. Boring. I know this is about to be CERN. <laughs> ah, she really is short. Oh my god, Maho wears Crocs! <laughs> she wears Crocs. I mean, this is a very serious scene. I do appreciate the game having minor details. Um, like, such as, like, the flashes of red when he's, like, discovering that he's got, like, a near gunshot wound to his head. 
Doesn't Okabe in this timeline also remember that he's not fated to die until 2025? So doesn't... Shouldn't he feel a little bit safer? Or did that not happen in this, like, current world line? But I feel like he should know. I can feel a pulsing ache on the side of my head. A shot from the gun had grazed me. I hadn't felt that pain at all while driving. I fearfully reached up to touch it and felt blood flowing from my temple down my face. I gulped when I saw my fingertips had turned bright red. I like instinctively looked at my own hands. I almost saw Mayuri when she was shot in the head. I almost saw Kurasu when I killed her. The images felt like they were about to come flashing back to me, and I struggled to stay standing. You're covered in blood, did you get hit? Maha went pale. Is this a bad place to get hit? <laughs> he points to his temple. <laughs> There's something called the superficial temporal artery there. Let me see it. I'm gonna touch you a little. Ooh, they fucked up his face while drawing this. <laughs> he looked at the wound. When he touched me, I felt more pain, but I gritted my teeth. It's okay. You're not that badly hurt. Oh, I'm glad. Use this. He probably cares more about someone like Maho dying. Well, yeah, I understand that he would care more about, like, his friends getting hurt. Because that's how who Okabe is. But you would think in these scenarios he'd be a bit braver when he's trying to defend his friends because he knows he's not, like, fated to die on this day. Right. So he can do some reckless shit. I don't know. I don't remember what, if he knows that or not. I put the handkerchief he offered to me up to my temple. The guy who attacked us. He was the one at the seminar. Really? You don't remember? He was the guy you yelled at. Oh. That's right. It sounded like he was insulting Kurosu, so I shouted objection at him. That was the guy. Was this his way of getting back at me? Not a chance. The souls God granted dwell within us, the children of God. They'll never dwell within silicon. Huh? What's that? He was saying that before he fired the gun. If you can't 100% prove it, I wouldn't let someone shoot me. But he kind of has proved it, though. Amadeus. Was he talking about Amadeus? I don't know. I could faintly hear the police sirens. The hotel security guards and staff were starting to gather. Hey, how do we explain this? We tell them exactly what happened. I mean, we don't exactly know either. And then Maho's eyes went wide. She, the doctor, and the crowd were all staring at a single point. I looked and almost screamed. It's so weird that they don't give characters like this like a generic sprite for you to like know he's crazy or something. Even like a silhouette here. Woe to the world. Such things must come. Woe to the person through whom they come. The man crawled out from the wreckage of the sedan, covered in blood. See, this is again where he would come out of the sedan and I would be like... <laughs> He staggered to his feet. He looked like a zombie, especially some dude who just got into a massive car accident like this, half-conscious. I could take him. Fucking come at me, bro. 
All his limbs, except the one holding the gun, were pointed off in impossible directions, and I could see what looked like bones sticking out from them. His stomach was torn, and each time he crawled forward, I could see major organs covered in blood falling out of the hole. Jesus, this guy got real fucked up by this accident. But he moved towards us as if he felt no pain at all. It was such an awful sight no one could speak. The man unsteadily aimed his gun towards the doctor. No chance you could hit this shot in this amount of damage. This fire, this shot would fire wildly off to the crowd. He must have been on the verge of death because his arm was flailing around too much to aim. Okay, yeah, there we go. But the doctor still had an expression of pure terror and he seemed unable to move. <laughs> Blasphemy, soul, woe. <laughs> Professor, run! That would be like the worst thing you could do. A shot rang. Jesus, these are pretty graphic shots. Don't worry, guys, it's just spray paint. Don't worry, YouTube, it, it's just spray paint. We're painting the parking lot we were in. You know, they, they say paint the town red. Fresh blood flew out of the man's head, and his body was blown away as if it had been hit by a truck. He fell to the ground, catching his gun. Or still clutching his gun. He tried to call, crawl forward anyway, but he soon twitched and then stopped moving. The crowd screamed. Huh? huh? The attacker had been shot? Did he shoot himself? No, that gunshot was clearly different from the last. Who's there? Who just fired? I looked around. I could see several policemen coming from the entrance, but none of them had guns drawn. The crowd was nothing but security and hotel staff. I couldn't see any of them carrying a gun. So who fired? And where from? The way they took the attacker's head off with a single shot. Oh, is it Suzaha? Not just anyone could do that. What's going on? Of course, no one told me. <laughs> Okabe's like, no one gonna tell me what just happened? Afterward, the police took us into custody. We were taken to the police station and questioned until late into the night. Imagine getting fucking jumped by some psycho and then having to lose your entire night to getting questioned by the police when you're the victim. The sun was almost about to rise by the time we left. The police took me home in a patrol car. The doctor and Maho were having the police take them back to their hotel in Waco, so we split up in the front of the police station. Would you stay the night at that hotel again after you got, like, jumped? I wouldn't. We never did find out why the man had attacked us. I mean, you can kind of infer, right? Between the three of them, there's quite a few blood or brain cells swimming around in those three heads. Suzaha felt dizzy. That's strange, Suzaha thought and stopped moving. I will say, while I appreciate the perspective shifts, I wish we got to just become the other character that we were, um... We were, like, getting the perspective of. Instead of only be limited, limiting to Okabe. Like... I would like to just be Suzaha here. You know what I mean? You doing the spin-off? Is this not the spin-off? Oh, LBP. Got it. Does the visual novel ever explain that man? I mean, he's just some psycho dude who doesn't want souls in computers, right? Since she was in the middle of the sidewalk, other pedestrians looked irritated as they moved around her. She took a deep breath and waited, but she still felt dizzy. Actually, she was finding it difficult to stand. Was she hallucinating, or was the whole world starting to get blurry? All of the noise of the city around her suddenly felt far away. It was like she was diving underwater. Was this the reading Steiner ability that Uncle Okarine had talked about? Was she starting to acquire it as well? And then she realized how warm she felt. The truth hit her. 
She somehow managed to get back to the lab. It seems she was worse off than she thought. If she could have, she would have fallen to her knees right there. During the war and afterward, when she joined up with her dad's organization, she'd been hurt badly enough to go into a coma several times. What? People uh, casually surviving being in more than one coma? But this was the first time something like this has happened since she became a time traveler. But she hasn't even been a time traveler for that long, has she? This is bad. She looked up at the second floor. The lights were on. She honestly felt relieved to know her dad was there. She walked up the stairs. The door was unlocked. She didn't have the energy to speak, so she, tired. she tried to silently take off her shoes and then tripped. Oh. She fell forward. Uh. That hurt. Suzuhu! Daru was in the room. He saw her and ran over. You okay? Uh. Yeah. Uh. She rubbed her knee and tried to stand up, but staggered again and fell into his arms. Do, do still. What's wrong? Uh, Sorry, I'm me. feeling dizzy. Are you not feeling well, Suzaha? Are you alright? When she heard the voices, Suzaha finally realized that Yuki and Mayuri were also in the room. She let her guard down, she realized. Yuki see un unconcerned by Suzuha's obvious uneasiness, she walked over with a serious expression on her face. Suzuha, let me see your forehead. Yuki brushed her bangs aside and put her own forehead up against Suzuha's. I get that this is trying to convey like a mother-daughter moment here. But, like, who checks someone's temperature using their own forehead? That seems like a great way to cross-contaminate germs. Hey, you're sick? Let me put my face right up to yours and see. <laughs> I have a theory. If you spit on my face or breathe on me, and, uh, <laughs> like, right on my face, if I get sick in a day or two, we'll be able to figure out that you're sick. Like, I feel like everyone is always, I mean, like, my parents, too. You put the hand in the, someone's forehead and they're like, what? But I also don't know how reliable that even really is. But, like, you would just, like, from a distance, put your hand on their forehead and be like, are you okay? You good? Not, hey. <laughs> but I, you know, they're trying to be like, oh, it's a cute mother-daughter moment and it's going to... Tug at Suzaha's heartstrings as she remembers her mother, who was brutally murdered in front of her. Oh. <sighs> Suzaha's heart started pounding. She had distant memories of her mother doing this before. <laughs> got a terrible <laughs> fever. <laughs> huh? Daru put his big hand up to Suzaha's cheek as well. You're right. Do you have a cold? No, she has a fever. Mayuri. I'm fine. This will get better fast. Actually, won't it not get better fast, though? Because wouldn't Suzaha's immune system kind of be trash, considering she lives in an apocalyptic wasteland, and also in a future society where medicine has been ruined by war? Um, I feel like it would actually just in general be quite hard for, um, You know, to get better. Hey, don't push yourself. You need to go lie down right now, noob. Do people still say noob anymore? Net slang for newbie. Generally used on websites and in games to mock foolish behavior, attributing it to the target's inexperience. Noob. 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 Don't be such a noob, bro. Because that used to be super popular in the early 2000s, but I don't think people say that anymore. 
You're a noob? How dare you. I will pwn you for calling me such a noob. I am leaked at every game I play. I'll have you know. <laughs> Don't push yourself. Oh, wait. That's right. I know. I'm going to just rest for a bit. I used Noob a lot in Roblox in 2011. Yeah, like 11 years ago. More than a decade ago. Wait, people were playing Roblox a decade ago? Why do I think Roblox has just gotten popular in like the last two years? Suzaha used the last of her energy to reach the sofa. She collapsed on top of it and closed her eyes. Calm down, she told herself. Yeah, I also tell myself that when I'm feeling sick. I'll bring you a wet towel, okay? Why? Daru, where's Suzaha's change of clothes? It's here, all inside this. Of course, I don't go through. I don't go rummaging through it and go sniff sniff, you know. You don't stop being stupid. I'll infect you with my cold virus, brother. Suzaha kept her eyes shut as she complained. Can I just pick out something for her to change into? Why do they need to dress her? What's going on? <laughs> Thanks. I can't do it, obviously. Yeah. As she listened to the conversation going on around her, Suzaha felt a cold towel on her forehead. How do you feel? Sorry, big sis Mayu. Don't worry. I'm gonna go buy some medicine. You guys take care of her. Okay, bye. Can you stand up? I at least want to get you changed before your brother gets back. What are, why are they changing her? What's happening? Suzaha opened her eyes. Yuki was standing over her and looking down. No, I'm fine like this. This is how I've always done it. In fact, before Suzaha became a time traveler, there were many times when she'd be unable to rest even if she was sick. Many times she wasn't able to change her clothes or even lie down. Compared to that, this was nicer. No way! The most important part of a cold is when you just start to get it. What? But... No buts. Take your clothes off. Why? Yuki was a little more forceful than usual as she tried to take Suzaha's clothes off. Suzaha jumped up, surprised. Uh, I'm fine. I can do it myself. I don't get why why she needs to take her clothes off so bad. You're soaked with sweat. Mayuri, do you have dry towels? Yeah, here. Yuki took the towel that Mayuri had brought with the or from the shower room and gently wiped the sweat off of Suzaha's forehead and neck. That tickles. Stay still, you're not a little kid. <laughs> what? But... Suzaha shook as she was rubbed with a towel. Oh, lord. 
She wasn't used to being touched, and this was the first time since she was very young that anyone had done this to her. Uh, that's enough. I can do it myself. God, I tied my tie so awful. Whatever. You don't need to worry. I'm not worried. Suzaha grabbed the towel from Yuki, trying her best to hide herself from the gaze of the other two. She took off her clothes and wiped away the sweat. Her face felt really hot. She didn't know if it was because of the fever or not, but she was finding it difficult to think straight. Is this okay? She's gonna like accidentally slip and call Yuki mom here, right? But she's being a caretaker, so like you can just call, pass that off as like a fever dream or something. Remember how just before we watched a man get brutally murdered? I mean, yeah, but... Now we're into lewd incest scenes. She grabbed the new pair of underwear and clothes from Yuki, still trying to hide herself, and she put them on. They're just watching her change. When she laid back down on the sofa, Yuki put a blanket on her. Mayuri, you said this room doesn't have a washer, right? Yeah, it's always a problem. Mayushi will take these to the laundromat, okay? We've got to take care of each other at times like these. That's right. Are you hungry? Do you think you can eat? <laughs> Suzuha looked at Yuki and Mayuri and was about to mumble another refusal. But in the end, she gave up and pulled the blanket up to her nose. This was hard. I'm not that hungry. But you need to eat something before you take medicine. How about rice porridge? Gross. That's a good idea. Okay, I'll make it right away. Lie down for a bit, okay? Yeah. Suzuha is starting to fade from existence as uh, it's becoming less and less likely that Daro and Yuki hook up. Symptoms include beginning a fever. Daru came back from the drugstore a while later. I'm so tired. He was really out of breath. He must have gone running there and back. You're only exhausted because you never exercise, she thought to herself. But for some reason, the sight of her exhausted father made her happy. And she quickly shook her head. Thanks, Daru. I'm about to make rice porridge. Once she has that, give her medicine. I can't believe Okie Doki is about to stick on as like a catchphrase for this game. Daru walked over to Suzaha as he answered. How are you feeling? Not good. I guess all that stress caught up with you. I've never actually seen you take a break. This close up, Naru's like mouth uh, movements look really weird. It sounds like super exaggerated. Is what it looks like. This is really pathetic. Maybe I shouldn't stay here. Huh? I've been getting lazy. You're here, Dad. Big Sis Mayuri is here. And Big Sis Rumi. And then at some point, even Mom showed up. That doesn't land like any of the other ones. I mean, I think it's just part of it that Okie Dokie is such a like common phrase anyway. <laughs> because of that, sometimes I feel like I'm going to forget my mission. It starts to feel like this happy time will continue forever. And I find myself thinking that maybe there will never be a war. I start to fantasize about living like a normal girl. What's wrong with that? When Daru spoke, his folks was actually serious for once, and he was looking straight into Suzuha's eyes. It was the face of the father she knew so well. The man who was always there for her. So you leave this place, 
And where are you going to go? Well, inside the time machine or something. You know you can't stay in there, right? But... You know I can't leave my daughter there, right? Dad. For a moment, Suzuha was about to cry. She squeezed the blanket as hard as she could to stop. And then... Whoops! Got too serious. Need to slip back into ship post mode. <laughs> God. Hey, what's up, AK? Net slang. A catch all term for posts with inane jokes, memes, and other nonsense that adds little to no value. Accurate. A character's catchphrase is okay. Bruh. That's such a lame catchphrase. <laughs> Anyway, I like being around cute girls, and I look forward to going sniff sniff when you're not looking. I especially like girls who are all sick and sweaty. Stop. So you gotta get better soon if you don't want me panting over you. Yeah. Suzaha whispered back a response, then turned away from it, Adaru, and pulled the blanket closer. How close could she pull this blanket? That <laughs> feels like she's pulled it uh, so close to her so many times. There's not much room left. Oh, did my little speech solve your problem? Did I get bonus affection points? Stupid, I'll make you regret it when I do get better. Are you gonna put on boots and step on me or something like that? I'm gonna stick things under your fingernails. Please don't. Anything but that. Sorry. I would let Suzaha step on me. She could smell the pleasant scent of Mayuri and Yuki's cooking from the kitchen. Listen. Would you tell me what it is you're looking for every day? I might be able to help. Later. I'll tell you when we're alone. That's fine, but... It's not something I can let Big Sis Mayuri hear. If she feels guilty about not listening to the future, uh, Mayuri. Uh, there's no way she could tell Mayuri. Because she failed future Mayuri. Three days? Three days later. Suzuha was still sick. Yuki came over every day with Mayuri to check on her. Because of this, Suzuha was able to eat nutritious food and her fever had gone down. Now all that was left was to get her strength back. But still, Yuki kept telling her to lie down. That meant, for better or worse, Suzaha spent her whole day on the sofa half asleep. Somewhere in her half-awake mind, she heard a terribly off-key tune. I like that they keep uh, mentioning that Yuki like can't keep a fucking tone or a beat. That's actually kind of funny. Somewhere in her half-awake mind. Oh yeah, I already said that. Uh, Daru grinding for the Suzaha route. Yeah, he's on it, man. He's trying to get those points. He's like, completely ignoring the Yuki route. It's actually kind of hard to intentionally sing off-key. Since she also heard the sound of falling water, it was probably coming from the shower room. So Yuki's definitely gotten really close to uh, Daru and Mayuri if she can just take showers at their places. I would have to be super close to take a shower at somebody else's place. What is this song? Do you know, Ma? Yes, Suzaha had heard it when she was young. Her mother had been singing it just like she was now. But what exactly the song was about, she couldn't remember. I need to get up. I can't stay asleep forever. But even when she tried to open her eyes, they just wouldn't move. Her body must have needed more rest. Maybe Yuki was right and she needed to lie down more. She moaned and twisted. When she did, the blanket fell to the floor. 
She didn't feel like she had the energy to pick it up. She could sense someone standing up from the desk where Daru was used to the PC. Whoever they were, they came over and put the blanket on. I smell Mayuri. <laughs> Weirdly, Mayuri always smelled good, even when she wasn't using perfume. It was a slightly sweet smell, like a pale white flower. It was the scent, the scent that held her all night, on that distant day in the future when she lost her mother. Suzaha pulled her legs inside the blanket and grabbed onto her knees, like a baby in the womb. Memories went in and out of her mind as she lay there half asleep. Do you think mommy got hurt? Do you think she suffered? Oh, Jesus. She suddenly remembered what Kagari had said to her after they traveled through time. The day she left. At the last second, Mayuri had looked at Suzaha and Kagari inside the time machine and smiled. It was just like the gentle smile on Suzaha's mother's face when she died protecting her daughter. Did I wake you? No, I've been up for a while. Suzuha's route's so tragic. But, I mean, I feel like they definitely gotta show you these parts to show you Okabe kind of being selfish a little bit, right? I mean, I guess he acknowledges that he's being selfish, right? So it's not a, uh, as big of a surprise. But... They have to remind you constantly, like, why does he need to go back to save Kurusu? And this is why. Suzuha mentioning how everyone, like, brutally dies and, like, there's just kind of depression all around in the future if he doesn't. In this dark timeline. You want something to eat? Uh. Yeah. After she said yes, Suzuha snapped back to reality. Oh, there goes gravity. She was getting weaker. When she realized that, she forced her sick body off the sofa. Her head shook and she had to stop herself from falling forward, but she grabbed the back of the sofa and managed to stand on her own two feet. You shouldn't get up so quickly like that. Am I off base to think that she's actually feeling, like, sickly because her parents are, like, diverging from actually hooking up? Or what if her not being born is, or, like, her birth not a convergence point, yeah? I'm fine. Sorry to bother you, big sis. It's not a bother at all. Okay. Is Mayuri not gonna at some point, like, acknowledge the, like, why do you keep calling me big sis thing? Mary went to the kitchen and turned on the burner underneath one of the pots. The sounds and smells of a bubbling stew filled the whole lab. They made a stew while she was asleep? Well, I guess it's been a couple days. Mayuri mixed it with a ladle and stopped every once in a while to taste it. She turned towards Suzuha and smiled. Big success! So I guess Mayuri can cook now, huh? Did you make this? Yup. Mayuri's getting a lot better at cooking thanks to Yuki. Where's my dad? Uh, I mean, brother. He went to May Queen. He says he's got work after that. I see. Why'd he go to May Queen? I thought he doesn't really hang out at the May Queen much anymore. You're thinking of going out tonight because Daru isn't here, aren't you? You can't. I'm fine. You're not fine. If you do that, I'll have Yuki get mad at you, okay? What's this about me? The curtain to the bathroom opened and Yuki came out. Her skin was flush. Suzasan won't lay down. You know better than that, Suzaha. <laughs> Actually getting lectured by her mother. 
You need to stay down for at least another day, got it? Yeah. Suzuha's answer was less than enthusiastic, but she gave in to Yuki's glare and sat back down. Fine. She pouted and slumped on the sofa, then pulled the blanket back on her. Suzuha was capable of talking back to Mayuri, but she would never be able to talk back to Yuri, or Yuki. Wonder what's on my mind. <laughs> what? I was thinking how you look so cute like that. No. Huh? Show the CG! If Daru saw you like that, you might be in trouble. Sometimes I wonder if you really are brother and sister. Don't be creepy. Oh, are you blushing? I am not. Really? Of course not. Why would I be? You're blushing. It's so cute. Show the CG or riot. It's the cutest, really. Shut up. Suzaha couldn't say anything, so she just turned away. Okay, time to go to work. You're not gonna have stew? I'm gonna stop back here after work. I'll have some then. Does she still work at the May Queen or no? Wait. I'll make you a salad or something. Have dinner with us later. Thanks, Yuki. I'll look forward to it. Mary told Suzu one more time that she needed to stay lying down, then left for the May Queen. Well, that answers that question. Yuki went to the kitchen and added a few seasonings to the stew Mayuri made, then turned off the burner. Oh, right, Suzaha. You're covered in sweat. Want me to wipe you down before we eat? This is like such a forward thing. Is it like a Japanese thing? Zero chance I would let anyone wipe me down, no matter how sick I was in the U.S. Don't touch me. But they've, like, at multiple points in the game pointed out, like, how Kurusu would be sometimes more, like, forward and, like, touchy and handsy because she lived in America for so, uh, um, long. But now everyone's like, oh, let me just casually wipe you down and undress you and we can change together and da-da-da-da-da. Why show the cutest thing ever when you can just describe it? Yeah, I guess so. I wish to see the Suzaha CG. I told you it's fine. Oh my god, we're gonna get a CG of these two, aren't we? Yuki wanted to do stuff like that every day. And each time, Suzaha frantically refused. Even if you can't take a shower, you need to keep yourself clean. Is she not taking a shower these last three days? Gross. She does need to keep herself clean. I mean, maybe that's just me because I shower frequently, but like, I feel like part of it is when you're sick, you gotta like, um, take that hot shower and like wash some of the germs off you. I don't know. I mean, maybe it's just the weird guy in me, but like, you know, you gotta bathe when you're sick, especially more when you're sick. You get cold germs all over you. I don't know. <laughs> That's probably not very scientific, but come on. I did it yesterday and the day before, so it's fine. It's not like going a week or two without showering will kill you. Ugh! Oh god, the future sucks. Okabe, you gotta do something, bro. Oh my god, two weeks without a shower, I would die. Oh god, I couldn't do it, man. A week? You can't do that. Absolutely not. Yuki hurried to the shower. Look, I can do it myself. People who say that never end up doing it themselves. <laughs> it's pretty true. That's not... No. The germs are everywhere. Yeah. I mean, I'm not like a huge germaphobe. But, like, I guess I do get kind of, like, typical guy when I'm sick of, like, 
I gotta wipe everything down that I touch. Um, you know, I, like, I'm trying to clean everything down so, like, when I finally get better from sick, being sick, I don't get sick again. So I'm, like, I get into, like, hyper clean mode when I'm sick, I guess. I actually, like, you know, like, I'm in public and I have, like, the little hand sanitizer thing and I'm like, well, don't want to be sick. Uh, don't want to get sicker because my immune system's weak while I'm currently sick. Like, so I guess I get like that when I'm, when I, I get more, um, like, germaphobe, I guess, when I'm sick. But normally, if I'm not sick, I'm not really that germaphobic. Like, I like things to be clean, but not like, alright, I gotta start fucking scrubbing. Yuki came back to the room with a bowl filled with hot water and a towel. She could be stubborn when she got this way. Suzaha had learned that well over the past three days. The motherly instincts are too strong, which is why she probably likes Daru, is because she can take care of Daru. Yuki was just like the mother she remembered. She slowly and uneasily stood up, and then took off her top, trying her best not to let Yuki see her skin. We're both girls, you don't need to be so embarrassed. I don't care, really. I'll wash your back, okay? Ooh, that's probably a no-go. It's fine, I'm not a kid. No CG? Yeah, no CG or riot. I don't think you can do it yourself. You don't have to stop, gamer. I don't care. I said it's fine. Yuki seemed a little shocked, but quickly handed over the hot, wet towel. Because I imagine Suzuha probably has scars all down her back, right? I'm sorry. Some people don't like being touched, right? No, I'm sorry for yelling. I'll leave the hot water on the table, okay? I'm gonna get dinner ready. Yuki walked off dejected. Aww. Once Suzaha saw that she was focused on finishing the cooking, she slid behind the curtains to the back of the room. Oh, oh I thought we were going to see a CG of scarred up Suzaha. She used the towel and the wash bowl to wipe herself down. I would rather just take a shower at this point, right? She couldn't let Yuki see her body. There were scars, both old and new, all over her, and burn marks that might never heal. Well, luckily, none of those are on her face, I guess. To the to her, these wounds were like medals from uh, vicious battles she'd survived, and she didn't care who saw them. But she didn't want to let her mother, who'd given birth to her, or rather, who would give birth to her, to see them. Especially not the dozens of pale white marks around her breasts. What does that mean? Awesome. Mom. She still remembered that nightmarish day. The bullets which had killed her mom had lost their power as they passed through her organs, but still managed to dig into her skin. And when they did, they were covered in her mother's blood and flesh. The scars would probably never heal. To Suzaha, they were her mother's grave. <laughs> She shook her head to get the nightmare out of her mind. She took her bottoms off and wiped herself clean all the way down to her toes, then put on a new pair of underwear. It was only after she finished putting on her newly cleaned clothes that she felt human again. Oh, when that flashed to back, her when it flashed to black, I also braced myself to see like a nightmare future CG there, but we didn't get that either. Where are the CGs? Mental scars are worse for Suzaha, not physical. I don't know. Seeing a, having scars all over yourself of uh, your parents' death is pretty rough. The fan service CG budget went to Chie. You're <laughs> groping Mayuri. Damn it. Suzaha's way hotter. I mean, what? <laughs> Yuki was putting bowls filled with stew and salad onto the table. Oh. Oh. Their eyes met, and an awkward silence filled the room. Oh. It's ready. 
Yuki broke silence first. Thanks. How much do you want? It's okay. I can do it myself. Why does Suzaha keep saying I can do it myself? At some point, I feel like continuously saying I can do it myself and stop doing this is like actually kind of rude. Like at some point, you have to be a gracious guest too, right? Not just a gracious host. Suzuha put just enough stew and salad for her meal onto her plate. Then made a plate for Yuki. Oh, thanks. I'm sorry to make you do I told you we gotta look out for each other when we're sick. Once you're done eating, make sure to take your meds. Okay. The two sat on the sofa and filled their mouths with stew and salad. The stew had a mild, gentle flavor. It felt like something Mayuri would make. <laughs> Mayuri's, uh, Mayuri's gotten a lot better, hasn't she? She didn't take something out of a can and warm it up, you know? Suzuha's face looks a little derpy. You can tell that they kind of tried to, like, make her look a little younger in this specific scene to portray that, like, daughter vibe. That stew looks really good, though. The eyes are skin colored. Suza has? No, the same color as Dara's shirt. Hey, Vibin! What is that, man? I'm impressed. Do you want to try making it too? I'll teach you. Me? I'll pass. I'm not the type. I don't think that's true. Maybe someday. Yeah, I saw the Doom Slayers in Fortnite. I already bought the Master Chief skin, though, so I don't need another skin. Even though I haven't played Fortnite in like two plus years now. People who say someday never end up doing it either, you know? You said something like that a minute ago. When will Okabe in Fortnite? Me in Fortnite? Probably never. Kurosu would be more likely to be in Fortnite. Let's be real. What have you missed? Uh, not too much, honestly. Um... Okabe tried to leave the Amadeus program because the AI, talking to the AI was too painful for him. A madman tried to shoot up the professor in Okabe, and Maho, and the hotel parking lot, and Suzaha is now sick. But Yuki is treating her and making her feel better. Did I? Yeah. And then the conversation ceased for a while. Suzaha slurped down her stew. She had terrible manners. I'm trying to come up with something to talk about. Didn't have time for manners in the future. She's also holding that spoon super weird. Like a reverse. I mean, maybe it's just the angle of the picture. But she's holding that like a meat hook. This time it was Suzaha's turn to break the silence. After what she just remembered, she couldn't bear to be silent around Yuki. The song you were singing. What is that? Song? You know, when you're taking a shower. Huh? Was I singing? Wow, that's embarrassing. I'm a terrible singer, but I love to. So I sometimes hum things. I don't know if it matters whether you're good or not. I just can't remember what the song was. Neither can I, actually. Huh? I just remember the parts that were memorable. I think it's from an educational show that was on when I was a kid or something. I remember a hentai gotcha game that had a Steinsgate crossover. 
Alright, we need to take an important break from the stream right now. Sign gate anti gotcha game. Or crossover, I think was. Interesting. We got um, a bunch of results, I think, that have nothing to do with that. Uh, yeah, I see that. But, uh... The Steins Gate characters don't seem to, uh... Um, you know, get lewd. They seem to be just there to have a good time. Then immediately after, probably because my Google search contains hentai, the search results got quite weird. Anywho. Sorry, I can't help you. <laughs> Suzanne, when did you hear the song? When I was a kid, I think. My mom used to sing it all the time for me. Your mom seems like a nice person. <laughs> Just because you knew the one song that she sang? Yeah. The conversation flowed so naturally that she didn't think about how she responded. Huh? Eh? A second later, she realized what she said and then stared back at her mother. Huh? Is something wrong? What I mean, that wouldn't give you away. Uh, no but my mom? What do you mean? Do you? What do I mean? I saw her two days ago. Wait, what? I said your mom came here two days ago. What? That's not possible. Is there some reason your mom wouldn't come over? Is this Kagari? I mean... There's no way she could say that her mother was right in front of her. Confused, she self fell silent. Yuki, for her part, must have come to some conclusion about the reason for Suzuha's reaction, so she started to stammer and fidget. Uh, uh, I'm sorry. Huh? Did something happen between you and your mom? Uh, no. You get in a fight and run away from home or something? No. It was weird, thinking back. Your mom just brought uh, Hashida some food and a change of clothes and didn't say anything to you. Oh, it was Daru's mom. Okay. She brought my d d d brother food and clothes? Yeah. Suzuha thought as hard as she could and finally reached an answer. Oh, so that's it. Yuki was talking about Daru's mother. In other words, Suzuha's grandmother, who she'd never seen except in pictures. But since she told Yuki that she was Daru's sister, it was natural that she would make that wrong assumption. Is something wrong? No, nothing. If Daru had said even a word to her about it, this wouldn't have happened. How stupid. She'd have to give him another lecture later. While Suzuha was thinking about talking to her about the time while Suzuha was thinking about the talking to her dad was gonna get, Yuki had already started to sympathize with her imagined plight. 
You can talk to me any time. We can talk about whatever you want. For some reason, her eyes were starting to well up. Uh, uh, thanks. Suzaha didn't know how to react, but felt embarrassed. Mom really is a nice person. Just like she told Daru, this place was too comfortable. She was starting to imagine that this life would continue forever. But sending this brief, happy time beyond the horizon of the world line was supposed to be Suzaha's mission. If she didn't, this world would be destroyed. I'm pretty sure these two characters have the same VA. Well, yeah, I mean, they're technically, you know, mother-daughter. Would make sense. Welcome back, Miaster! As I walked into the maid cafe, the cat-eared maids who worked there greeted me cheerfully. It was a weekday evening, so there were more open seats than usual. Welcome back, Kiyoma, I mean Okarine. Uh, is Mayuri here? I imagine she asked, why do we sound similar? And why do you kind of look like me? And why do we have the same hair color? That's so crazy. Are you my long-lost sister? Uh... Mary will be here soon. Yeah, 30 minutes? I see. Mayuri had been working here for a while now. Her main name was Mayushi Nyanyan. When she was a maid, she wore a long blonde wig and cat ears and looked very different from her usual self. Daru called me. Is he here? Yep, his usual spot. I looked back to the corner and saw a silhouette sitting next to the window with its son at its back. Oh, and I've got someone with me today. They've never been to a maid cafe before. Can you keep them company until Daru and I finish? Yeah? Who could that be? Hey, Hiyajo. Over here. I called to Maho. She was fidgeting outside the store, apparently unwilling to come in. Yeah. Oh, Karin's with a cute girl, yeah? Is that really surprising? And from her height, she's in either elementary school or middle school? She's not. I can't believe it. You've already got Ferris, but instead you went out and found a new lover. A new lolly lover, yeah? <laughs> I like how forward that uh, Ferris is in every world line. That she straight up likes Okabe. But every time, except like the one Ferris route, he's like, okay, zap this nonsense. <laughs> I didn't. She's from an American university and she's here for research. My only choice is to denounce you at the round table. Listen. What are you talking about? Maho had finally made it. And she, was, and she was staring at me and Ferris with suspicious eyes. I'd gone with Maho to the police to talk about the attack. After that, we both realized we hadn't eaten, so I brought her here. Ferris stood up to her full height and gave a cute little bow, and then did one of her cat-like poses. Welcome back, Eustress. At this sick cafe, we don't say welcome, we say welcome back, yeah. Oh. I'm Ferris, yeah, yeah, yeah. What's your name? Oh, so you're from Okinawa, yeah? Oh, I'm amazed you knew that. People always either ask me to repeat it or just get it wrong. But you knew it was from Okinawa. Of course, yeah. Three lives ago, I was the Spirit Garden of the land of Pytronia, which lies beyond the horizon of the Ryukyu, Ryukyu Kingdom. Yeah. Hi. <laughs> eh. Uh, that's right. The voices of we spirits were brought to the people by the Noro, and we made the kingdom prosper. Yeah. 
But the raging sea gods invaded. And at last we... Uh, I'm sorry. What's she talking about? Uh, it's a special dialect spoken exclusively by the people of Akihabara. She has to double down on the Chuni stuff now that Kiyoma wasn't, isn't uh, Chuni anymore. She needs to uh, be Chuni for the both of them. Isn't that right? Yeah. Think about it too much and your head will explode. It already feels like it's about to. Anyway, wait just a minute. I need to talk to my friend. I pointed to Daru, and when she saw him, her eyes narrowed. Is something wrong? He's pretty big. I'll introduce you later. Tell him to lose some weight. <laughs> okay, Maho, I'll take you to your seat. Why can't Maho be there to talk to Daru? Is he embarrassed about Daru being his friend? Another maid had just finished cleaning a table. Isn't it cute, yeah? I prefer something normal. This is normal, yeah. Now come this way, Maho Nya. Maho remained dead silent as she was led to a seat near, near where Daru was sitting. I headed to Daru's table, too. I sat across from him and ordered some coffee from a nearby maid. God, coffee sounds good. Oh, I need to get some coffee tomorrow. I'm out. Hang on one second. I shall be right back. Okay, I return. Indeed, like the stream or else. <laughs> I'm disappointed in you, Okarin. Normies must explode. Man literally has his like future wife like staying over at his place all the time. Daru, you're a you're a normie. You keep denying your normie self, but you are. Don't say the same things. Same things as Ferris. It's not like that. 
What do you mean it's not like that? She's a legal lolly. And not only is she cute, I love how she seems so unrefined. Oh, green, you jerk. Don't tell her that. She's scary when she's mad. I glanced over at Maho, who was staring at the menu and trying her best to keep up a Ferris. I told you about her on the phone, right? She was with me when I was attacked. That stuff doesn't matter. The issue here is that you get to go around with cute girls and I don't. You literally, like, basically live with Yuki. What? Then go do it. Go on a date or something. Was that sarcasm? Wow, you really are a jerk. It wasn't. Why not ask out Yuki? Wait, you're telling me you haven't even approached her? It's fine. I plan to become a wizard. <laughs> no worries, Skylar. Have a good night, man. There's an urban legend on the internet stating that if a man is still a virgin past the age of 30, he becomes a wizard. It's also said that if a wizard furthers his training, he can turn into a fairy. I remember that. That's not a good idea. Suzuha will never be born. Uh, I don't have a good comeback for that. You like Yuki, right? Sure, she's pretty, and her thighs and the curve of her neck make me pan. The curve of her neck? I mean, I can appreciate being a thigh enjoyer, but what does he mean, the curve of her neck? What's that about? I've never even heard someone simp for the curve of a neck before. character. Stop it. I'm not a pervert, I'm a perverted gentleman. Hang on, I need glasses for this line, actually. Wait a minute. Let's truly reflect this statement, yeah? Um, actually, I'm not a pervert. I'm a perverted gentleman. Thank you very much. I don't care what you are, I'm talking about romance. Daro leaned over the table and sipped his iced tea through a straw. I don't really understand that stuff. Bro, you don't even have to be that romantic. You know you've already sealed the deal in the future. What are you, a kid? So this is today's, you're the last one I want to hear that from, Thread. We stared at one another. He was right. When it came to romance, I didn't really have the right to talk. Whatever. This isn't what I wanted to talk to you about. True. Get to it. That's kind of rude. There are two things I want to discuss. Here, Daru stopped and casually looked around. There weren't many people at the cafe, and thanks to Ferris, there was no one sitting near us. As long as we didn't yell, there was no risk we were over being overheard. I realized that old me's habits were coming back. Was it because I'd just gone through something out of a Hollywood movie? First, I want you to keep this a secret from Mayuri, but I'm looking for someone. A secret from Mayuri? Mm. That's right. Nonde. Why? Uh, well, you know. Hmm. He seemed reluctant to speak. This must be the first one Suzuha was looking for, right? You've known Mayuri since you were kids, right? Does she have any friends named Kagari? Kagari? Hmm? Of course, I didn't know every single one of her friends, but... I've never heard that name. 
Not as far as I know. And forget the name. Were there any girls that she was especially close to? Well, let me see. There's a group of kids she used to play with in elementary school. I told, I told Daru their names. Of course, all, he knew all of her friends since high school. She was especially close to Fubuku, Fubuki and Kaede from her cosplay group, as well as Ferris and the other maids of the May Queen. There was Luka. That's all I can tell you. I don't know much more than you do, sorry. That's plenty, thanks. Daru took out his smartphone, wrote down the names of the girls I'd given him. Why don't you ask Mayuri yourself? Oh, there's some stuff going on. And who is Kagari anyway? Why are you looking for her? Daru was unconsciously tapping the table. He seemed to be deciding how best to explain it. Actually, it's not me who's looking for her. It's Suzuhaga. Suzuhaga? Why would she be looking for a friend of Mayuri? Wait, if Suzuha was involved... That means Mayuri's future is involved? Is that why she can't tell Mayuri? Yeah. Her name is Shina Kagari. Shina? Yep. A relative of Mayuri? No. Well, maybe. She's Mayuri's daughter. Oh. Oh. He said it so naturally, I almost missed it. I see. Her daughter, huh? Her daughter. Wait, what does daughter mean again? Daughter. 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 Mayuri's daughter. Mayuri's daughter! <laughs> You're too loud. I swallowed my words as best I could. Is that true? Yeah, but not her real daughter. I guess she was a war orphan that Mayuri adopted. A war orphan. I couldn't even imagine what chain of events in the future would bring that about. Bro, Suzaha has explained that shit to you so many times now. What do you mean you can't figure it out? Alright, traumatized Okabe is a little fucking dense. What? It sounded a lot like something Mayuri would do. Even in the worst world line, Mayuri would still know the joy of having a child. Maybe it was wrong, but that made me feel better. The joy of... The joy of a child! She is a war orphan! What? It's not even like... <sighs> At the same time, I felt worried about whether she could raise a kid. Isn't that weird? Why would Mayuri's daughter be here at this time? She escaped from 2036 along with Suzaha. Huh? But when she stopped at Akihabara in 1998 for permission, they got separated. In 1998, but I thought she stopped in the past in 1990, or 1975, right? To get the IBN? Suzaha searched as hard as she could, but never found her. And she left her in 1998? I think 1998, 1975, right? I guess someone almost found the time machine while she was searching. So she had to jump and leave Kagari behind. Afterwards, she kept trying to jump forward a few months at a time and look for her, but... Once she got to the year 2000, she ran out of fuel. She started to run out of fuel. And so she jumped to 2010 to fulfill her real mission? I finished her his sentence and Daru nodded. But even after coming here, she's still looking. Do you think you could ask Mayuri without letting her know what's up? I mean, why would Mayuri know her? She would be significantly older than them at this point, right? Or I guess no, maybe she would be about the same age. If it was 98. But I thought it was 75. Wondering, can you clarify that? But yeah, if it was 98, let's assume she was like toddlerish. She was like five years old, I think, right? 
So then it's been 12 years, so she'd be 17. She'd be about the same age as my area then. Me? Well, there's someone around her age who came to see her about 10 years ago or something like that. Sure, I'll ask. If I could find her, I wanted to. Adopted or not, she was future Mayuri's daughter. And I felt a little guilty about things with Suzaha, so I wanted to help if I could. And then a maid brought my coffee. As I drank, I looked over to Maho's seat, and Ferris had barely left her alone. Alright, I'll put a magic spell on your pancakes to make them taste even better, nya. Dude, the best spell. A better pancake tasting spell? Let's fucking go. Yeah, AK asked the question I was wondering. I thought it was 1975, but the game just clarified that he, uh, it was 1998. Magic. Say it with me, Maho. The world is in danger, nya. It's a conspiracy, nya. Can I just eat my pancakes? This is normal. So enjoy your pancakes. Thanks. Oh, Maho, it's dripping. The honey is dripping. Honey? Who puts honey on their pancakes? Actually, now that I think about it, this sounds pretty good. Honey instead of maple syrup on the pancakes? I'm making a note of this. Oh, there's a recipe to make honey in the pancakes. Bro, why does food always come up in these fucking games, man? I'm just, I'm not trying to be hungry during stream. Every time. Bruh. Using anything sticky on pancakes might taste good? hey -o. You know it. But yeah, now I've... Tomorrow morning... <laughs> Thank you, gamer. Um, I'm gonna order pancakes tomorrow. And then see if they come with honey. Anyway. What? Jeez, you're like a little baby. A uh, baby? They looked like they were having a good time. I turned back to Donald. So that's the first thing. What's the second? I don't know if I should ask you this, but... Come on, man. Maybe I really shouldn't. He just mumbled to himself and didn't say anything. It was rare for Donner to hesitate. Out with it. If I don't want to answer, I won't. Okay. His hand went for his phone. Huh? Ryan. Uh-oh. It did the quick save thing. Which makes me feel weird. This is about my secret job, so let's use this. So the secret job of yours. Daru cut me off and pointed at my phone. I guess he wanted me to use it. Was this something even more secret than what we just talked about? Secret job? You mean hacking? Yeah, basically. Weird that it's now the full screen here. It's not illegal stuff. Though I make online systems for manufacturers and banks, build and admin servers, boring things like that. 
Weird that it doesn't do this for when we talk to AI Kurisu. Oh, and I do virus analysis and make security software. And then there's data recovery. Oh, and make you do encryption tech too. What the- is Daru like actually a genius? Like what the fuck? I feel like I, he constantly gets memed on, but he's doing all this shit. Shouldn't he actually be like rich as fuck? <laughs> he always was, but he gets memed on so hard. Anyway, we're gonna just casually, subtly confirm that Daru is actually like a fucking genius. Seriously? So you're like a system engineer? I mean, he made the time machine? Yeah, but he made the time machine using like... Uh, fucking... Help from his future self, that doesn't count. And Kurosu. Daru is always like this. Hey, what's up, Magneta? When'd you get here? Did you get here a while ago? I told you he's important, but nobody wants him to be. He's acting to CERN. I know, but he had, like, so much other, like, help. I guess. But the, the game always memes on him so hard, I kind of forget this. That, like, Okabe really is just the idiot of the group who's just kind of... He's got really designer. Nothing formal. We've got a bit of a reputation. Our group gets jobs from all over the world. Daru is the hacker known as 4chan. Daru is probably the second smartest character. I guess so. I call myself Dash. What's that short for? Mario Kart Double Dash. I can't tell you. Why? Just can't? I don't think I can help you with that. You were close to Makise Kurosu, right? What do you mean? I want some help with her. I've hit a dead end with this job I'm doing. A job? What do you mean? I was actually just thinking earlier about like, what if Daru has to hack like Amadeus for Kurosu or whatever. Mm -hmm. Never mind. Daru said that to me directly and was about to put away his phone. Mate, mate. If you stop here, I'm going to be so busy thinking about what it is that I won't be able to sleep at night. Uh, don't worry about me, man. That just makes it worse. Fine. He whispered and sent me another message. Someone brought a laptop and a portable hard drive to us a while back. Both of them have a really strong full disk encryption. And they can't be booted without a password. Of course, you can't take the hard drive out and connect it to another PC, either. The client hit up a bunch of places with no luck and finally came to us. Is the encryption that strong? I've heard that even full disk encryption can be broken by a pro. Not happening with this one. You know why? We were the ones who made it, baby. Huh? You guys made it? Then you can't deal with it yourself? I'm a believer encryption needs to be a poison without an antidote, or there's no point. So you don't even know how to break the code, even though you made it? Exactly. If we can break it, then other hackers who are just as good as us can break it too, right? That's no good. I see. I swear, if you go, epic super hacker work, bro, I'll end you. I wasn't planning on saying that. But what's this got to do with Kurosu? Shining Finger Daru. Yeah, we're out here putting uh, Mocha, Moka to shame, man. This is the power of smartphones. They're probably using that swipe texting that all the cool kids use. I don't, though. The laptop and hard drive belong to Makise Kurosu. Not me. What was with the dramatic zoom on Makase Kurosu, as if that wasn't, like, the fucking most obvious thing that was about to happen? What? So Kurosu's belongings? I wanted to ask Daru directly, but stopped. 
Something seemed weird about the client, so I hit up the PC Manufacturer User Registration Database. How I did that is a secret, by the way. And I found that it was registered under her name. Same address, too, so it's definitely her. Who brought you the computer? Why would they have Kurosu's computer? Also, how does Daru not really know about how close Okabe was to Kurosu? I thought this was all explained to him. Or I guess it never really was, right? I don't know. I thought that, that he had a better idea of that. Sorry, the rules say I can't tell you. Were they Russian? Nope. Why Russia? Nakabachi? No, if not, then fine. So what do you want me to do? I want a hint, man. You know any words that Makase might use for her password? I can't brute force the password, so I have to do it the hard way. I've tried her birthday, graduation and stuff, address and phone. Not that I can imagine her picking those for a password. <laughs> any words commonly used in brain science or frequently used in her papers? I've got all that data, and now I'm trying stuff from her private life. <laughs> It felt like the grave of someone I cared about was being violated. What kind of words did I associate with Kurosu's private life anyway? Kuri Gohan and Kamehameha? My fork? Or maybe something to do with her dad? <laughs> I tried to remember more about Kurosu, but when I did, I started to think about her last moments. I quickly shut down the train of thought. But... Sorry, can you give me some time? I can't come up with anything that quickly. Christina. While Christina would be cute, she didn't technically really know Okabe much in this timeline, so I don't think it would be that. I am Sundere. No spaces. Yeah, just tell me if you remember something. I'm not forcing you. If you remember and don't want to tell me, that's fine. Yeah. Yeah. I sighed and gulped down my cold coffee. When did it get cold? Oh! Uh, Santa Mayuri! Oh, Kareem, I told you we're having a Christmas party at the lab today. Did you remember? You cold coffee? Yeah, but iced coffee's the shit, though. Way too wholesome. Yeah, it's too wholesome for this game. Mary's voice sounded excited. Oh. Yeah, of course. Know. Of course she did. Mary had spent a lot of time preparing for this. She was probably really looking forward to it. Well, can you come? I'll be there. It's at six, right? Yeah. Are you at the university now? Yeah. Nah, Wako City. I'm, based, I'm at a lab. It belongs to a professor I know. Whoa, Wako City? She had no idea where that was, did she? Will you make it? I'll be fine. Great, I'll be waiting. Her voice got fainter on the phone for a second. I heard the other girls. I like that this feels realistic because Mayuri would absolutely be the type to like FaceTime you instead of just like call you or something or shoot you a text. Whereas I would normally just send a text like, hey, you gonna make it to this party or what? But Mayuri would absolutely like FaceTime and be like, hey! We need Santa outfit Kurosu, indeed. Oh, Kareen, all the girls today are wearing Santa outfits and waiting for you. We're waiting, ya. We're waiting. 
Come on, you too, Luca. Luca's cosplaying. I'm sorry, I'll take it off. It looks good on you. You guys are having fun, huh? There's a figure of Santa Kurosu? How many figures of Kurosu are there? I mean, I know there's a lot, but goddamn. Oh, yeah, you do. Nice, gamer. Super short Santa mini skirt. She looks cute. By the way, her panties are pink. What are you talking about, Fubuki? Uh, oh. I'm sorry, she's weird. Anyway, we're waiting, okay? Yeah. Okay, see you later. It sounded like the party had already begun. Are these Japanese phone numbers with, like, X's in them? With all the girls there, I'm sure they were having a good time. I chuckled and put away my phone. Sounded like they were having a good time. It was Maho who spoke. Actually, only Maho and I were in the room. I'm going to my friend's Christmas party today. It is that time of year, come to think of it. You don't seem like the type to be interested in that stuff. Not really. Since I came here, I spend all my time in this room. The only people I see lately are police. I tried to force a laugh at Maho's joke and looked around the room. It was silent. The exact opposite of the noisy laugh I'd just heard on the other side of the phone. Nothing had changed since the first time I'd come here. Which meant that it was still only Maho and the doctor that were working here. And the professor had been meeting with different researchers all the time since he'd come to Japan. So he wasn't spending much time in the lab. So... <laughs> the number said X's to hide Mayuri's IRL number. True. I guess the real question I have to ask, though is um if okabe wanted out of the uh amadeus project why is he still hanging out and talking to maho like he went to the maid cafe with her and stuff did that mean maho was spending most of her time cooped up here alone that's well, normal for a scientist i guess but do you want to come after what happened she probably needed a chance to blow off some steam B? Don't worry. I feel more relaxed when I'm doing my work alone. It means I don't have to deal with other people. Is that how it works? Kurosu had said similar things. Kurosu, huh? Anyway, let's get to the point. That's right. I hadn't come all the way here to make small talk. You said you wanted to apologize to AI Kurosu, right? Ah. Yeah. And that's why you came to me? Yes. Why? He still has the app on his phone. Why? It's hard for me to talk to her on my own. So you want me to be a mediator? I guess, yeah. You're weird. Her reaction surprised me. Was I weird? The last time we talked, well, part of it was because I was freaking out, but I kind of hung up on her. 
クリスの性格を考えると、クリスの性格を考えると、クリスの性格を考えると、クリスの性格を考えると、クリスの性格を考えると、クリスの性格を考えると、クリスの性格を考えると、クリスの性格を考えると、クリスの性格を考えると、クリスの性格を考えると、クリスの性格を考えると、クリスの性格を考えると、そんなにびくつかなくても。クリスからは連絡しないようになっているわ。そう言ったでしょそう、いや、ば。喧嘩別れみたいなことにも。I don't want our relationship to end with a fight. I never wanted to go through what I experienced in the Alpha World Line again. In that World Line, I never been able to figure out what she was trying to tell me in the end. まあいいわ。はい。Not that I had any idea what nice would be. What's wrong? Hurry up. Just tap the icon on your phone and I'll connect you. The professor told you he left you with access, right? Alright, fine. I'll pull it up. I thought we were going into the computer room. What? I can't believe you actually contacted me again. Uh, what's going on? What? Oh, she wasn't expecting that. Yeah. Hey.、Uh, hello, Okabe. Do you need something? I thought you didn't want to talk to me anymore. I appreciate that, like, side eye when she said that. Well, my eyes glance towards Maho for help. Hey, I, Kurosu, he wants to talk to you. Can you hear him out? I didn't say I wasn't going to. I was just checking to see if he still didn't want to talk to me. Uh, she was mad. I knew it. Come on, hurry up. Yeah. I took a single deep breath and lifted up the phone. I was actually really kind of hoping AI Kurosu would be more relevant. I mean, maybe she will be in later chapters. Obviously, there's still a lot of the game to go. But him shelving her for a while has been disappointing. I'm sorry. <laughs> Why does this scene look so derpy? What am I looking at here? I appreciate that his phone case kind of makes it look like his old cell phone. I bowed my head. Eh? You were nice enough to talk to someone like me, and I betrayed your kindness. And I know it was rude of me to suddenly hang out the last time we talked. I was remembering some personal stuff that happened and I was a mess. But that's got nothing to do with you. Actually, all that personal stuff that makes you a mess has everything to do with her. I at least wanted to apologize before I quit my job as tester. That's all. I was expecting Maho to be shorter. So she is shorter, but you gotta remember in this image, he's like. He's bowing, right? So he's bowing and is still taller than、uh, Maho. Because there was a scene earlier that you missed, AK, where Okabe was like on his knees and like crouching, and he was still like the same height as Maho. So he's like 
Oh, he's still taller than her, even though he's like bowing his head in an apology. But even though the image kind of makes it look like he's not really bowing. <laughs> AI Kurosu was chuckling the same way Maho had just done. <laughs> Are you serious? Uh, how can you laugh when I'm giving you an apology? Did he ever give real Kurosu an apology? Because, well, I'm AI, right? But you still got this somber look on your face, and you're apologizing so seriously. The last time we spoke, you said talking to me was embarrassing, right? You're weird. Was it weird to apologize to an AI and mean it? I mean, can't Kurosu also kind of infer from this just how, like, this means, like, just how seriously he used to take real human Kurosu? Or, like, how strongly he felt about her? It was probably weird to apologize to AI like this. To be honest, I was a little disappointed in you, but this makes me change my mind. If you agree to my one condition, I'll forget all about it. Condition? What was she gonna have me do? I had a bad feeling. Alright, let's hear it. I want you to take Maho out to dinner today. Huh? Maho's eyes and mine went wide. Wait, and I curse you? What are you talking about? He would be my number one suspect for murder? I mean, yeah. I feel like that's gonna come up at some point in the storyline where people are like, wait a minute, what? Don't you know what day it is today? Exactly. Exactly what, exactly? So what'll it be, Okabe? Yes or no? Why did she look so excited? Fine. I'm officially inviting you to the party I was just telling you about. Please come. I'm getting together with some of my friends for a Christmas party. That's not what I meant. But maybe dinner for two is too much to ask right off the bat. Maybe this is better. Hey, I Kurosu, if you keep teasing me, I'm going to get mad. Mainstream woman. I'm not going to any party. Then I'm not going to forgive Okabe. Hyajo, please. Why are we talking about this? I'm trying to help you out here. Listen. Anyway, I need to wait for the professor to get here to give him my report. Yeah, Rintaro, Maho, what are you talking about? The doctor walked in at the perfect moment. Maho looked relieved and went to open the file on her desk. Welcome back, Professor. Here's the data for today. Maho, stop. Hold it. You guys want to go somewhere? It's Christmas Eve. Let's put our work away and go get some food. Or did you already have something planned? Then Kurosu's gonna be like, yes, they're planning on going to a party. Nice job, Professor. <laughs> Professor, my friends are having a Christmas party. If you'd like to come, you're more than... Wonderful, I'd love to. I was just about to say how we would probably be like, no way, right? Our age groups and our dynamic is so different. There's no way I could go to this... Uh, um... Like, there's no way I could go to this party. It would be weird. I didn't even get to finish my sentence. Of course, Maho will be coming too, yes? That was the moment when her last hope of escape was cut off. 
It's settled. Christ. <laughs> A.I. Kurisu smiled mischievously from within the screen. She was quite the pot of the plotter. The real Kurisu used to do silly things like this too. Hey, Okabe. Hey, Okabe. <gasps> when she called my name, I gasped. Thanks for apologizing to someone like me. It made me happy. Oh no. If you want, we can talk any time, if you're bored or something. If I feel like it, maybe. Yeah. Bye! Take good care of Maho-senpai. Are you satisfied? If I invited my professor to a party, it would be awkward. Yeah, I like never hung out with my teachers or anything outside of school. Weird. Uh, I guess he's more like a... Um... I guess he's more like a co-worker, though, right? So I guess it wouldn't be too odd. I felt more relieved than I thought I would. I realized I really did love Makise Kurosu. Oh, wow. Kind of weird to hear him say that out loud. Or I guess finally, like, admit it, right? In this world line, anyway. Obviously, in the normal one, he uh, he admits it openly, but... It's weird to hear him reflect on this in his traumatic form. Is it really that weird to apologize to an AI? My friend, you know, the guy you met at May Queen, he's always on his knees begging to <laughs> begging the girls on a computer screen. I don't really understand why someone would do that. Uh-oh, that freaked her out. Bad example. <laughs> anyway, you really helped me out. You don't really need to do what uh, AI Kurosu told you to. Well, the professor seemed really excited about going. He flashed his white teeth at me. And I promised AI Kurosu. You really are weird. But even as she said it, she was smiling. I guess she decided to go. Does she have other clothes yet, or no? What just happened? <laughs> I'm sorry, what? We were just had talking about a Christmas party. Yeah, zero to 100, what? Kagari's got a gun pulled on, has got the Glock pulled on uh, Suzaha. It barely fits in her two hands. No, big sis, you can't do that. You can't change the world. You're not making sense. You can't erase the world. I won't let you. There were bullet marks on the inside of the time machine. Suzaha traced them with her fingers and remember what happened. This was the last time she talked to Kagari. She like fucking smack her out of the time machine and leave after she took shots at her? She'd never been able to find her after that. Suzuha, Suzuha what's wrong? You're spacing out. Do you not feel well? Suzuha looked back and saw her father. He seemed worried. He was holding a bolt in his hand, offering it to her. Oh, Sorry. Sorry. I'm fine. Sorry. She nodded and took the bolt. Did OG have one? Yeah, Nye. 
they were on top of the radio Kai uh, Kai It's so weird. I get thrown off every time they actually show its full name, not the Roddy Kai or whatever. A roll, a cold wind was blowing. A light was shining down on the rear of the time machine where the engine was. Her head was inside as she did maintenance work. Daru was wandering around in the background. Normally, she would never let him come near the time machine, but today he'd absolutely insisted on coming. What kind of dad wouldn't be worried about his daughter when she just got sick? I like that he's stuck to being Suzuha's dad a lot faster than uh, Yuki's wife. It seems to me like for um, a teenager, it would be much easier to get into the role of having a significant other than being a father. <laughs> Suza had spent the last several days unable to stand because she hadn't taken care of herself. There was nothing she could say back to him. Listen, I won't touch the space-time shifter or gravity control or anything dangerous. Will you let me help? No. I'm probably better than you are. I know that, but no. Daru slumped forward, dejected, but Suzuha had no intention of discussing it. Listen, it's dark and late. We should do the rest tomorrow. Let's go. You can go home yourself, Dad. I've still got stuff to do. Are you going to look for Kagari again? Oh, Green says it'll help, so you don't need to do it all by yourself, you know. You just got over your cold. You should put off the search for a while. Would she even still be in this later? Or, would she even still be in this city? That made her mad. I didn't want you telling Okri without asking me. Isn't Daru cold in just his t-shirt? I guess bigger guys are usually a bit warmer, yeah? Suzaha had told Daru that she was spending every day looking for Kagari, but it was only later that she found out he told, uh, Okabe. It wasn't a problem, but her relationship with Okabe was already a bit strained, and this only made it harder for her to ask him to get back into the machine. Anyway, you look like you've been having a hard time. There's a bolt here that's hard to turn. I'll do it. You can at least let me do that, right? Yeah. She pulled her head out of the engine. You're covered in oil. Your pretty face is ruined. Say that to mom. That's asking too much. Daru stuck his face inside the machine and began to look around. Uh, Suzaha being pretty casual about the fact that Daru's not getting the balls on tight enough to actually get her born. <laughs> From the way this is laid out, that pipe was probably added on later. Take the pipe off. There's probably coolant or something going through it. So use this valve to empty it. I don't think this machine was designed with maintenance in mind. You've got that right. Wapata. What the fuck does that mean? What a pain in the ass. <laughs> Who do you think made this? Me. <laughs> he saw it, sighed and started to concentrate on his work. He did his job silently, twisting his massive body left and right. Watching him, Suzaha remembered her childhood. When she was younger, she loved watching her dad make the time machine. Dad? Yeah? Lately, I'm starting to not understand myself anymore. This might be weird, but... Is it really okay to erase this world? Her mind flashed back to young Kagari's screams. You can't erase this world, huh? She'd never forgotten the look in Kagari's eyes, and she'd never been able to shake the feeling that they were watching her somehow. I 
If my mission succeeds, Makise Kurusu won't die, and the door to Stein's gate will open. Mm. Yeah. That means this world, you, Mom, Mayuri, Rumi, and Okarin, none of this will have happened. Yeah. The me that's here right now will have never met you. Is this the scene where you confess your love? Should I save my game? Suzaha said nothing and poked her dad's cat with her toes. I'm being serious. One more joke and I'll kick you. You're not sure what to do? Well, you know, is it really that big a deal? Who cares if this present disappears? I mean, a lot of people are gonna die from this, right? I don't want that to happen. You're, overthink you're overthinking things. You don't want a war, so you're gonna change the world. Isn't it better when it's simple like that? Anyway, I don't want to go to war. I'm not like you. I'm, well, me. So I wouldn't last three days on the battlefield. You're such a wimp. I'm disappointed. She sighed, turned around, and started to walk away. Where are you going? I'm gonna wash my face. It's covered in oil. Once you tighten that bolt, close up the cover. I'm gonna take your suggestion and not look for Kagari today. That's great. Let's go home together. Yeah. I wonder what it would be like to interact with your, like, daughter from the future. That would be so weird, right? Suzaha looked up at the moon, shining in the cloudy winter sky. She let out a puff of white breath. <laughs> well, at least they changed the dialogue, not her sighing up at, while staring at the sky for the 900th time. The breath danced in the air for a moment and then disappeared. Dad? Hmm? I was lying when I said I was disappointed. You're not the kind of person who takes a gun into battle. That's not who you are in the future. It's always your job to run away. Would you believe a girl who says she's your future daughter? If she just came out of a satellite, yeah. <laughs> huh? Future me sounds kind of like a loser. That's fine. In the future, you've got another battle to fight. And that's why we're all with you. Suzuho. Don't get weird ideas, okay? Give up the idea that Japan is safe. Uncle Okarin was just attacked. You could be attacked at any moment, too. The war is coming in soon. For about two weeks now, someone had been watching Suzaha in the time machine. It was clear that a great power was on the move. Suzaha nodded. Satisfied at Daru's answer, she went to the bathroom to wash her face. So she knows somebody's watching her, but doesn't really do anything about it. Oh my god, new lab sprite! The lab was filled with Santas, just like I heard on the phone. Can we call Kurosu here? I'm telling you, don't talk to me, talk to Maho. Oh. All of the Santas were wearing miniskirts. Wow. Yuki, uh, definitely has an outfit. 
Wolverine. He's here. Everything's ready. Hi, Merry Christmas. Good evening. Uh, hi. The sight of so many girls in a small room like this, all wearing Santa miniskirts, threatened to overwhelm me. <laughs> Is Luca cosplaying as a uh, Scrooge? I was having trouble deciding where to look when Luca staggered in front of me. What are you wearing? I didn't expect a Santa in black. Was it, weren't they exposing a lot of skin? It was... I'm glad you survived. I gave them a pat on the shoulder. I want to wear a Santa outfit too. Next year I'll make one for you. Really? No. Next year we'll be in the middle of World War III. Sorry. Yup. Thanks, Mayuri! Technically, in this world line, Nai doesn't actually become a psychopath, right? Because her dad's still around. <laughs> oh, Kareen, come on in! Where are Daru and Suzuha? No word. The biggest goal today was to get Suzuhan to participate. It was no exaggeration to say that's why Mayuri held the party. By the way, who are your guests? I told them earlier I was bringing doc the doctor in Maho. Why, they put star stickers on the TV? I brought the two of them in. I'll introduce you. Merry Christmas! <laughs> An American? <laughs> Why is everyone so shocked? He's so big! What? Her dad is fucking massive! What does she mean? Thank you, cute little lady. But daddy's bigger. And this is Maho. Hi, nice to meet you. They're all gonna be like, she's so small! Maho, oh, they didn't say it. Maho, we meet again! Oh, it's the Nyan Nyan girl. What if Reaching Steiner kicks in for her? Jesus, let's hope not. I mean, as long as her dad's alive, there's probably no reason for it, too. Mayuri definitely put the stars on the TV. An American? This is the best Christmas ever! Are you in elementary school? Middle school? I'm actually growing up. Oh, sorry. Maho's smile froze on her face. What do you think? Let's just take a moment to uh, appreciate the artwork. I went into this game. Just a fantastic job was done, really. If we're being honest with ourselves. You know, and I just. 
I just appreciate this game a lot, you know what I mean? Everything it brought to the table. It just... The content is great. They're perfect. Mayuri's thinking of all kinds of delusions. I should have gotten some smaller sizes ready. Now I could have worn one. This is the biggest mistake in my life. No, oh, that's right. Mayuri out here getting cocked left, right, and center here. Ugh. I would have wanted to see the two of them as little Santas. Because Yuki's already a big mama Santa, you know what I mean? Yeah. Mayuri had her in her sights then. There was no escape for Maho now. Mayuri was so stubborn. She even managed to convince the legendarily shy Luka. What about the professor? I've never made an out for, for someone that big. Just having him there would guarantee a win, though. Maybe a fluffy reindeer outfit with a red nose? What do you mean? Why wouldn't you give him an actual Santa outfit? Because he's so big. Maybe not? Were they going to dress the professor up? Uh, Mayuri, you shouldn't assume everyone will understand your hobbies. That's right. It's not good to force people. You wouldn't have to force me to cosplay if uh, Yuki was there. Good lord. Man, they really cradled everything in this picture, huh? This is also a unique sprite. Lately, even the employees at the convenience stores dress up as Santa for Christmas. Christmas and Kamiya are two very different things, aren't they? So you say, but basically you want to dress the two of them up in Santa outfits, don't you? So, Maho, do you want Mayushi to lend you an outfit? I thought she said she didn't have extra outfits. Mayuri was already after her. Maho refused as hoarsely as she could, but the doctor was surprisingly interested. He had been trying to put on a triangular paper party hat. I just got a message from Daru. What's wrong with you? Fine. Hey, we got a Merry Christmas from Kurosu. Are you satisfied? Bye. He's almost here, and Suzuha's with him. Mary was looking at her phone. It looked like Daru had pulled it off. I guess he really was Suzuha's dad. That mean we'd succeeded in the biggest objective which meant it was on to the next mission. We all decided we were going to surprise Suzaha. Suzaha didn't know we were all waiting for her. Oh god. Oh no. You don't surprise someone with PTSD. Oh no. They're gonna pop out, surprise! And Suzaha's gonna pull her gun and pop my ear in the head. Oh no. Oh god. We each grabbed a noisemaker and got into position. Oh, no. Maho seemed unsure about the surprise, but the doctor was more than willing to participate. Thank you, kiss me. I'll turn off the lights, yeah. I wonder if she'll like it. No. <laughs> She's gonna be like a dog with fireworks. You never get to see her look surprised. But she actually really likes sweets, yeah. And she's nice. When I said hi, she said hi back. <laughs> that truly is a high bar. Thank you, Nai. I wish I could get along with her. You will. It'll be fine. You two are perfect for each other. Uh-oh, Mayuri. That was a little, probably overstepped a little bit there. 
Then we heard Daru's voice from outside in the alley below. Okay, I'm going inside. I'm coming inside with Suzaha! His voice was loud and unnaturally expository. Once he got below the lab, he was supposed to give a signal and everything was going as planned. We all went shh at each other in the darkness. I could hear the sets of footsteps coming up the stairs. Everyone held their breath and waited. The timing was critical. Would she be able to figure it out before reacting? The room was filled with different smells, like the girl's perfume and the aroma of the food they made. Didn't Suzaha always notice these things more quickly than anyone? I started to get worried. Then I heard the sound of the door opening. Huh? Nobody's here today? Some days are like that. Daru, you idiot, your voice is shaking. I got even more nervous. Was it time? Where was the signal? I felt like my hands were going to slip and trigger the noisemaker. My palms were sweaty. I could tell Suzaha was taking off her shoes. <laughs> now, yeah. Ferris gave the signal. The second the lights went on, we all activated our noisemakers. <laughs> <laughs> I could see Suzaha flinch. But I couldn't follow what happened after that. That's how fast she was. She dropped down and sprung off the floor and left toward Yuki, who happened to be standing in front of her. Uh-oh. She might have broken Yuki's jaw with the base of her palm before I could shout at her to stop. <laughs> Fortunately, Yuki had been surprised by Suzuha's sudden charge, and it slipped when she tried to step back. Because of this, Suzaha's palm missed Yuki's nose as it sliced through the air. <laughs> Stop, Suzaha! By the time I shouted, it was over. Suzaha had grabbed Yuki before she, before she held, fell down and was holding her up. <laughs> the emojis on YouTube were so funny. But you know what emojis aren't funny? All the ones that you get by being a member of my YouTube channel. It's just like a Twitch subscription. You get access to special emojis that you can use in any live stream that you watch on YouTube. <laughs> That's the first time I've plugged the, uh, my membership thing in a long time. Yuki, Suzaha, and all the rest of us were too stunned to speak. That was close. If the timing events had been slightly different, Yuki could have been badly hurt. Stop, Stop Nya! Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas! Everyone finally realized what had happened and began to panic. Yuki simply lay in Suzaha's arms, blinking her eyes. Uh, what are you doing? <laughs> oh, you can't see Ferris's face because I'm in the way. She looks so derpy. I like that she's grabbing her by like the back of the neck and is like ready to fucking smash her fist like right into uh, Yuki's face. <laughs> what are you doing? Suzuha seemed to snap back to reality and she was looking around at everyone. Uh, I, I said Merry Christmas, Suzaha! <laughs> this is quite the quality CG. Merry Christmas? Merry Christmas? <gasps> yeah. The piggy does have the Santa hat on in the background, yeah. <gasps> ah, that scared me. <laughs> Those are amazing moves. Too fast for me to follow. Yuki, are you okay? This one is far better quality than the other CGs for some reason, yes. I can't think of why specifically, but I feel like it's right on the tip of my breast. I mean chest. I mean my tongue. Tongues, um... Anyway. 
Suzuha was looking around the room. Did she still not understand what was going on here? Did she not realize it was a party since she'd never been to one before? The walls and ceiling were covered in wreaths and ribbons. Doesn't this already mean the timeline's kind of different, though, if they're having a party for Suzaha and she has not had a Christmas party before? And she doesn't already know the events taking place? Actually, no, wait, I guess, yeah, she wouldn't know. This, 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 never mind. This is the first loop of time travel. Despite the fact that Okabe has infinitely looped by killing Kurusu. But anyway. There was a folding table with foods and cakes and snacks and drinks. Party. A party? Uh, I'm sorry. It was my idea to make it a surprise. Yuki backed away from Suzuha and started to bow apologetically. Suzuha, this is, we wanted to make it a surprise. We, we didn't mean to scare you. I feel like, how can you not know that this was going to be the result for like a traumatized person? Like, right away. Flexing my memory emotes? Indeed, indeed. AK can also flex the memory emotes. Oh. D Brother, did you know about this? Yeah. So that's why you were acting weird today. I'm sorry. It was me who planned it all, so don't get mad at Yuki or Daru. Get mad at me. Come on. Do I always get mad? This is how I looked around the room. <laughs> uh. It's hard to believe this is the same lab. We all decorated it together. It's amazing. It's pretty. Suzuha laughed half-heartedly and began backing up towards the door. Where are you going? Huh? Well, you guys are having a party, right? I don't want to get in the way. Come on, brother. You know I don't belong in a place like this. That's not true, Nya. Let's all have a party together, Nya. I've never done this stuff before. You just have food and eat food. You just, you just, you just have fun and eat food. So come on. Mayuri grabbed Suzaha's hand tightly to keep her from getting away. Mayuri? We got a seat for you, Suzaha. But I really don't know what to do. You just sit down, okay? Mary half dragged Suzaha over to the seat next to me and forced her to sit down. Ooh, awkward. Okay, every kitty. The gang's all here now. Round of applause. Let's not forget the doctors just in the background, yeah. Everyone started to applaud. Daru played some Christmas carols on his computer. The grim atmosphere that had begun to fill the room was banished, and I felt relieved. Okay, let's start with the toast. Pour your favorite drink into your glass, nya. Everyone started to look at the various drinks on the table. <laughs> Pouting Suza. <laughs> say his name, I can't. I don't know how to say it. Here, Suza. Suza still looked like she was feeling as though she didn't belong, so I poured her some now alcoholic champagne. Bruh? 
Why would you pour her non-alcoholic? If anyone needs a fucking beer, it's Suzaha. Are you kidding me? Non-alcoholic? Are you out of your mind? What rating is this game? Did they do it so they can keep it rated T? I feel like it's not rated T. Steins Gate... Oh god, my first Google result now will always be Steins Gate Hentai Gotcha. Rating. ESRB rating. ESRB rating. Oh yeah, see, it's already rated M. She might get drunk and kill someone. Oh, yeah. I really don't think I can do this. Why? Because I didn't come to this era to play. The reason she came to this era, huh? I didn't have the right to say anything about that. I was the only reason she was stuck here, unable to fill her mission. Fulfill her mission, but even so... Is it so bad to do this once in a while? But... Suzuha, you think too much. Naru joined in. All you're doing is having a meal with everyone. You're hungry either way, right? Well... Maybe Daru's statement caused her to realize it, because her stomach rumbled. Uh... See? Everyone made a lot of food for you, so just say thanks and eat. Everyone, y'all got your drinks ready? Yeah. I feel like I'm gonna. Go, I should go grab a beer for this too. We're all about to toast, so I'll go get your alcoholic beverages, everybody, or non-alcoholic, I guess, if you're weird. party. We're all, you know, of age. Actually, wait, no, I guess they're not of drinking age in Japan yet, huh? Does that really matter, though? You know what I mean? Someone's of age here. Oh, yeah, Maho is. I guess they didn't know Maho was coming, but still. You're telling me all the cosplay girls can't get a ID? supposed to wait to drink the beer until I, uh, everyone toasted. I don't drink, I don't have any drink on me other than water. That's fine. I mean, but you're not at a party, though. I mean, other than the stream being a party, I know. Ba -ba -ba -ba. Just kidding. <laughs> Oh yeah, one of the cosplay girls is, uh, like 21 or something. Alright, let's have a word from Mayuri, who put the party together. <laughs> Ferris, like, proposes the toast and is like, Mayuri, say the speech. That's rude. Mayuri stood up, flustered. As she stood up, she bumped into Luca, who was standing next to her. The two of them almost spilled their drinks. Uh, sorry, Luca. Mayuri, Mayuri, calm down. Okay. You know some traumatic shit's about to happen. They don't- in games like this, where trauma is the main thing, they don't hit you with the highs of good times and happy times and slice of life without something traumatic happening here by the end of this scene, baby. You know some trauma's about to happen. Just brace for it, I'm telling you now. The, my powers of plot prediction have never been wrong on stream. And they're not about to be wrong here either.
What is this emote? What are you guys doing? Just kidding. That's the first and last time I use a YouTube exclusive emote. Because there are always better emotes you can use. Mary started to take deep breaths, and then suddenly... <laughs> it's Christmas Eve today. There's normies out everywhere today. <laughs> but this year, let's have a party and be normie ourselves. I didn't think uh, Mayuri would be one to say that. Uh, I don't think that's what normie means, Mayushi. <laughs> Fubuki whispered a little sad. A bunch of people asked Fubuki out on Christmas dates. You should have seen them. They were all girls, though. <laughs> uh, anyway, if everybody has a good time, I will be very happy. That's all. Mary gave a little bow and smiled to Suzaha. Suzaha answered with an expression that wasn't really a smile. Okay, everybody, cheers, nya! Maho nya, you give the toast! Me? You came all the way out here, so why not give a toast and introduce yourself? What about the doctor? Maho stood up with a slight frown and thought for a moment before she opened her mouth. Thank you all for having me today. We're from America, so we've never spent Christmas in Japan before. And I'm finding out that spending a cheerful Christmas with friends is also great. Say something interesting, yeah. Huh? Something interesting. No. What? Uh, Ferris, you're crazy. Uh, 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 uh oh, she was totally losing it. She was worse than Mayuri had been a moment ago. It was hard to believe I'd seen her interpreting in front of a huge crowd of ATF. Was she that bad at ad living? <laughs> Maho's desperate attempt at something interesting was cute, but honestly embarrassing. It felt like watching a small, adorable animal. <laughs> Maho, yeah? You've got what it takes to be a cat eared maid. <laughs> this is the birth of Maharin Yan Yan. <laughs> Ferris and Mayuri were the only ones who seemed impressed. <laughs> What am I doing? Hiyajo, that toast. Right. I'll do that. Okay. Cheers! I drank a couple times too early, but, you know. Maho is a maid sprite win. My darlings embrace two win. Oh, fuck. Wandering said the joke just before I did. Everyone clinked their glasses together. Since I was the one who invited Maho to the party, I decided to cheer her up. That was an interesting toast. I hate myself. What are you talking about? You were a cool cat! <laughs> Maho, when are you starting at May Queen? What happens if we start to try Kurasu again? Oh. I'm not, okay. Ferris and the doctor were both enjoying trying to make her feel better. 
Suza, let's have a toast. Me too, Suza. Yeah. Suzuha still had a somber look on her face, but Mayuri, Yuki, and Daru forced her into, into a toast. Here, I made this. Mayuri put a piece of quiche on a plate and gave it to Suzuha. Man, quiche sounds fucking good again! Two streams in a row, we're talking about quiche! When Suzuha took a bite, her expression began to shine. It's good. Really? Yeah, the ultimate character arc for uh, a girl in an anime. Being able to cook. That's crazy. Is this a first? Eat more! Eat a lot! I can't eat it all at once. Oh yeah? Next, Mary offered the quiche to Maho, the professor. Try some too. Thanks. Oh, it's good. This is really good. Try this too. It's shrimp gotten and ethnic style fried chicken. Because ethnic style is America ethnic in this, uh. Excellent. <laughs> you guys really put a lot of effort into this. Yuki went around and offered everyone something to eat, but she couldn't bring herself to offer any to Suzuha. Mayuri kept motioning for her to go over, but Yuki kept fidgeting. Maybe she was thinking about it too much. But Suzuha kept devouring all the food that Mayuri and Yuki had prepared and was gushing over each dish. The two of them had been practicing their cooking for a month here in the lab. I guess it paid off. There's cake too! Kaede did the decorations. Yeah, I, you can feel like most of the art budget was used up in this moment of the game. Although, funnily enough, Kaede's uh, sprite does not look as colorful and cheerful as everyone else's. Maybe it's because her Santa hat's so big. But I guess her normal sprite like covers her a lot too, right? I didn't do a very good job, so forgive me. Man, everyone's so self-conscious. Kaede's kind of clumsy, but doesn't that just make her cute? That doesn't feel like a compliment. Everyone laughed. Then about an hour after we started eating. When she saw that everyone had eaten enough food, Ferris clapped her hands together loudly to draw everyone's attention. Okay, every kitty, now that we're all having fun, I'd like to start exchanging presents, yeah. We didn't have time to get something good, so I hope that's okay. Maho and the professor had stopped at Donkey Zote on their way from Waco and just spent ten minutes picking out presents. Don't worry, that's fine, yeah? I didn't bring anything. Are we doing 10 hours today, or normal time? Uh, I think we'll probably try to make it to the end of chapter 2. Unless, um... We... Unless there's like a perfect ending spot or something. That comes up before. Mayuri and I brought yours. Mayushi was the one who chose it. I see, sorry. Don't worry. Don't worry. Mayuri mimicked Dara's words as she pulled out two small wrapped parcels from her bag and put them on the table. They both had the same wrapping as the one Dara was holding. They must have bought them at the same place. Mayuri had already explained to me operation number two. Mayuri's plan for the evening was not only to make Suzuha smile, but to bring Yuki and Daru closer together. Ooh. 
I thought of a lot of different ways to decide who gets what presents. But in the end, I decided we're just gonna draw numbers. Yeah. Ferris gathered together everyone's presents and put little stickers with numbers on them. Then she lifted a bundle of disposable chopsticks above her head. Mayushi brought these so we could play the king's game tonight. Don't say that, Ferris. Uh, Mayuri, the king's game is something you play at singles parties. I know, I just got a little confused. Yeah, Daru's faces all look kind of weird. In all of his sprites. I love it when girls order me to do things. Same. Hashida, you really are a pervert. So we're going to use these chopsticks that Mayuri was a little confused about and use them to pick presents. Yeah. Whatever numbers on the chopstick you draw, that's the present you get. Yeah. Ferris loudly shuffled all the chopsticks and then went around to everyone so they could draw. She was also this was also part of Mayuri's plan. In fact, Mayuri and Ferris were sending signals to each other with eye contact with their fingers. <laughs> While everyone was focusing on the chopsticks, they were busy relabeling Yuki and Daru's presents. They were so oblivious about it that it started getting that I started getting nervous Yuki would find out. Everyone got a chopstick? I'll hand out the presents. No opening your present till everyone's got theirs. This is exciting. I wonder what I'm gonna get. Ferris and Mayuri passed out the presents according to the numbers that everyone drew. Once the presents were handed out, everyone started to take off the wrapping paper. Wait, why is Tenmyoji not here? With him, when his daughter's here? Like, is he just chilling at home alone Christmas Eve? And his daughter's out? I actually kind of feel bad. Nai was the first to react as she gave a very strange cry. Inside her box was a skull. <laughs> oh, isn't that cool? <laughs> it's a belt buckle, Nai. If you wear it to school, I'm sure it'll make you popular. Thank you. Luca, you terrified her. I was feeling bad for Nai, but when I took out my own present... Whose idea was this? The box had a cute design, and inside was what it looked like a see-through white veil. The white veil was decorated here and there with little pink ribbons. This can't be a... Oh, you got it, Okarine! You can give it to Mayuri as a present. No way. I'm sure she'd be happy to wear it for you. Why are we talking about this? What? Is this about me? Mary heard her name and came over. What's that? It's baby doll lingerie, Mayuri. And a super cute, sexy one. You can wear it for Ocarine, okay? I also like that there's cake on the table. A type of lingerie worn by women. Characterized by its wide hem that fluffs out. Okay. I like how they all fluster Mayuri. But she's just too good of a friend to admit her feelings. You know that's not happening. Why don't you wear it yourself? You hear in that moment, Mayuri's heart snaps in half. I'm giving this back. You can enjoy it yourself. I pushed the baby doll lingerie back to Fubuki. Okay, wanna exchange it for what I got? Fubuki handed me her present. Fubuki's grandmaster strategy of uh, just getting herself a present paid off. 
The wrapping and lid had been removed on the present already, so I took a quick look inside. Sexy pink shorts and a pink bra. Yep, they were see-through. Oh, that was the present I brought. I'd love it if you had Mayuri wear it, though. Enjoy! Oh my god, they're all trying to... <laughs> so everyone's trying to get other people to hook up. Mayuri's friends are trying to get Okabe and uh, Mayuri together. And Mayuri and Ferris are trying to get Yuki and uh, Daru together. Good lord. This is one horny fucking single party. I mean Christmas party. Is this all you people think about? Uh, I already got a present from Ocarine. I'm okay. Mayuri had drawn my present. Perhaps because we were friends? By the way, I'd chosen a huge chunk of chocolate in the, sh in the shape of a gold bar. The kind of thing you find in a donkey note bargy bin. Ocarine, was there really nothing else you could have gotten? Shut up. I read in a magazine these things make hilarious party gifts. There's no way anyone would want to get this. I would like a big fucking bar of chocolate. What? Not a chance. What? Not even a chance? The magazine said it was a sure thing. My <laughs> Yushi's happy. It's a gold bar. I'm never gonna get to touch another one in my whole life. You're such a good girl, Mayuri. You really are a good girl. There, there. They were patting Mayuri's head, half out of sympathy and half because she was cute. Somehow I ended up as the bad guy. The canon Mayuri will always be heartbroken. <laughs> oh no. That was my turn to open. Wait, I thought everyone was supposed to open at the same time. I'm really glad we played My Darling's Embrace before this so we know how heartbroken she is all the time. Yuki started to open her present. Wow. She took out a cute wooden music box. When she opened the lid, there was a little tin figure that danced. Wow, it's so cute! Wonderful! So romantic! That's so nice! The girls all seem impressed. It definitely looked like something a woman would enjoy receiving. With as many girls as there were coming to this party, it might have been the perfect choice. Wait. Maybe I should have brought something like that. But then I realized that the idea had never even occurred to me. Or, uh, Okabe. What does that emote mean? Uh, it looks like someone pouring coffee into their mouth? Whose present could this be, nya? Ferris, you're making it obvious. Oh, um, me. Daru re reluctantly raised his hand. <laughs> what? Oh my. <laughs> Uncle Daru, you're amazing. <laughs> nice, brother. Everyone except Mayuri and Ferris, who knew about it in advance, <laughs> raised their voices in surprise. This is from you then, Hashida? What do you think? Mayushi was the one who told me to get it. It's wonderful. I'll treasure this, thank you. Yuki held the music box close to her chest. She seemed really happy. Close to her what? Her what? I just can't... I can't tell where that is on this character sprite, you know what I mean? It's just, it's not... I just don't think it's obvious enough what that meant. Oh. And then her expression turned confused as she looked down. Then she started to fidget. Uh, to... Excuse me. I need a second. Just... She 
She hurried off towards the washroom, still holding the box. She must have seen the trick. According to what Mayuri had told me early, earlier, there was a fake letter from Daru taped to the bottom of the box. It was something like a love letter, along with an invitation to a movie date. I wonder how she was reacting. Meanwhile, Daru had also opened his own present, and he looked a little bothered. He'd been given Ferris's present. Until he opened it, he looked really happy, but now he'd gone completely silent. According to Mayuri, he was going to get a pair of movie tickets. And even though it was a present from Ferris, the tickets came with instructions to use them for a date with Yuki. <laughs> Ferris responded to Daru's questioning gaze with a wink. Good luck, nya, she seemed to say. For her part, Ferris received some kind of strange doll that Maho bought. Luga's present was the miniature remote-controlled helicopter that the doctor bought. The doctor got a set of 12 cute little crayons from Nai. Suzuha's present was a pair of gloves. Yuki had evidently made them herself. That seems like an interesting gift, because if you hand make them, and you're also randomly giving them to someone, what if they're not the same size? Mayuri and Daru definitely don't have the same size hands. She put them on looking happy, but maybe a little lonely, and smiled. That's great, Suzuha. Yeah. Wait, what'd you get, brother? This. Huh? Daru realized he'd been set up and was clearly avoiding looking at her. Suzuha seemed to understand and patted him on the back with a gentle expression on her face. What's wrong with that? Have a good time. Suzaha's like, I'm trying to get fucking born here, let's go! Uh, it's frustrating watching you two. I've never been on a real date. Oh, Daru. Neither is mom, supposedly. I like that Suzaha like, can't believe that her mother wasn't getting dates. Really? Yeah. So, but so I see. Uh... Yuki came back from the bathroom. She seemed to be having trouble walking straight. Oh god, what did she do in the bathroom? She sat back in her seat and began to nervously nibble on snacks in the bathroom, or in the table. And once in a while, she would take a look at Daru. For now, the ticket plan seemed to be going well. Uh-oh, for now. Staring too much could tip her off. I should probably pretend I didn't know. Oh, Maho got the music box Mayushi brought. Mayuri raised her voice when she saw the music box in Maho's hand. Oh wait, no, I, th I got confused. I was like, wait a minute, what? It was shaped like a deformed bear, and when you wound it up, its hands and legs would jerk back and forth as it played a tune. It was a very different design than the one Yuki received. Is it really okay for me to get something as nice as this? Go ahead! What kind of music does it play? I want to hear. Yeah, me too. Maho started to wind it up. As she wound it, Kaede turned off the music in the background. Here we go! Maho took her hand off the winding key, and the mechanical yet gentle sound that was unique to music boxes began to play. The lively atmosphere of the lab was replaced with a feeling of calmness and peace. We listened quietly to the sound. I really like this song. So do I. It makes you feel warm, right? This must be the song that... Yuki hums to herself? Yeah, it does. I see. This is the song. 
But why was Yuki already singing it? Suzaha stood up as if she suddenly remembered something. Yuki, don't you remember? What? Uh-oh. Yuki was spacing out so hard, she started to panic when Suzaha spoke to her. Oh, okay. I thought she was going to say, when I was little, you used to do this, sing this for me all the time. When I was sick, you sang this song for me. Oh, so yeah. Oh, yeah. It's definitely this song. Suzaha seemed to be remembering something as her eyes narrowed. Hey, Mayuri. What song is this? This is... Mayuri was about to speak, and then... Oh, I expected tragedy to strike. Out of nowhere, the world twisted. <laughs> I moaned in pain with an incredible sense of wrongness that flooded through me. The whole lab seemed to twist and fade. The happy party I'd been experiencing warped and waved like a mirage. Did your boy not call this shit? Or did he not call this shit? This. It couldn't be. Somewhere far away I heard something that sounded like a violent crash. I was just barely able to move my eyes in the direction it came from, and I saw Fabuki falling to the floor as she knocked over a table. Kaede and Ferris ran over, calling her name. But it all looked so blurred, like I was watching a movie underwater, and everything was slow. Oh, Fabuki is the uh, cosplay of the girl that also has reading Steiner, which is why she's freaking out, right? Because she's also getting this moment. But... Okabe, a bit more experienced with it, having time traveled a lot, is like I'm able to kind of stay focused. Their voices getting further and further away. No matter how much I stretched my hand, it reached no one and touched nothing. It was a terrible feeling, as if time and space were being torn apart, and even matter itself was losing subjectivity. This feeling. Even if I didn't want to remember, I knew what this awful feeling was. I knew it far better than I ever wanted. This was reading Steiner. Didn't we technically just break the 1% barrier? Pandora of Internal Return. For the first time in four months, I felt like the whole world was turning and twisting. Who was it? Who changed the world line? I didn't do anything. I hadn't interfered with it. So why was the world doing this to me? Oh, shit. I opened my eyes. Things had already taken on different colors. The world kept waving until once again it became fixed to a single point. I wasn't looking at a warm and cheerful party in the lab anymore. It was outside. It was raining. The rain was falling on my face. It dropped so large it hurt. It hurts because this is acid rain. It was a midwinter rain, freezing cold. I could feel it sapping the strength from my body. We start a new chapter. We did technically start a new chapter. I'm actually going to keep going for a bit because the chapter was only four hours long. Which seems odd, right? No. I think we did. It's not X Day Protocol anymore, right? It's Pandora's box now. My views stopped twisting. I was staring at the broad back of a man I didn't know. I could hear the sound of boots stamping through the mud, 
mingling with the rain. The stench was terrible. The smell of stewage was so strong it hurt to breathe, and it was mixed with the awful smell of burning rubber and plastic. Where was I? What was I doing? Things around me had just changed. I tried to understand what the situation was, but my brain was having an awful time keeping up. We're almost there. Hang in there. When I stopped, a rough hand panted, patted me on the shoulder encouragingly. I looked around to see a man my age, but with a strong and powerful face. It was a face I'd never seen. I didn't know him. Probably. The man was wearing the camo outfit and equipment I'd seen often in the self-defense force wear on the news. He was carrying an assault rifle on his shoulder. There were seven or eight people around me, all dressed the same. They surrounded me in a circular formation and walked forward silently, as they kept a careful eye on the area around me. Are these people the self-defense force? And then I realized... I was wearing the same uniform they were. I'm in the SDF? I touched my bicep to check, but there was no muscle. It was flabby and weak. Unlike the others, I wasn't carrying weapons either. Then what was going on? It felt like these seven or eight guys were all guarding me. Since when was I that important? Still confused, I dragged on forward. Where was I? It was a long path filled with dark brown mud. The walls formed a tall silhouette left and right. Yeah, it could depend. The OG game could be easier if uh, we knew Fubuki. I'm surprised she didn't, like, at any point freak out to Mayuri, like, yo, do you know what the fuck's going on? Like, do you feel how weird this is? And then Mayuri didn't mention in subtle conversation, like, hey, my friend's been having weird dreams lately. Isn't that crazy? She says I keep dying. Bit there, Jesus. The path forward was filled with garbage and concrete rubble. Sometimes we had to force our way past it. I looked up past the high walls, and despite the rain, the moon in the night sky was strangely red and a little too bright. Shouldn't Okabe like be like, why do my muscles feel so sore? I've been walking for so long. Because in the first game, we always talked about, like, how weak and meek he was. So if they've been walking for a while, wouldn't he be feeling it when he, like, came to? It was thanks to the moon we were able to walk down a path like this without flashlights. <laughs> hmm? I heard a sound. It was the sound of water. Eh? Huh? When did I get so jacked? No, he already acknowledged that he was still out of shape. That was the first thing he checked when he was in the military outfit. He was like, wait a minute. Am I fit? Am I fucking ripped now? And then he realized quickly he was not. I looked over and saw a hole opened in one of the walls. Filthy water was pouring out. The water formed dozens of little rivers that blocked our path. Oh my god, this water is so loud. So that was it. This is the bottom of a river that had dried up. It looked like high walls for the river dikes. Where are we? I turned toward the man who I had spoken to and yelled so my voice could be heard. Don't make loud noises. I'm sorry. We're almost through the city center. We can make, make it to the Nermia garrison. There will be a car waiting for you, so just keep walking.
but his words cut off. Everyone seemed more tense. No, they just give away their position. One of them grabbed me and pushed me towards the side of the riverbed. Everyone put their backs against the wall and held their breath. I could hear the sound of a helicopter's rotors in the distance. More than just one. They were getting closer. How is a squad of, like, ten people about to remain stealthy here? I had no idea what was going on, but I could feel my heart start to beat fast. Get in the shadow of a car. Past several meters of rubble laid an overturned car. Must have fallen into the river riverbed after the water disappeared. The entire body was bent inward, and the roof was crushed. Man, we're staring at this one CG for a while. I lay down in the sinking mud, then slid into the shadow of the car. At the same time, the soldiers, soldiers were issuing orders, as if this was something they had planned for. Two of them stayed by my side. Everyone else ran back the way they'd come. They all climbed up crevices and outcroppings in the wall, and then disappeared over the edge of the dike and out of my view. Shortly after... <laughs> Those are gunshots. And not just a single shot from a handgun or anything. This was the sound of war. I could hear the helicopters getting further away, drawn by the gunfire. <laughs> no. In this world line was Japan at war? Bro, how many times did Okabe have to be fucking reminded that war was about to come? And now the war has come and he's like... Surprised face. Pikachu face. <laughs> Surprised Pikachu meme, actually Okabe. Fucking Christ. There's a war? Are you telling me? Is this some kind of World War Three? The Third World War. I remembered Suzanne's words. I happened to look inside the car. I could see the corpse of a man and a woman and a child hanging upside down, still attached to their seatbelts. They were all covered in a dry black blood. It looked like mannequins in a bad haunted house. And then I realized. I've been so focused on moving forward, I hadn't noticed what they were. But I'd seen similar mannequins sunk into the mud. I could see their arms, bones, and ragged muscle exposed to the air, reaching up to the sky as if seeking salvation. This is like another thing that I've kind of not really understood in the thought process of Evoker Bay in this game. My only real complaint so far. And I under... So the Christmas party was nice, right? <laughs> yeah. But this is my only real complaint of the game so far, right? Um a couple things, but I feel like it's appropriate to mention here. And I understand they kind of gotta, like, just move along so the like plot can continue and kind of avoid these, but it feels like these are glaring plot holes, right? Uh, one, I understand that Okabe is depressed and everything. And he's like, oh, this is the end of the world for me personally and everything, but Suzuha's like, hey, if you don't fucking focus up and get your shit together, World War III is gonna start. And then he's still the whole time, like, Nah, I'm just gonna go to college. I'm gonna go to the VCU in America. It's all gonna be good, yo. And Susan has like, no, no, like World War Three literally starts like by the end of the year, basically. Like you're not going to do go do shit. Like go back in time. We gotta fix this shit. And Okabe is like, no. So instead of like being in this like calm environment where he can at least deal with his trauma, he's now going into World War Three, which where you're never gonna be able to like focus on that trauma at all. And then second. His issues with talking to Kurosu, I understand that's traumatizing because he he killed her in this timeline, right? But he also has made it perfectly clear several times in the OG Steinsgate game that he basically had to reintroduce himself to Steinsgate. Um, or excuse me. He had to reintroduce himself and basically recap the whole scenario every single time to Kurosu. Every single time. And he did it almost like a hundred times, basically. 
And in this game, he's like, nah, I can't do it. And again, I guess there's that trauma, but like still, it's kind of like, bro, you've you've done it already a lot of times. Hey, Ruben, welcome back. You missed like all of uh, Stein's game, my darling embrace, but that it, we are indeed on uh, zero now. The second stream of zero, actually. So plenty of vods for you to watch, but good to have you back, buddy. So we're here already, where World War III started earlier? Kind of, yeah. Um, we're on the 1.3 world line. So we broke through the 1% barrier, but we're, we, went a little, we overshot it a little bit. Um, I don't know what world line we're on now, but we're in a bad one. So anyway, that's really my only complaint, and I understand that a lot of those things kind of have to be sidestepped a little bit so they can continue the sto like, specific story that they want to tell here. But I digress. I guess Okabe didn't truly believe it until he saw it. It's like, but still... He only starts the final mission because he's convinced his waifus will be alive if he does it. I mean, yeah, so like, I mean, yeah, we kind of, like I said in the last stream, I guess, like, he... He really does need that pep talk from himself um, to, like, get the story going or, like, to actually go through with it. So, like, I get it. Like, he needs that pep talk, but... And I also get that he puts away the Kiyoma uh, personality in this game. So, basically, like, he can bring it back at the end, and then it comes full circle where we finally see the return of Kiyoma, and it links back to the first game, and I get that that's probably gonna be, like, the big moment of the game, but still, I like to nitpick. And if I don't nitpick, I mean, what am I gonna do for commentary? I'm still enjoying this, I think, more than the OG one so far, though, so just, just don't tell anyone. Do you think Mayuri is sad she doesn't get with Okabe? I think so. We know Mayuri is now always sad. All the time. I put my hand over my mouth to stifle a scream. Those weren't mannequins. Liking the Kurosu drip? Thank you, thank you. I had depressed Okabe drip yesterday's stream. Get along the wall and move. We're changing the route, come on. He, think her, he thinks her death converges like Mayuri's to where she'll always die. I get that he thinks that, but it's like... It's a bit different, because he's got the time machine, you know? We need our divergence meter. We know we're at 1.3, because we saw the cutscene. He pulled me up, my knees shaking from shock and exhaustion. The others are drawing away the Soviet helicopters, but that won't last long. The Soviets? My mind was dull from the terror, but it seemed like there was something off about what he just said. Get a hold of yourself. Do you know how many people died to protect you? Protect me? Why? We haven't been told why. But we were told to lay our lives down for you if we had to, and that you could change the future. The helicopter passed over the riverbed. The bright searchlight passed by for a moment, but thankfully, the shadows hit us. I understand it sounds iffy and stretched out, but it does work. I'm sure it does. I'm sure we'll get there. But we're still early. And again, not enough AI Kurosu for me. Because again, like I said in the first uh, uh, stream, my favorite character archetype is the AI companion archetype. And I want more of it. I need more of it. It's my favorite character from other characters like Cortana and Iba from Sound of Files. I love the AI companion helper. Bring AI Kurosu back. 
I just realized we didn't invite Moika to the Christmas party. <laughs> Truly a tragedy. This way. The young soldier, whose name I didn't know, pulled me inside one of the holes. When I looked closely, I could see this was the entrance to a sewer. It was just big enough for a single person to pass through. Struggling against the flow of the water that came up to my knees, I pressed on. My sense of smell had already gone numb, so I didn't have to worry about the stench of the sewage. It's about the empty void of Kurisu not being there, so it makes sense. But we got bits of AI Kurisu. Give me more. Once inside, we came to several branching paths. The soldiers seemed to know which one would lead where, and they marched on. And then we came out the sewer and back into the riverbed. This same fucking screen! Also, can't pull up our phone, by the way. It was all dried up, just like the one we'd been through. I didn't know if it was the same as the river or another one, and the two soldiers didn't tell me. I'm kind of curious here to what did trigger the new divergence. Is it just Suzaha being happy and remembering the song? Was that enough to be a trigger event? I mean, I'm sure we'll figure it out. As always, I ask the questions in advance, but I kind of like to ask these questions in advance. I know Wandering's already preparing to give me shit, but um, I'd like to speak my internal thoughts and questions out loud while I'm commentating. Uh, you know, in the, in the couple stretches of time between when I am being hysterical on stream, which is why you guys all watch, of course. I like how dark and depressing Zero is compared to the original. Yeah, that's kind of what I was talking about at the end of last stream as well. You've missed so much, Ruben. You've missed so much. But I liked how they weren't afraid to shy away from like the trauma that Okabe has gone through and his panic attacks and him being on anxiety medication and going to therapy and things like that. Uh, I like that the game wasn't afraid to like shy away from like some of those darker concepts which you don't really see in anime very much. Like Most people don't want to talk about these kinds of things that the hero would go through. What do you think about the music compared to the original? I think everything's like... Sure, I might like the pure story of the original a bit better so far. I mean, I'm still pretty early, so I can't give the full rating yet. But like, so far, I like everything else better about Zero. That's like the superficial stuff, I suppose. I like the music a bit better. The budget for the CGs is obviously better. The portraits are cooler. Um, I like the art style of this one better. I like that it seems like the portraits interact a bit more, like while the um, the characters are talking, like they got the lip flaps going a little bit, and they have more expressions and stuff like that. But yeah. Is it just me or does this OST remind me of the Terminator? I mean, yeah, right, like Suza one. Um, I mean, Suzaha's entire character design is a reference to Terminator, and this whole World War thing is basically the Terminator kind of plot, except it's slightly different, because there's no robots, but, like, Suzaha's got the Sarah Connor outfit with, like, the leather jacket and the tight sports, uh, coat underneath it while being jacked from the future and out of place, and then, uh, you know, there's time travel, obviously. Uh, there's two sides going back to the past and things like that. No robots, you say? I guess true, we do have AI Kurosu. But yeah, that's basically kind of what, you know, there's a lot of, I mean, kind of any and all, like, time travel things always in some way, shape, or form play, pay tribute to, like, Terminator or Back to the Future in, like, some way. Not that it's a bad thing, obviously, because both of those things are great. Um, I'm just saying, like, there's definitely lots of, like, and, uh, Steins Gate isn't afraid to reference, like, popular media, obviously, because they make a lot of jokes about that kind of stuff. So they're not afraid to play tribute to those things, but, like, Suzaha's whole character is, like, Sarah Connor, right? Or maybe not, maybe I'm confusing the name. But Suzaha's the badass female character from Terminator. Maybe I forget her name. I think it's Sarah Connor, right? Or am I confusing them? It's 
It's been so long since I've seen the Terminator movies. Now I kind of want to watch them. Would you enjoy this game more if the OG didn't have the true end? I don't... I don't know. I mean, I'm enjoying this game a lot. I have, like, one minor nitpick, but other than that, I mean, I really like the story. Like I said yesterday, too, and I'll repeat it again as well. I'm a big fan of sequels. I think more so than average people are. As I think most people usually like the original better, things like that. But I usually like to get myself really immersed in, like, a character universe and, like... Um, get attached to specific characters and things like that. Um, so personally, I always like to see the characters again, right? So that initial, the original thing gets me like liking the characters and wanting more of them. So I end up liking sequels more because it almost feels like fan service to me. Even if the sequel's not fan service -y, I like that aspect of being able to see those characters again. So getting more exposure to characters generally to me is a better thing so i typically like sequels more even if you could argue the semantics of like well the sequels plot isn't as good or whatever you wanted to say i typically will still like the sequel more anyway because i just want more of that content more of those characters more of that universe so i really enjoy this i'm having a good time we just went on a nice rant there it's been a while in these streams for me to go on a rant but I feel like it's due. I haven't gone around on these streams in a while. You've only seen the fourth Terminator movie? Bro. I'm so sorry. The first two are the good ones. Steinsgate does a good job at making the original, or Steinsgate Zero does a good job at making the original better, but that's good. That's good. But yeah, I always like that kind of stuff. I always like sequels. I'm a big... And I'm sure that some people that have watched my streams for a long time... Um, actually, I think the only like really long-time viewers here are like AK and Gamer. Um, will know that's how I feel about like other games I've played. Um, where I get super attached to characters and universes and themes and stuff. I'm one of those people that can super easily get immersed in something that I like I'm very quick to immediately ditch like any sense of like not getting immersed in the story or whatever so I can get really emotionally invested so I can cry like a little bitch on stream you know I do all that kind of stuff so like like I said more exposure to those characters really helps my immersion and lets me like fanboy out and if that makes sense So, we've got the dozens of different games I've cried on stream for. So, but that's because I, like, let myself get immersed in these stories. I know, you played the Persona dancing games. <laughs> Listen. They were good, alright? I will defend that. <laughs> I will defend that those are the best uh, Persona spin-offs. Thank you very much. Um, but yeah, like I like to get invested in those universes. Get like, um, you know, attached to the characters, and I'm not afraid to become super attached to the characters. Uh, I want to get attached to the characters, so I'll always like, even if for some people they're like, "Oh, I can't, I can't get immersed in this." I'm usually the first to, like, kind of immediately fade away that sense of, like, serious critical analysis of a story so I can just immerse myself. Um, very rarely do I go, well, that technically doesn't make sense because of all of this stuff. I like to shut my brain off and just get invested and just be the character. Because obviously, nine times out of ten, the protagonist of whatever story you're watching isn't going to be like, well, technically, shouldn't that not happen because of the things that happened earlier on in the story and how these characters perform? <laughs> I mean, I'll occasionally do that, but I usually will very quickly shut that part of my brain off so I can get immersed. And I'm very willing to give that shit up right away. <laughs> Tangent time! It's been a while. <laughs> 
It's been a while since we've been able to rant. I don't think I really was able to do it at all during yesterday's stream. There was so much serious plot going on, especially when we started off this, uh, the game with immediately going into Kurosu's death. Um, it was hard to find a moment to rant. A Persona dancing games? You say game like singular vibe, and there's three of them. And I streamed all of them. Uh, the fourth ones. Or the one based on the, the fourth game is the only, like, one with a story, though. Anyway, <laughs> rant over, unless anyone has any like questions or comments about it, but we can continue the plot a little bit. Where Okabe doesn't know if he's in the same spot. Either way, I was glad to be finally out of the foul-smelling darkness of the sewer. I tried to take a deep breath and fill my lungs with air, but... <gasps> Halfway through, I realized that the riverbed smelled worse than the sewer. I took an involuntary step back and then another. The sight in front of me was terrible. What was once a riverbed was now just filled with bodies. Some of them had been burnt black, so it was impossible to tell how much death lay before me. And in the distance, I could see what looked like bonfires. They were burning despite the rain. The fires were consuming the mountains of flesh that were once human bodies. We're almost there. I know it's rough, but can you run? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> A soldier spoke to me. Then I came back to my senses. If it weren't for these two, I wouldn't have been able to stay sane. We ran through the riverbed, one of them in front of me, the other behind. I could hear the constant drone of helicopters. Sometimes the searchlights got close. Each time they did, I hid in piles of bodies until they passed. I'd seen this many times before as I wandered through world lines. Wait, what? Oh, just one body. I'd seen death. But you saw one person dying and they weren't decaying. I'd seen the moments when people had died. But at the same time, I'd never experienced what happened to a dead person after they were left out for a long time. More than fear, more than sorrow. The thing that hit me first was the smell of death. The rotting stench ate away at my body, not my soul. My whole body was rejecting it. It made me sick. Thinking that way, I meant trampling on the dignity of the dead, but I couldn't help it. The Valley of Hinnom. I remembered that phrase. That was what the strange attacker that said that night, that came after. That valley was the origin of the word Genham. Genhana? Genhana. Meaning hell. It was said that the flames burned there every night, scorching the heavens. He remembers this, but now World War III? Yeah. Bruh, what the fuck are you doing? I'm always scared of World War III that it might happen. I mean, it'll happen eventually. Let's just be realistic, huh? Those who died merciless deaths with anger and misery in their hearts were flung into the flames. Their souls becoming black smoke that drained hatred, or that rained hatred down on the land. This was what I stared at now. Can we stop looking at the same background? No, well, I guess this isn't much better. The two soldiers led me to a half-collapsed subway tunnel. The lights were all off because there was no electricity, but there were three armored cars in camo colors, with their headlights uh, on to illuminate the way. They were four-wheel drive off-road vehicles, covered in thick chunks of armor, but I didn't see real weapons. You can take the subway route to escape to Saitama. I hear it's still safe at the Aruma base. If you get that far, you should be able to escape Kanto. Kanto. Escape Kanto? Ask them about it. For now, just hurry. 
There was a lot of things I wanted to ask, but even as we spoke, I heard what sounded like gunshots outside. The men forced me into the back seat of one of the cars. Goodbye. I'll pray for your safety. What about you guys? We have another mission to carry out. Farewell. The two soldiers who had brought me here saluted, then turned around and left. Felt like I was never going to see them again. Well, they didn't get character sprites, so... I can tell you right now, you are not about to see them again. The door of the armored car slammed shut. The car's crew were soldiers just a little older than me. Oh my god, first animated CG? I mean, I guess we are just seeing brick. The diesel engine kicked to life and the car raced down a tunnel that had originally been designed for trains. Of course, it wasn't a pleasant ride, but I didn't have a choice. There was no way I could tell them I wanted to go to Akihabara. I had no way to alter the world line. I had to survive. And to survive, I needed to do what they said. My wants didn't matter. I wasn't even allowed to express them. I just did as they told me and ran. That was all I could do. But I had no idea it would take an entire month. Well. Oh, hey. We're about to get an anonymous recap of the game so far. The story so far... The USSR starts experimenting with a time machine, and America goes apeshit. Give me that time machine. But I refuse. Eastern powers and the Soviets get cocky. How's it feel to be you right now, huh? How's it feel? This brings us to the end of your regularly scheduled Cold War. I'm a bomb you from Japan, lolol. Well then we'll invent invade Japan. The US. Oh shit. USSR is kicking ass. Hokkaido and the Japan are, and the Japanese are screwed. Are they coming for Central Japan? GTFO of Japan. Amateurs who know nothing about strategy need to STFU. The SDF may look like they're retreating, but they've actually got a defense line at Mount Fuji. They're about to start a counterattack. The Mount Fuji line, Lamau. Who the hell's dumb enough to believe the Japanese? Who to believe Japanese Imperial High Command? Raffle. We better not start hearing calls for kamikaze pilots soon. Shut up, noob. Idiots like you are the real threat. What the hell's happened to the collective right of self-defense? America's only interested in protecting Okinawa. What the hell is the SDF doing getting sent off to Siberia? How are they supposed to protect the country? You protect it, chicken hawk. You want to fight? Go volunteer. They say they aren't getting enough recruits. They're gonna start conscription soon, you think? What's the point of conscripting a bunch of fat otaku? They just get in the way. War these days requires professionals. Says the fat otaku who doesn't want to go to war. There are barely any professional soldiers left in Japan. Our masters in America sent them all around the globe and then stuck them there. You guys will probably be getting your conscription notice soon. Good luck. I'm the chick, so I don't care. In other words, if we get a sex change, I don't have to go, right? Uh, the real enemies of Japan are its own citizens, huh? So, are we going to be split up like Germany? It's likely. They say there's a provisional government forming in Okinawa. They're set to abandon East Japan and just have America protect the West. Those incompetents in the government might honestly just do it. Is it really the time to bash politicians, you traitor shill? Traitor, lol. Shill, lolol. Strategically, America can't let go of Okinawa. Japan wants to keep some kind of government. That means making a provisional government in Okinawa the best option. You just bashed the hell out of Okinawa, now you're telling me this? Shut up, you traitor. So if I'm a traitor, what are you? If you're posting on at channel right now, that means you either fled the country or you ran to Okinawa. Is this today's you don't get to talk thread? This must be, uh, Daru. Tip unlocked. 
KK, LOL. I know what LOL means, Jesus. KK is net slang for okay. The Aruma Air Base is Japan's largest uh, base. Hey, I've seen a scene similar to this before. I'm not surprised at channel exists. As long as the internet exists, at channel will exist. Let's be real here, huh? The reason it took a month to get to Okinawa was that we were losing. Supposedly, the pain had... The plan had been to ferry me by plane to Okinawa once I'd arrived at Uruma base. But the constant bombing slowed us down, so they gave up on the plane and decided I would escape to Kyushu by ground. There was more than one attack by Soviet spies and assault teams. Some of the soldiers protecting me have died. But when we got to Saispo, I was able to get on a mar maritime escort ship and managed to escape to Okinawa. Why were they doing this for me? No matter how many times I asked, no one would answer. Okinawa in winter was covered in thick clouds. Come to think of it, I hadn't seen a real break in the clouds for a month. I was thinking about that when I was loaded into a van with the dark tinted windows that had come to pick me up. Inside the car was not only a driver, but a middle-aged man sitting in the front passenger seat. He was short, perhaps only 150 centimeters tall. But he had the air of a military veteran, and even though he was fully dressed, I could tell he was extremely muscular. Okabe, Okabe? correct. I'm Shinioma with the Ministry of Defense's Intelligence Security Command. the Ministry of Japan that operates the SDF. I'm going to make a stop at the airport and then head to Okinawa Defense Bureau in Kadena. Uh, I'm sure you're tired from your journey, but I'll have to ask you to hang in there a while longer. That's what everyone keeps telling him over and over again. Just hang in there, buddy. It's gonna get rough. Hi. Right. Oof. I heard Tokyo was destroyed. I'm trying to recognize anything. <laughs> but I guess it's just like random cities. Well, this building kind of looks familiar. And this is the, um, where Kami uh, Kamimiya is hosted, right? And this building right here must be the Rodicon, because it's totally untouched. And for the plot to work, it has to be. The major functions of the Japanese government were now headquartered out of the Okinawa Defense Bureau to allow for better cooperation with the American forces stationed. That's what Shin uh, Shimoyama, Shimiyama explained to me. In other words, the place I was heading to was the core of Japan's defense. Once I arrived, would I, would, under, would I understand why I was so important that all those soldiers were willing to die to protect me? Actually seeing the world ending for once is really destructive. Yeah, war is bad, man. The car stopped in front of the Naha airport. And then I saw a surprising pair get aboard. Oh, hey! Wow, it's really Okarine! Yuki and Nakase? I wasn't expecting to see them. But they were the first people I knew who I'd met since coming to this world line. Damn. 
Yuki really is just a fucking... Every outfit she's got. High quality. So are we going to talk with Fubuki about how we just jumped world lines, or no? That alone was almost enough to make me cry. But still, I couldn't just sit there and be happy. What about Mayuri? Do you know where she is? She's fine. Yuki nodded as if trying to make me feel better. She was just with us. Just with you? That's right. Mayushi, Rumi, and Luka, and Kaede. We got to the airport this morning. We were all waiting because they said we could go someplace called the Defense Bureau, where we'd be safe. They said they'd take Fubuki and me there first. And then they had us get inside this car where we find you. I'm glad everyone's safe. Uh, a couple people were not mentioned. Uh, Okabe? <laughs> A couple of people definitely not mentioned. Again, uh, Yuki is very high tier character design. You know what I mean? Find yourself a hot girl here? Who was talking about that? Since Daru and Suzaha weren't mentioned, I was gonna ask about them, but... Sorry, can you talk about this later? They cut me off and the car started moving. The plan is for your families to arrive at the Okinawa Defense Bureau eventually. We already have protection. I'm so glad. Your other friends are all in the car behind us. You haven't been separated, so don't worry. I took a quick look and saw another identical van behind us. So Mayuri and the others were there? So we'll see them later, right? Ooh, that triggers a death flag. You saying that, I think triggers a death flag. Of course. Yuki let out a sigh of relief. But then I started to wonder about something else. Why were we split into different cars? This van could hold at least another three people. If we squeeze tight, it could hold everyone. Was there some other reason they put Yuki, Fubuki, and I into the same car? The car drove alongside the Okinawa monorail for a while and then went south. Could I not? It's so dark. What was that? And where is here, this stream? That's true. All the hot girls you'll find watching this stream, baby. Get yourself ready. It's not even a link. Technically, the link is their name. Because links get automatically deleted on YouTube chats. Um, their name, though, is the dot .xyz. All these stores, they're just so dark. There were lots of franchise restaurants and supermarkets and cafeterias and rent-a-car places all jammed together on the side of the road. All of them were silent. The lights were turned off. Barely any of the street lights were turned on. And the only cars were Japanese and U.S. military vehicles. I didn't see anyone out for a stroll. There's a blackout in effect, as well as curfew past five. Okinawa may be safe, but this is wartime. Things can't be like they were. I can't wait for the war to end and everything to go back to normal. <laughs> wartime, huh? I got bad news for you, buddy. It ain't ending. Tell me, Okabe. Okinawa Yuru was a bright, fun place, even at night, wasn't it? I wouldn't know. I've never been to Okinawa. That's a shame. I pray you get to come back for a good vacation sometime. It really is a nice island. Hey, how dare you. Plenty of hot girls watch this stream. All the time. Trust me. They're just in a diff different chat room. You wouldn't know. You wouldn't understand. Okay. 
It's it, they're in my Discord. That's where they're at. Cuba is secretly a hot girl. God, I wish. The car did, headed up from the bypass over a land bridge and then to another road, where we quickly came to a long tunnel. I actually wanted to ask the three of you questions before we got to the bureau, which is why I have you riding with me. My guess was right. That meant there was something he wanted to ask just the three of us. Oh, do we all have readings, Diner? But why us? I wasn't particularly close to Yuki or Fubuki. I'd only ever even started talking to them a few months ago. Then I shook my head. That was before the world line changed. Maybe things were different here. I had no idea what my relationship was to anyone else in this world line. Since the SDF had been treating me so well, I didn't want to make him suspicious. I decided it would be best to leave most of the talking to Yuki and Fubuki. Amane yuki -san. Is the Muck stream tomorrow? Yeah, I was thinking about finally streaming Muck, considering uh, Joe has been asking and donating for a Muck, Muck stream for the last, like, month. Yuki went stiff when her name was called. I could feel it even sitting next to her. You don't know where Daru and his little sister are, do you? Little sister. That must be Suzaha. You saw Joe on the Discord right now? Y you mean the hot girls in my Discord, right? That's what you mean, right? I'm finally doing the mock stream? I guess so. We'll see just what that game is about, huh? That would mean, even in this world line, Suzaha had come from the future and gotten to know Yuki and the others while pretending to be Daru's sister. The SDF d evidently didn't know where Daru and Suzaha were. No, I... Yuki fell silent and glanced over to me as if expecting help. I didn't know where they were either. I didn't even have any memories of this world line, so I had no way of answering. But Yuki's attitude bothered me. It was as if she knew where they were and was deliberately hiding it, and that I was supposed to be hiding it too. I can figure that out, so I'm sure she, uh, she, mil she Moyama could too. A strange tension filled the car. Yuki was trying to hide it, but from who? Hmm? Are you sure you don't know? He turned around from the front passenger seat and asked again. I'm sorry. She bowed her head in apology. But you were close to him, weren't you? His lover. Yet you heard nothing? You know cell phones don't work anymore, right? There are plenty of ways to get in touch with someone besides a cell phone. With what, a fucking raven? Like, what are you talking about? But I really don't. Nothing from his sister, either, huh? Hi. No. By the way, I'm told you were re researching something with Hashida, Okabe? It's weird that even after experiencing all of this, it took Okabe a lot more to actively decide to stand up and fight. Yeah, it is weird. I wasn't sure how to react when the conversation suddenly turned towards me. Researching? Researching what? Bruh. Uh-oh. If I panic, I'll make them suspicious. What were you researching? I would just have to give him the most harmless answers I could. It wasn't really research, it was more like... Inventions. Inventions? Like whether we could attach a CCD camera to a bamboo copter to do aerial photography? Or that you could use the heat from a vacuum as a hairdryer? 
なかなか面白いね。Interesting. それじゃ何かとんでもないもの。Then you weren't say making something unbelievable and running away from us so we wouldn't find out what that was? <laughs> running away? Damn, I responded. That was a mistake. But did that mean that Daru and Suzaha were hiding from them in the midst of all this chaos? The SDF had risked their lives to protect me over the past month. Shouldn't I be asking them for help? I got even more confused. If you don't know, that's fine. We'll talk to Daru and his sister some other time. Somebody, please tell me what the right answer is. How am I supposed to respond here? Just Google it, Okabe! Or ask chat, that's what I always do. Uh, Nikaze Katsumi? There's something else I wanted to ask you. Me? This time it was Fabuki's turn to jump in her seat. Nah, don't get nervous. It's nothing big. You know, he told her to not get nervous, but everyone else, he was like, fucking squirm. Or so he said, but Fubuki was clearly starting to get scared. Her reaction was strange. Too strong. Maybe the SDF wasn't simply protecting us. For one thing, there was no way normal civilians like us merited such important treatment. But then what were they after? I could guess. The time machine. This war had started with Russia's time machine experiments. And of course, Nakabachi was involved. I'd learned from some of the soldiers that even in this world line, he'd sought asylum in Russia. Suzaha was a time traveler. If Suzaha was here, if Suzaha was here in this era, that meant that it was Daru who made the time machine that brought her here. God damn it, I want to crack my neck so bad. If you had a time machine, you could change the outcome of the war. It would make sense that that's what the Japanese government thought. And if that was what they were trying to capture Daru and Suzaha and their friends. Once I realized that, the whole situation started to feel terrifying. Was this car really headed towards the Okinawa Defense Bureau? And if it was, were they really going to keep us safe? About the physical Was there a problem? No. You've almost recovered from your wounds you were supposed to sustain in Tokyo. And health-wise, you're fine. But you seem to be under a lot of stress. It's almost as if there was a world war going on or something. Haha, <laughs> crazy, right? Anyway. Oh. I'm excited to watch the Steins Zero anime after I finish this stream. Wow. It's not surprising. You survived that terrible bombing. It's no exaggeration to say most civilians have PTSD now. Yeah, it's average. <laughs> It seems your symptoms are a little different than most. You have very realistic dreams, for example. In particularly severe instances, they can almost be called waking dreams. I'm told at times you lose the ability to tell the difference between dreams and reality. Isn't that just PTSD, though? Fubuki was too scared to speak, so Yuki interrupted. It was rare to see Yuki act like this. Nothing else, I'd never seen him before. It was plain now. Yuki didn't trust him. In fact, she must have considered him an enemy. Yeah. No, it's very strange. He paused for a moment for effect, then rubbed his chin. There are others who say they have similar dreams, not just one or two. Like, this seems like something so weird to ask it, like, out in the open. Like, uh, especially with other people here. Hey, I heard about your test results from your last doctor's appointment. That breast cancer's crazy, huh? <laughs> like, what the fuck? 
I know this is supposed to be like an interrogation, but still. Huh? Of course, the degree, the degree to which they suffered from this problem changes, but we found more than 10 in Japan alone. They exist in other countries too. Well, we've only got information from the West. That's just coincidence, isn't it? Fubuki was incredibly frightened, so I spoke for her. You heard of Puchi, right? No, what is that? Vladimir Putin. From 2000 to 2008, he was the second president of Russia. And after 2008, he became the prime minister. Former KGB agent. Hmm. No idea who that is. I suggest you watching the, uh, the anime after finishing this, as the anime mixed both main routes together. Yeah, I was told that already too. Kyler said that as well, Vibrant Guy, so yeah, I'll wait until after we've beat the visual novel to watch it. Which is fine, because I have stuff to watch now anyway. With uh, the JoJo Part 6, Part 3 out now. <laughs> sure hope he doesn't do drastic moves involving a neighboring nation. He would never. I'm sure this one leading World War 3 is a bit reasonable guy. But yeah, there's a lot of ways that you can see that Yuki is uh, Suzuha's mother. Suddenly, she, uh, Shimoyama turned his gaze towards me and asked me a question. So far, pretty sick. Yeah, part six is my favorite, dude. It's pretty good. The Soviet general secretary, right? I almost said the president of Russia, but managed to stop myself. The Soviet Union still existed. Putin's title was general secretary, not president. I'd heard that during my time in Aruma. So, Correct. But interestingly enough, Nakase-san referred to him as president of Russia. Huh? Sorry, I wasn't paying attention. I'm not really what you'd call a good student. That's not it. It's one of the strange things about all the people who have these dreams. They all call him pre uh, President Putin. They all call Goblachev and Lyston presidents too. Goblachev. He was a general second uh, secretary of the Communist Party. The last leader of the USSR. After the fall of the Soviet Union, he became the first president. Died in 2007. I don't know my Russian history very well, unfortunately. That's why scientists have started calling it the president's disease. Not a terribly clever name, if you ask me. No way. Is he talking about my reading Steiner? There was a strong chance that people besides me had the power, even if not as acutely. I never found out for sure, but what Ferris had said in the Alpha World line certainly suggested it. So it was certainly possible that Shinoyamiya's waking dreams were actually effects of reading Steiner. They were all aware of the world line changing a month ago, just like me. If Ibuki had the same memories of the other world lines I had, it would make perfect sense she called Putin a president. What's funny here, too, if you really think about it, and like, um, at the end of the day, probably the reason why Okabe has such a greater understanding of reading Steiners compared to all these other people who are like freaking out and having like PTSD breakdowns about their reading Steiner is because Okabe was Chuni and believed he had superpowers. So he just bought into reading Steiner and thought about it really hard. <laughs> <laughs> and just believed. <laughs> so because of his make-believe bullshit, he actually has, like, full control over this, like, traumatizing thing that everyone else is like, ah! <laughs> Like, if you truly think about it. <laughs> it 
Isn't it funny too, uh, Ruben? You might have been there when I w during my, the Steinsgate streams. I talked about like, um, without even knowing the plot to this game, and still not knowing the plot to this game. Uh, I immediately was like, "What if someone in America also had Reading Steiner, just completely like detached from Okabe's situation? It was just constantly like, ah, ah, like losing his shit every time the world line changed. Like, what the fuck?" As he went from like being married with kids to a single like bachelor living in a one bedroom apartment. Ah, where's Junior? What's happening? Just has no idea what's going on. So I do think, I mean, you know, it's just the power of my pr uh, plot predictions that many have seen over the course of all these streams. I'm usually pretty damn good at predicting plots for most games I play. So, uh, many longtime viewers will probably know this. <laughs> you were teleported to a war. Yeah, you were just having coffee at work. In your, like, suit and tie, you were ready for your day as an accountant or a manager or whatever, and then all of a sudden, boom, <laughs> you're in the trenches, dead bodies all around you. You don't know those politicians? Didn't they teach that in world history? Sorry, sir, I was too busy cosplaying. I... I only took science classes in high school. What? You can't do that. I thought everyone knew them. Do kids today not know who they are? I find it hard to believe you're all that ignorant. I'm sure you know about them, right, Okabe? I suppose. And Perestoka, and the fall of the Berlin Wall. Yeah, they were in textbooks. The second after the words were out of my mouth, an alarm went off in my mind. Something was wrong. There was something strange about what he was saying. And then I realized. The East and West were caught up in the middle of a world war. How could the Berlin Wall have fallen? And could he really uh, execute... Perestokia? Perestrokia? By the time I realized he tricked me, it was too late. My panic appeared on my face. Hmm? You too, huh? You were deliberately trying to hide it, weren't you? I feel like you could still pass this off and be like, sorry man, I wasn't really listening to you. I just kind of said, yeah, sure. Yeah, so the information was right. You do know something important. <laughs> uh, listen, Okabe, I want you to tell me. He suddenly laughed. It was a bitter laugh. Almost eerily so. Who are these people you all keep talking about? We don't have any data, neither do any of the American intelligence agencies. The data doesn't exist. Doesn't exist? I looked over at Yuki. From the look on her face, I could tell she really had no idea who they were. Man, that seatbelt is just out here fighting for its fucking life, bro. The fall of the Berlin Wall? Did this really happen? Tell me, please. But I couldn't answer. I was thinking of something different. I suddenly realized why the world line might have changed a month ago. What if Russia used the time machine that day in an experiment to change the past? The goal of the experiment would have been stop to stop the collapse of the Soviet Union. And the result of their changing the past was this world line. How foolish. A single change to the past had the butterfly effect makes the entire world so different.
this theory only applies to long-term predictions? That's not really true. <laughs> Any harem protagonist needs to be dense. True. I wish I was that seatbelt. Same, bro. Did they know how many people died? Have you and your friends really experienced the history of a different world? I can't believe it. It's just some nonsense cooked up by crazy scientists. He was about to push me further when... We heard the sound of an incoming call. He grunted and took his phone out of his pocket. Yeah, we're on our way to the bureau. What do you mean? Damn, that's the problem with these idiots. What country do these politicians think they're working for? His finger slammed down on the end call button so hard I thought the phone would break. There was a look of rage on his face. When I come back to, I wish I was that seatbelt. This one. That's just trying really hard. We're changing our destination. Head to the Cotton Base, Gate 2. His words were filled with irritation as he spoke. Changing destinations? Who was he talking to? As I sat there confused, he started to call someone else. We're changing our destination. That was all he said before he hung up. What's going on? The situation has changed. Okabe is heading to a U.S. military base. From there, he might get to take a fun trip on the U.S. Air Force plane to America. Huh? To America? I'll ask him to make sure you get first class accommodations. But don't get your hopes up. They don't listen to us anymore, and then you'd listen to a yapping pet dog. Why America? I don't know if it's the CIA or the NSA, but someone wants us to hand you over. Why? Ask him yourself. Then he turned back towards the front and fell silent, refusing to answer any more questions. The car went down the road for a while until we got off at an exit that read South Okinawa. Hey! The U.S., baby. We stopped in front of the gate. Several U.S. soldiers have, ev have evidently been awaiting my arrival. Once we hand you over to the Americans, we're not going to get any accurate information from them. So this is my last chance. He turned around from the passenger seat looked straight at me. His eyes were desperate and begging. Tell me. What are we supposed to do from now on? I don't know. Fucking wander in ambiguity until I change the world line. Sorry, bro. Please. I remembered all the soldiers in Tokyo who'd fought so desperately to protect me. Were they fighting to help someone else in Tokyo? Or were they already dead? I don't know. Okabe. I really don't know. Do you think I can do something about this war all by myself? Knowing that Gorbachev and Leistin were presidents of Russia, or that they brought a dramatic end to the Cold War, that doesn't actually help anything. <sighs> I could hear the sound of another car. He sighed and opened the door. Get out. I exited the car. Oh. I don't know why the first thing I thought of was how cute this was. <laughs> Military Mayuri. Looks like she's just got another cosplay outfit on. And <laughs> Mayuri got out of the van behind us and ran over. Mayuri! It's the little hat, I think, that does it for me. 
My childhood friend flung herself into my arms and I held her tight. Military Okabe is pretty cool too, though. I finally get to see you. I'm glad you're safe. I could feel her warmth. Okabe did plunge World War III, or the world into World War III to keep her safe, so. Mayuri was here. Also weird that even though this we're now in a war-torn society for months, he still doesn't have a full beard. And his hair is still the same length. I'd never gone a whole month without seeing her before. This was wartime. I couldn't easily contact her like I could in the old world line. I'd been so worried about whether or not she was okay. It was no exaggeration to say I'd survived this far just to make sure. I'd erased the entire Alpha world line to save her. No matter what happened, I wanted her safe. Oh, Karin, you're hurting me. Sorry. Again, not listening to Suzaha and how Mayuri, you know, has a tragic death on the normal world line. It was kind of a bra moment, if we're being real. I held her too closely. I took a step back. I believed, you know. I believed I'd get to see you again. Yeah. Hooray, you're safe, yeah. <laughs> World War Three has happened and she still stalks like a cat. <gasps> we finally have Ferris with uh, her hair down model. It's happened. I heard two more voices I recognized. Ferris and Luca behind them, and I saw Kaede. I'm glad you're safe. How did he get so split up from everybody? I felt myself getting choked up too when I saw Luca cry. I exchanged greetings with Kaede. Fubuki had grabbed onto her like a little kid. She was still pale and trembling. World War Three, and she doesn't get the haircut or stop dying yet. To be fair, I believe we kind of established in the um, the Ferris ending world line um, that Ferris does not dye her hair. Remember, we saw her dad in the Ferris ending world line, and her dad had pink hair. So she's just naturally an anime protagonist. We're just uh, we're just experiencing her spinoff where she's not a main character and she's only a, a cat maid. Her dad has pink hair? Yeah. We met her dad and everything. It was a really awkward sprite, actually, honestly. Mostly because it was pretty much Luca's dad's uh, sprite, but repurposed. What? Do you guys not remember it? Did you not do the Ferris ending? Her dad has such little screen time. Yeah, he's only got like one screen rep time. Uh, one scene, but still. He's there. Ferris. Ferris. Guess you're not wearing your maid outfit for once. Ferris. It's been a long time since anyone's called me Ferris, yeah. Ferris spoke sadly, then put her hand around my neck and held me close. Her lips got close to my ear as if she was about to kiss me. Hey, what was going on? Don't be so embarrassed, Nya. She laughed, then Ferris, no Akia, whispered in my ear while pretending to kiss me. Be careful. Don't trust the Ministry of Defense or Americans. Adults are all liars. None of them tell the truth. That's right. Ferris had her special talent. Ferris, about to <laughs> play through her uh, own campaign of Persona 5.
Cheshire break. She was incredibly good at looking into someone's heart and seeing what they were thinking. Uh, yeah, style. I just figured that out. One of them just tricked me. Ferris is the only one. Uh, they're all pretty realistic, but Ferris is the only one with anime hair color. Yeah. Ferris and uh, Kurosu kind of. Her hair is a little bit too bright red. Ferris looked surprised and took a step back. That's sad, yeah. So that. Yeah. Then I heard the sound of another engine. This time it was coming from beyond the gate, inside the base. It belonged to a black luxury car with an E on the license plate. Behind it was a minibus. The two of them stopped at the gate. It was time for the reunion to end. Welcome. An American soldier as tall as a basketball player got out of the car. Jesus. <laughs> My name is Hamon. His Japanese was good, but not great. Everyone except Okabe, please get on the bus. He was smiling, but I could tell he wasn't going to allow arguments. And the other American soldiers were still carrying rifles as they stood guard without smiles. Kurosu being a redhead is only in the anime. She, uh, she's chestnut in the visual novel. Uh, not in Zero. In the original Steins Gate ones, she's a uh, chestnut. But in this game, she's a redhead. The other Japanese soldiers are watching us from a distance. They didn't try to stop us. They just looked downward. <laughs> Everyone but Okari? What do you mean? No need to be scared. We're just going to talk to you a little. Then we'll send you right to the Okinawa Defense Bureau. Come along. It's fine. Don't worry. Yuki, please take care of Mayuri. Okay. Man, they really just... Yuki Sprite's the best in the game. I mean, can we be real here? Yuki nodded, put her arm around Mayuri's as she led her to the bus, and everyone else followed. Tell my parents I said hi. Once everyone was on, the minibus left. Kurosu was wisely retconned to have red hair in this game. Indeed. It is a good decision. I like her uh, hair in this game. Uh, a lot better than the or in the original novel. I'm a, I have a big weakness for redheads. The area in front of the gate fell silent. It was hard to believe this existed in the same world as all the places I'd crossed on my escape through Japan's main island. Alright, Okabe. Come this way. He told me to get in the back seat of the luxury car. What would happen once I got inside? I tried to think about it, but realized there was nothing I could do. I was just about to get in when... Okabe! If you go to America, you won't come back alive! His scream was cut off by the sound of gunfire. In the corner of my eye, I saw American soldiers firing without hesitation. I tried to turn around when... Get in. A large hand blocked my vision as he held me down. I couldn't hear their voices anymore. Through the gaps between his fingers, I could see nothing was moving. I knew exactly what that meant. I was shoved into the car before I had time to think. Oh, no, no. This... I tried to open my mouth, but he looked into my eyes and shook his head. I wasn't supposed to talk. He sat next to me, then the car then closed the door, then the car started to move. 
Why did they take him to the base then, if that was what they were thinking? If you go to America, you won't come back! Then why did they... Hmm. Why did they even bring him? Like, they had weapons. And they had cars. They were already on a run. Soon, we turned down a different road than the one the, the bus was taking. America, huh? Never been. Orders were orders. But then why did he stand up in futility and scream to Okabeo warning? Just to get shot and killed. Like, I mean, if you were going to die in futility anyway, at least do it on the run. What were they going to do to me in America? Use me as a guinea pig? cut open my head and just suck my brain. I probably wasn't going to be able to do any tourist things. I felt like screaming. But I tried my best to stay calm. Don't ask questions, just read the novel ebook narrator. <laughs> Damn. Got me. There's someone I want you to meet. He suddenly spoke, then handed me something. I took it before I even looked at what it was. When I checked, it was a normal smartphone. It's not locked. Just hit the button. Are we about to be reunited with AI Kurosu? Confused, I pressed the button, or it just explodes in his hand. And then something appeared. Hey! Kurisu. It was the Amadeus Makase Kurisu. Why does the US military have Amadeus? I was about to ask when. For the first time in a month, the feeling came back. Hey, we're now closer to the 1% barrier. No way, did we just randomly end up back in the, uh, the Christmas party timeline? That seems convenient. He didn't even get to say anything to Kurosu. The whole world and its colors began to shift. There was a feeling of instability, like my brain was unable to recognize where it was. And then the dizziness and the sense of falling, like you get when you're anemic. I could hear the blood vessels deep in my ears. They sounded loud. The sense of floating finally stopped, and my surrounding surroundings coalesced into firm shapes. <laughs> They definitely upgraded the reading Steiner uh, effect in this game as well. You got like the black and white, but then the woobly wobbly going on here. January. So still same timeline. Time still progresses in a straight line. With world line alterations. A month after the Christmas party. I don't remember. Does the time machine even still have... Um... fuel at this point didn't Suzaha say it would be running out fairly soon I forget I was in the lab in the room I knew well there was no trace of Okinawa anywhere <laughs> I'm gonna get embarrassed if you keep staring like that how long were we in that world line uh, a month or two, I believe? Looks like only a month has passed in the Christmas timeline. The fuel runs up in a year, that's right. I realized I was staring at Mayuri. I looked around. Daru was sitting in front of his PC, like always, hunched over with his back towards me. 
Souza, I was reading a magazine on the couch. On the open page, I could read the title. New encephalitis strikes worldwide. Are you in danger? The same couch, the same cheap fridge, Daru's computer, the dirty curtain that cut off the development room from the rest of the lab. The wall clock, which I picked out of a garbage dub, told me it was past six. No random text messages to discover in this game. Amadeus is locked. I looked at the calendar. 2010 was already gone. It was January 2011. The world line changed again. I was back to the old world line. No. Mayuri, this is Akihabara, right? Is it not? No, it's Akihabara. What day is it? The 21st. Do you know who Gobachev is? I think I've heard that name. Perestokia, right? Russia? Or was he from back in the Soviet days? These days, when you think Russia, you think Putin. I'm sure if he was in front of me and glared at me, I'd be in my hands. Okabe upgraded his phone because Trauma Okabe has his shit together and a job. Oh, I know him. He's the president of Russia, right? Do you know he likes doggies? <laughs> I saw it on the news. That's right. He's the president. Mayuri, Daru, and Suzuha all looked over at me suspiciously. It felt like a long time since anyone had looked at me that way. I was back. I no longer had to worry that I might be killed at any second. Well, let's not... Let's not get crazy. I felt relieved. But at the same time, I wondered. Why had the world line changed? I needed to calm down and think. Imagine Okabe finally gets to Steins Gate and there's someone else just fucking up with the timelines. I went to the roof and booted up the web browser on my smartphone. Here we go, boys. It's time to troll the, the Chan forums. Unlike during the war time, it connected immediately. I was amazed at the speed. Just getting an internet connection to the last world line had been difficult. Miklal. Kalongba. Wikipedia. I started searching for uh, Golbachev, and the results came back immediately. Soviet Union's first and last president. The August uh, Coup d'État and the collapse of the Soviet Union. All the keywords I hoped to see were there. As soon as I confirmed the Soviet Union was dismantled at the end of the 20th century and no longer existed, I closed the browser. <sighs> Why had the world line changed? I hadn't done anything. I didn't have any way to interfere with the divergence. So what changed? Had whoever performed the first experiment undone it? Had they watched its progress for a month and then been satisfied? Were they going to keep doing it? And if they did, would I get caught up in it each time? Some. That's cold. It was a mistake to come outside without a coat on. Nothing I could come with by myself would be anything more than a guess. I went back. The wreaths we'd put up at the entrance for the Christmas party were still up. Christmas party. Go. The Christmas party, huh? It had only been a month, hadn't it? It felt like a million years ago. I had no memories of what I'd done in this world line after the party. Come to think of it, I guess we left the decorations up. We should take those down. You and Fubu uh, Fubuki collapsed during the party, right? There was a big fuss and we sort of forgot to clean that. We collapsed? 
Was that when the world line changed? Everyone remembered that I'd collapsed during the party, which means I'd come back to the same world line as the one I would been in. If this was Russia's doing, it was terrifying to think they controlled the world line to that degree. Yeah, Kyler said he was going to bed. Yeah. And there was one more thing. Yeah, that's super specific for uh, Russia to be able to, like, literally just choose the world lines. Wrong beverage. It worried me that Fubuki had collapsed, too. I stood there lost in thought. Daru and Mayuri looked concerned. Okay. Well, well, Come to think so of it, I was wondering how Fubuki was was doing. Was doing. Are we gonna, like, finally talk to her about all the different world lines and shit? We surely have figured out that she's got reading Steiner, yeah? I quickly came up with an excuse. She's still in the hospital. The hospital? But it's been a month. She says she's fine, but they won't let her leave. I've heard that lately, unless you were really sick, they wouldn't let you stay in the hospital for very long. Man, imagine not being Chuni and actually getting fucked up by reading Steiner. Couldn't be Okabe. Was Fubuki sick with something? They still think she's gotten this, I guess. This is how whispered as she held up a page of the magazine she was reading. Cephalitis. I borrowed the magazine. They were talking about this last November. I'd seen a glimpse of it on the news. Outside of Japan, they'd seen almost a hundred people, albeit with mild symptoms. In Japan, there were ten people being kept at hospitals for examinations, or so it said. So it made its way to Japan? And one of those ten was Fubuki? Was it transmissible, transmissible by air? We didn't catch it at the Christmas party, did we? Oh my god, he's actually really not about to put the uh, connection together. That it's uh, also reading Steiner? A bra moment for Okabe, for sure. Hang on one second. I gotta turn the heat on in my apartment. It's getting fucking freezing. I'm gonna grab another drink. I can't believe Okabe hasn't figured it out. Um, <laughs> and it's fucking reading Steiner. Jesus. Okabe buying into that ex uh, conspiracy? Yeah. You're right. It's all a big conspiracy. He said his IQ was 170. That's true. But I feel like most people that say their IQ is 170, uh, he lied. Hope you guys can't hear my heater too much, but I'm sorry, it's too fucking cold now. <laughs> Just dropped to below 60 degrees in my apartment, so I had to turn the heat back on. Because it's only, uh, what is it, outside right now? It's 19 degrees outside. So if you can believe it, it is very cold in my apartment. And I haven't had the heat on for the last five and a half hours. Okabe is Okabe, you're right. 
He is indeed. I knew that getting nervous wouldn't help anything, but still, I wondered. Shouldn't you go to the hospital too, Ocarine? You were in worse shape than she was, you know? I'll think about it. I gave a half-hearted answer and turned back to the magazine. Strange symptoms being found all over the world. Cause unknown. Sudden memory loss. Memories differ from those of the people around you. Losing all sense of the passage of time. Losing the ability to tell the difference between dreams and reality, and sometimes having waking dreams. So this is called something different in this timeline than it is in the fucking World War III 1.3 timeline. Oh, I get it. 1.3, World War III, bum 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 three. What a cool number. Do you think they're ever going to make a Half-Life 3? Or have any type of video games with a... A 3 in them? That would be cool. Wait, that's me? Okabe is about to have the same Pikachu face again. Gah! World War 3? Reading Steiner? The article was filled with things like that. Bro had already made the connection that this encephalitis thing was reading Steiner. Good lord, dude. This was like... This was just like reading Steiner! <laughs> That's like the third time he's done this! Oh my god! It matched exactly with what uh, Shimiyoyama uh, told me in the other world line. Oh my god, my favorite seatbelt. Two very realistic dreams, for example. <laughs> One thing. Where's the Okabe sprite? Uh, do I have it? I think I might have actually deleted it during the. Uh... Oh, nope. Hang on. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. We're good. I wondered if Fubuki also possessed Reading Steiner. <laughs> Maybe the reason she collapsed at the Christmas party, just like me, wasn't a new disease, but an unexpected activation of Reading Steiner. The music this time works with the brick. Yeah, my darling embrace wouldn't let us work with the brick. But we got it back now, baby. Oka brick is present and accounted for. That would mean the diagnosis was wrong, and the unnecessary tests and treatments they gave her wouldn't help a bit. That's not true. They could pump her up with enough uh, psychosis drugs, and she'd probably forget all about reading Steiner. Just take the pill, Okabe. Take your meds. Who is this Kurasu you keep talking about? Take your meds. It looked like I needed to talk to Fubuki. I ended up going over that day. Definitely lost. I <laughs> just lost like five viewers. <laughs> People not happy about my Oka Brick joke. Listen, I'm sorry. But the Oka Brick joke is very important.
My meme game is too strong, boys. Remember to upvote my meme that I posted on Reddit to try and advertise the stream. I'm like so desperately trying to plug the stream. Because the views for Steins Gate Zero have been a little bit lower than uh, the OG Steins Gate game. So I'm just trying to, I'm really trying to advertise the fuck out of my stream. <laughs> Uh, the uh, the Iron Man meme not as good as the uh, May Queen meme, but that's okay. I guess Saturday is not as popular of a day for people to be uploading stuff. I would have thought Saturday would have been a better day. I would have thought Friday night people were doing stuff, like watching my stream, obviously. Avocado Loco, what's going on, my man? I ended up going over that day. Here from Reddit, thanks. She was at a large general hospital. Basically, I'm just saying, anytime you see me streaming a game, if you want to advertise my stream by posting it on the subreddit related to that specific game, I mean, I wouldn't say no. I wouldn't be like, what are you doing? You know, you just want to casually throw my stream links out there or anything like that. Who am I to deny you? of doing such a charitable act for a small streamer like myself. Or if you were to say subscribe and hit the bell button for future streams for all kinds of games I play. And if you like my content during Steins Gate, you'll probably like my content during other games I play. Because I have the same sense of humor in every stream. And also join my Discord channel and talk to me. So I have friends. Thanks. <laughs> oh, and like the video. Any other plugs we should do here? <laughs> you think I got any more? I'm on a roll. What other ones have we got? <laughs> we aren't friends. No, you've been active with the Discord lately. I appreciate that vibe, and it's been cool. Blue Apron. Yeah, one of these days I'll get a Blue Apron sponsorship. Does Raid Shadow Legends still do advertisements? This stream sponsored by Raid Shadow Legends. Play now for free. You can use the code in the description below to get 50,000 silver coins and a free epic champion. Subscribe and check out my VODs, yeah. I've done kind I've done all kinds of uh fun weeby games. Yeah, but you probably don't have enough subs. You didn't have to say the truth like that, gamer. Maybe I should try to talk in the Discord so I can be a friend. You should, Wandering. I mean, it's basically similar to the chat, except I'm not playing a game in the background. It's not that much different. You know? We're all still just talking in the chat. I will talk in the Discord. Yes. About Mega Man? That's fine. Literally anyone can talk about anything in the Discord. I have all kinds of like tabs for specific subjects, but you can just talk in general if it, I don't have a specific tab. But yeah, talk about whatever. Any conversation is welcome. Link in the description below. Also, sometimes in the Nightbot chat. I have notifications on my Discord server on my phone, so I usually will respond fairly quickly. But if you're watching the VOD of this video and you somehow made it through all the plugs <laughs> that I've done for the last five minutes, uh, if you comment, I also read all my comments on YouTube VODs and respond to those too, because I know not everyone's in the same time zone as me. So, if you're interacting with my content anyway, I will engage with you. Because I've got nothing better to do. Okabe oh, surprised Pikachu. I wish I was good enough at Photoshop to, like, meld the two sprites together. Unfortunately, I'm not. Alright. Plugs are over. I'm currently being admitted to the hospital for... <laughs> Talking like a madman. He just keeps mentioning QBI, QBI, over and over again. Something about a Discord. Um, 
We're admitting him to the hospital for some tests. We think he's having a psychotic break. Luckily, Fubuki is in our next room. Right next door to us. She's at a large general hospital with a medical student department. Located in Ochinomazin. It was close enough to Akihabara I could walk. And getting there was easy. Since she might get the wrong idea if I went alone, I encouraged my area to come with me. I hoped it would look like I was only coming as an afterthought. But it ended up being a bigger deal than I expected. When they heard Mayuri was going, Yuki and Kaede decided to come too. Well, why didn't we tell him to fuck off? I'm busy. I have to ask her about reading Steiner. Evidently, they all been to visit Fubuki several times before, and they knew exactly where she was located. They walked down the halls without hesitation. It was almost 8 when visiting hours ended, so we needed to hurry. But as we passed by the nurse's station, there was a minor commotion. A woman in her late 40s was wearing a gray jersey and yelling at the doctors and nurses. Enough! When do I get to go home? Is this her? It's not really a jersey, but okay, sure. This lady's just straight up running. I don't do customer service! I'm a nurse! And you can use any of the derpy Okabe faces, yeah. <laughs> He's gone from mad scientist to sad scientist. We told you, you only get to go home after you've been examined and gotten the treatment you need. You aren't giving me any treatment? And what was supposed to be a quick exam ended up with me stuck here for a month. What am I supposed to do about my job? Calm down. There's still a lot we don't know. Without proper examination and treatment, it's dangerous. The TV said not to worry because it wasn't bad. Indeed. Listen to the TV. This woman's got the right idea. We told you before, that's only if you get the appropriate treatment. One of the nurses just told me you were feeling dizzy. I just felt anemic because dinner was late. I'm fine, let me go. The woman was about ready to grab the doctor by the throat, when several female nurses held her back, then dragged her off somewhere. That's scary. You think Fubuki's okay? The girls, the girls hurried even faster down the hall. Fubuki was in a four-person room at the end of the building. I leaned down to Fubuki's pillow and grabbed her by the throat and suddenly said, Do you remember World War III? Were you there? Were you there? We hesitantly peeked inside. <laughs> huh? The voice? Uh-oh. Uh-oh. We could hear moaning coming from beyond the curtains surrounding Fubuki's bed. Mary went pale and hurriedly ripped them open. <laughs> she looks kind of nuts with that uh, headgear on. Hi, Chie. <laughs> Fubuki made a strange noise and spun around as we came in. I looked closer and saw she was sitting on a bed with her legs crossed, watching a TV show with an LCD or watching a show on the LCD attached to it. Her eyes were red and swollen with tears, but given the fact she had a stick of pocky in her mouth, she was probably just crying over a soap opera. Why does her voice kind of sound robotic now? Is it because of the headgear? Is she being turned into an AI? Hey, you came to see me. Fubuki wiped away her tears and welcomed us with her smile. You scared me. I thought you were crying. You scared us. Sorry. Even as she apologized, she tossed another chocolate-coated stick into her mouth. 
Uh, I don't know if you guys have had Pocky before, but it's actually really good. I quite enjoy it. She's being turned into an agent. She's being digitized. You haven't? Yeah, Pocky's really good. They're basically like just chocolate covered graham crackers. Oh, which I've decided I want now. Fuck, I'm so hungry. All the fucking food being talked about all the time in these games. The last two streams of this game. I can't stream for eight hours without getting food, okay? Stop. <laughs> Fubuki is being brainwashed into being Chie. I don't like the strawberry one. I haven't had a strawberry one. Maybe I should go to the mall tomorrow and get one. Her hair was tied up. She was wearing some kind of headgear. What do you mean her hair is being tied up? She just has like this pixie cut. I'll never eat a Pocky? Why? It's just like some harmless, like, sweet. It's quite good. It's a little overpriced, but I imagine it's probably not as overpriced um, in Japan. But since it's imported into America, that's probably why it's a little too pricey. I am now Googling all different kinds of Pocky. Oh, should I make a video where I try a bunch of the different types of Pocky? That would be fun. Remember when I used to do, like, um... Streams where I would eat, like, bizarre types of food? I haven't done those in a long time. I used to do those all the time. In fact, I have a playlist where you can... Uh, on my channel, where I've got, like, a bunch of, like, um, what are they? Mukbang videos? What's the playlist called? I think it's, like, Cubai's Mukbang or something? I forget what I called it, honestly. Uh, now I'm curious. Yeah, Cubai Mukbangs. I try, like, tofu for the first time, and takoyaki... And Japanese Kit Kats, Ortillos, a bunch of fun stuff like that. So maybe I should do a Return of the Food stream? You did promise a food stream? When did I promise that? I mean, I'm not afraid to do it. I just usually think they won't get views, so I haven't done it in a long time. I usually do it as a part of another stream. I guess. Usually I'll, like, eat a food that's, like, related to a game or something that I'm playing. Like, I had the Takoyaki in Persona 3. I had the, um... Fuck, when did I have the Tofu? What did I have the Tofu for? Was it Persona 4? No. I did the curry because of Persona 5. I tried curry for the first time. Oh, you know what? I never uploaded that as a video, did I? Lamau. I should find that. I never uploaded that video separately. Oh man, those were, uh... Good times. Hang on, wait. I have a list of things that I do for video ideas. So what would be a good food to do for, um... A Steins Gate stream? What was the food I promised early in the Steinsgate streams, AK? Do you remember? I don't remember. Banana? I don't think I promised to eat bananas. I think I said I was going to work on making a short where I microwaved bananas. Like a YouTube short. Um...
Now I gotta find the video where I tried curry for the first time. Because I definitely recorded that at some point. I just don't remember what stream it was. Juicy chicken number one. I just eat KFC on stream. <laughs> Microwave Dr. Pepper. See, I would do, for Steins Gate, I would do a Dr. Pepper stream. But it's kind of hard to get different, like, Dr. Pepper flavors in the U.S. Or else it would just be literally like a short video of me drinking a, like a soup of Dr. Pepper and going, it's all right. <laughs> I think I remember for Splatoon I was going to try some kind of um, sushi or something, right? 100 pounds of Dr. Pepper? Oh, dude. How much fucking sugar would that be? Insane. The Ferris special omelet? Man, I don't want to make an omelet. That's a lot of work. I had this one video I was working on that it was <laughs> it was too much effort, so I kind of gave up on it. But I was working on a compilation of all my deaths from my Metroid Dread streams, because I was not a uh... I was not up to speed. I was not very good at Metroid Dread, but I died so many times the video was taking me fucking forever to work on, so I stopped. <laughs> Maybe I'll have release it someday, but probably not for a while. How many deaths, though? I mean, I was, like, not even through all the streams, and I was, like, already up to 100 or something. I mean, I still got the file, so I guess I could work on it eventually, but I really just don't feel I kind of gave up. It's not even timely anymore, because the, the one-year anniversary of uh, Metroid Dread was back in October, so I needed to have the video done back then for um, it to be relevant. Akihabara food? What's Akihabara food? You promised to drink Malort. What is Malort again? Oh yeah! I kind of loosely remember this. Try the drink Skull. I remember during the Yakuza streams I was going to try sake at some point, wasn't I? Because I never drank sake before. That doesn't seem like a game I'll like. Metroid Dread's hard, man. I would personally recommend other Metroid games before playing Dread. I should probably continue with the game a little bit, huh? We can talk in the Discord later about other foods I should try on stream and stuff. Which is why, again, you should become a member of the Discord. We can talk about it later. Um, and just general ideas for videos and stuff. Because I honestly want to get back into doing, like, regular videos. I remember I used to always post, like, random videos and shit. Besides just my streams, I would also make, like actual YouTube videos and like vlogs and stuff, but I don't really do that anymore. I haven't for like the last year. The latter half of 2021 and the first half of 2022 was not a good time for me. I was in a pretty rough spot because of work, so I wasn't really doing a lot of extra fun stuff really. Hell, I was barely streaming. So I'm in a better mood now in a better headspace, so I can start doing those videos again. Crow Swarm? I 
have no idea what that is. But yeah, we'll leave the um, the video or the possible food discussions, I guess, for Discord. Uh, we'll think about the Pocky streams or whatever. I will make note of it though. And we can uh, continue on with Chie in the hospital here. At first I thought she was too lazy to do her hair, but evidently not. There were cords coming out of the headgear that was attached to a belt around her waist. Are they monitoring her brain? As unobtrusively as possible, I took a look at the other patients around the room, and they were all wearing the same headgear. Crow's Sworn is an upcoming Metroidvania game? Alright, hang on, let me make a note of it. I've been itching for a good Metroidvania game, but I feel a lot of them haven't been good lately. There's another one that was looking kind of good, that was like, uh, now I forget what it was called. Something about a Benjamin guy at the end of the world or some shit. But I felt like I haven't gotten a good Metroidvania itch scratched in a while. They may have been giving this headgear to all the encephalitis patients. Sorry to bring everybody over, Fukuki. Not at all. You're very welcome. I didn't think Okarine would come. Fukuki stared at me intently. She'd never done that before. So I started to wonder if there was something on my face. They said you collapsed like I did, so I got worried. How are you doing? I'm fine. I don't understand why they won't let me leave. Every day they just do exams and there's nothing for me to do. I'm bored. So did Fubuki come back to this world line much sooner than we did? How has she been like, every day they just do exams on me? How does she know that? Because we just came back like an hour ago. You're not allowed to use your phone. If I want to send a text, I have to go all the way to the lobby. They turn off the lights at night, so I can't watch late night anime. I really just don't believe this. Bless you three times, thank you. Her bed was surrounded with portable game consoles and magazines, a miniature DVD player, anything to starve off boredom. I don't blame her, I'd be losing my fucking shit. Given all the half-empty boxes and snacks, it was hard to believe the disease was as serious as they said. Are you okay, Okarin? Oh. Yeah, I told Mayuri, but I'm fine. I'm glad. She seemed truly relieved, but she was still staring at me. Suddenly, Kaede started to fidget. Not only that, she blushed, then glanced at me and almost started to cry. She was acting really weird. Kubai is always hiding his sneeze. <laughs> we need a true intentional sneeze reveal. I mean, I've done it every once in a while on stream, but I mean, I usually try to mute the mic when I sneeze because I'm a professional streamer, you know what I mean? I'm not trying to sneeze directly into your ears. So whenever I gotta, like, cough or sneeze or something, I usually try to mute the mic. I don't want to cause a scene. I understand a lot of people watching are wearing headphones. I don't want to be that guy. You know? A gentleman streamer. Which is why you should subscribe to my channel. <sighs> I did it such an awful job tying my tie before the stream. But like I said, <laughs> I did it without looking in a mirror. <laughs> Whatever. When are we getting QBI ASMR? You get that every stream, baby. 
カエデちゃんカエデどうかした What's wrong? あの、um, Kaede started fidgeting even more when she realized everyone was looking at her. But she had no choice but to go over and whisper something in Fubuki's ear. Huh? Fubuki chan, she. Shh, Fubuki. The other girls tried to quiet Fubuki down. This was a hospital, and there were other patients in the room. We couldn't just make a fuss. This whole small scene has like 10 plugins now. Oh, yeah, me plug and ship. Well, you know, what can you say? What can you do? Listen to this, everybody. Kurushima Kaede here suspects me of dating Okarin. <laughs> now it was our turn to keep from shouting in surprise. Where are you getting that from? The music's starting to annoy me. I'm sorry, gamer. We'll get past this segment. Don't worry, I'm you can hear gunshots in the background as much as you want soon, alright? Chihei route, yeah. <laughs> We're back to my darling's embrace. This is the secret plot that you only get if you if the game already detects that you have a my darling embrace save file on your hard drive. Then you get this secret route where you get to date Fubuki. It's something you probably haven't seen before. But again, another exclusive from yours truly stream. According to Mayuri, you were the one who wanted to come see Fubuki today, right? That's true, yeah. There was another reason, but I couldn't say. And Fubuki and Okarin were staring longingly at one another. We're not staring longingly at one another. That's not it. Fubuki tried to scratch her hair, but the headgear blocked her way and she gave up. A lot of gunshots in Chicago? No, there's a lot of gunshots in World War III, the world line we were just in. This OST is repetitive? Yeah, but it's the Goofy Funny Moment song. What do you mean? You don't like the song? Are you telling me you are not a fan of goofy funny moments? I had this realistic dream. Realistic dream? I was startled. That may have been what I wanted to find out. It was sometime this evening. I was kind of spacing out. There's just nothing to do around here. And then somehow, I don't really remember, but me and Okarin and Yuki were taking somewhere in a car by these scary men. I was there too. Yeah. It's the same. Them and Fubuki had experienced the same things I'd gone through in the other world line. And this evening would have been the same time I was experiencing it. I peeked around the curtains to make sure none of the hospital staff were around. Mina, where are you going? Sorry guys, can you Nakase leave me alone with Nakise for a bit? <gasps> <gasps> Wait, uh oh, Mayuri is about to be heartbroken again. Sorry Mayuri, <sighs> just one more friend I gotta cuck you with. No big deal. No way. Not like that. I wasn't really sure how to handle this reaction. Um, is it something you don't want Mayushi and everyone else to know about? It's about her disease. Okay, I understand. Does she, though? Childhood friends never win. Mayuri in shambles. Mayuri nodded and went outside. Really because she just didn't want to witness her heart being broken again. She's going la 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 la. The other two looked bothered but followed her. Uh. 
Nakase san. Did this dream of yours take place in Okinawa? Huh? Huh? Yeah, that's right. I think it was Okinawa. I think I saw a sign saying so when I was in the car. Inside the car, where it was you, me, and Yuki, then the driver, and a short man who was an FPS soldier. Yeah. The man's name was Shimiyama. Fubuki went pale. A dream about being in a car in Okinawa could be written off as coincidence, but knowing the exact name of the man that shared the dream was a different matter. How? Why? The man uh, talked to you about waking dreams and the president of Russia. That's right. And then, there were taken, then we were taken to a U.S. Army base. And there you met up with my Yuri and the others and said goodbye to me. Babuki was too stunned to speak. There was no room for doubt. My suspicion turned into a certainty. Fubuki had a stronger reading Steiner than most, and remembered the other world line as a relatively realistic dream. In the dream, that guy said that you and I both had memories of another world. Uh. Yeah. Was he right? <laughs> yeah. I hesitated for a moment. But then I gave her a brief explanation of my own reading Steiner. The one thing I wanted to make sure was she understood was her dreams weren't caused by an illness. But her reaction wasn't what I expected. Then, there are others who are so too. There are. There's nothing to do, so I talk to the others a lot about the dreams we have. And sometimes it's similar. It's amazing how similar they are. There's a kid in elementary school in the next room. We became friends. They said they'd never been to Okinawa, but they had a dream that they were there. Tokyo had burned down, and the SDF saved them and took them there. I see. No. If that was true, then it wasn't just Fubuki. There were other patients who were being kept in the hospital for no reason, who didn't have any kind of disease at all. Should I talk to the doctors? Yeah. No. I don't think they believe you. And if they started to think your delusions are getting worse, you're right. You shouldn't tell the others yet. You don't want there to be a fuss. Yeah. Yuki poked her head through the curtain. Okabe, the nurse is coming. Visiting hours are over today. I looked at the clock. It was well past eight. Sorry for being in a rush, Kabuki. Next time we'll come earlier so we have more time. Mayushi, don't go! But the nurse will get mad. Let them get mad. Sleep with me. Fubuki was back to her usual self and grabbed Mayuri's hand and held it tight. Kaede chuckled and forced her to let go. Don't be selfish. We'll come back as often as we can. That's not good enough. Come tomorrow and the day after. As soon as school's over, I'm so bored I could die. Kabuki flailed her arms and legs. It was a bit too deliberate, if you ask me. Kaede patted her on the head. Bye-bye. Mayuri and Yuki went over to pat her, too. And before long, she looked like a little puppy in a kennel being fed in. We left. I was the last to leave. Before I did, I turned around and saw Fubuki staring at us. Our eyes met, so I nodded. It's okay. You're not sick, so don't worry. I don't know if she understood what I meant, but she nodded back. I got a text. Kind of bogus that I just got this text, because uh, the game didn't have the phone vibrator give me a ringtone. I want to talk to you in private. I'll wait for you to contact me. 
Oh. Because it was probably intentional dialogue that I do this. Something in that short message made me feel tense. Did I just accidentally take a different route? I hope not. <laughs> there is time travel in X-Men, yeah. There's a lot of comics that involve time travel. After I said my goodbyes, I contacted Suzaha, and she told me to come on top to the rot of the Rodicon. When I arrived, she was standing silently on the roof. I don't remember, but save often. Okay, Monami. There was no trace of a smile on her face. Her eyes shone in the darkness, and she glared at me. I felt a shiver run down my spine. This was not the Suzaha I was used to. Maybe this was her true self. Whatever she wanted to talk about, I was sure I wasn't going to like it. <sighs> Sorry to bring you out like this, uncle. What do you want to talk about? Um... I'm really not good at talking to people or trying to persuade them. This isn't a route split, but I think you're close to one. Uh oh. Let's just throw a little, little baby save out there for no reason. Yeah, just in case. Oh my god, the first time texts have uh, happened while we were not watching. Oh, nothing really important. How many different routes are there in this game? For like route splits. Oh. From the way she stumbled over her words, it was clearly something she didn't want to talk about. Just say it. That's what old you would have done, right? You're right. Well, yeah, the anime does it differently, but does the game? Are you trying to break this to me gently? I see. Thanks. It's not really like that. She got a little annoyed and tried to say something back, but ended up swallowing her words. To be honest, it was a bit of a shock at first. You're so different from the Suzaha I know. I can't help it. When the world line changes, so does the environment you grew up in. And that changes your personality, how you think. She might, or it doesn't to Okabe though, because he doesn't really acknowledge changes in the same way. But... Yeah, but I don't think that anymore. You're still the Suzaha, I know. No, I really am different. I'm not the Amane you know well, Uncle. Suzaha. I followed you today. Biko? Followed me? That's right. All the way to the hospital. Why would she do that? I knew the answer. There's only one reason she'd do something like that. You realize I'd shifted world lines? I always suspected your reading Steiner activated on Christmas Eve. Not just then, today too. Now I'm sure. I deliberately avoided telling Suzaha that the world line had changed. It's obvious she'd react like this. <laughs> Tell me, is this a different world line than before? What will you do with that answer? Just tell me. Oh. They, I liked this sprite way better, but they immediately flish, uh, switched to this uh, CG. She looks kind of sad with the CG. That's an order, Okabe Ringtaro. 
I like the gun sprite. I hope we flash back after the CG to that gun sprite where she pulls it up. Reminds me of that meme that's like, put it down. I gulped as I saw her pull a gleaming pistol out of her jacket. It was aimed between my eyes. Jordan. This is a joke, right? Jordan de I wouldn't do this as a joke. This looks like it's meant to be a wallpaper. This definitely looks like it meant it was meant to be promotional material. I wonder if we pull up the Steam page for this game, is this screenshot there? Spoilers? No, I just the the page where you actually buy and download this game. It felt like Suzaha was trying to revert to who she was when I first come to the Beta World Line, a woman who put the mission above everything. She was so desperate it hurt to look at her. What would happen if she shot me? I imagine myself lying on the ground in a pool of my own blood. In my mind, the image overlapped with Kurisu's dead body. Pretty much everything goes back to that for him, huh? <laughs> I closed my eyes and gripped my teeth, trying to avoid the flashback. I spent the last month trying to escape Okinawa in the middle of war, but I still wasn't used to having a gun pointed at me. Interesting that he went through the war and still the Kurisu thing is what uh, traumatizes him. No new traumatizing things. Just Kurusu. Always Kurusu. I'll ask you one more time. Did the world line change? Is this, different? Is this a different world than before? Suzuha's hands were shaking a little as she held the gun. That would have been unimaginable when she first came here. Maybe she was ashamed of it. Because she bit down on her teeth harder. She must have bit her lip when she did, because a single trail of blood ran down her jaw. I stared at the blood. Don't worry, we're in the same world line we were before. You're sure? Yeah. It's true we shifted world between world lines once, but we came back, I think. Hey, congrats on winning, guy. I never win raffles or anything like that. Who was responsible? Russia? I think. Which means they finally started experimenting with the time machine. I nodded. It means there's no time to waste. They keep experimenting. Something will happen that can't be changed. It might close the path to Stein's Gate. A fool. I should have wasted time worrying. I'm done trying to get you to change your mind. What'll you do? You're gonna follow my orders. You're coming back to July 28th with me. And if I refuse? I won't let you. You okay with that? Huh? Are you okay with erasing this world line? Shut up! <laughs> there is a horrible ringing in my ears and a fierce pain in my eardrums. A second later, the smell of gunpowder passed my face. She really shot at me. Next time won't be a threat. I'll shoot you. Hey, nice guy. She was glaring at me as if she was about to cry. 
I understand Okabe not wanting to time travel back most of the game, but after seeing World War Three, I'd say fuck it and go time travel. Yeah, that's what I was saying earlier. I get he was traumatized earlier, but at this point, like how, like how can you not be like fuck it? We gotta try. I mean, I get that he's tried over and over and over again for like my Yuri and stuff, but like. Having an actual time machine is feels like it's a bit more imp impactful of like being able to possibly change an outcome versus um, the time leap machine. You know? We stared at each other. I tried as hard as I could to come up with something that calmed her down, but nothing came. Nothing I could come up with would get her to change her mind. What should I do? Suzuha, Okarin, what are Suzuha, Okarin, what are you doing? Suddenly I heard Daru. I turned and saw that he'd just come out of the door near the stairs. Dad, how? My I got a message from Mayuri and Amane. They said you'd contacted Okarin. I had a bad feeling, so I decided to look for you. Then I got a message from an unknown sender. An unknown sender? They sent me a URL that led to a map of this place. I thought you might be here, so I came over. Isn't that concerning? Then I heard a gunshot that scared me. Dara's whole body was covered in sweat. Even as he spoke, large beads were appearing on his forehead. He must have really hurried. So what's with the gun? How about what's with the mysterious sender thing? That reminds me of the guy... Um, it reminds me of the jelly that we got sent as um, in the OG game. And also I want to take off my fucking tie. The Kurosu cosplay was nice for the last, like, six hours, but I'm over it now. Your stalker seemed really worried about you, yeah. I'm sorry, the Kurosu cosplay is done. <laughs> it's six hours, right? We, we cosplayed long enough. It's been six hours. It has. Time flies when you're having fun, am I right? How does she do it? I don't know how anyone wears a tie for an extended amount of time, really. I fucking hate ties. I like dressing nice with, like, dress shirts and, um, jacket, like, suit jackets and stuff, but fuck, man. Hang on. I'm gonna be right back. I'm also done with the dress shirt. <laughs> I couldn't even think of staying in cosplay that long. Well, on my old job, I used to wear ties, like, for, you know, more than six hours, but I'm pretty fucking sick of it.
Nothing like the uh, midstream wardrobe change. <laughs> what do you think he's gonna cosplay now? Just me. I don't really know if there's another character I could cosplay. I actually do own a green shirt like this. Um, I don't know if you can see it, but I can grab it. I actually do own this daughter shirt, but I don't have a yellow hat. I'm trying to think how I could get the green shirt to cosplay Moika. How do I do that? She just wears like a white dress shirt, really, right? But I pretty much have this shirt. Hang on, I'll show you. Well, actually, I don't know if you'll see it because of the green screen. Because it is green like that. show. Daru would be a cursed cosplay? Well, it'd be like skinny Daru. Oh yeah, you just can't fucking see it. <laughs> I mean, you can kind of see, like, if I hold it up, maybe, like, the, this is the hanger of the shirt. <laughs> so, like, I could take a picture of this shirt for, like, <laughs> the, um, Alright, well, I guess you can kind of see that it's green. Hang on, wait, let me put this on, I guess, then. Let's see. How does it look? Oh shit, I button. it's all buttoned up, because it was in my closet. Hang on. Put a pillow under the shirt? <laughs> That's not a bad idea. Hang on. And I unbutton the shirt and then... You need the Daru hat? I don't have the Daru hat. I'm not really, like I've said before, I'm not really a hat guy. I've got an orange hat that I guess I could kind of pass off as a, uh... Could do Mr. Braun or Dr. American. I could do Dr. American. Alright, so what's it look like if I wear this green shirt that Daru's got? I think I just fade into the green screen, right? <laughs> Could wear one of your university hats. My university was green, though. It was my color. I think this only works right now because Daru's in the background, so my shirt looks like Daru. What people see when you wear camo patterns. But, like, can I... If I flip the collar, do you see, like, that I'm wearing the collared shirt? Right? Shit, I could do a Daru cosplay. Alright, I'll figure out how to make this work at some point for the next, uh, Steins Gate stream. I'm not sure how, but we'll figure it out. Let's see, does this only work because it's Daru, or, like, if the scene changes, will it look different? Suzaha, what's with the gun? Oh, Suzaha wasn't actually. You wouldn't fire a gun if you didn't have a reason. Duh. Go to the menu. Oh, that's a good idea. Oh, nope. Yeah, I disappear. I fully... <laughs> Oops! <laughs> so, I don't know. I could probably take a photo... Like, a, take a... I could probably use this shirt for a thumbnail, like for clickbait, but I don't think we probably can't wear this shirt on stream yet. Oh my god. Just... 
Ooh. If I like button it up all the way, hang on. <laughs> Remember when this stream was at some point about gameplay? No, you don't, because everyone's left. Because I'm too busy being a goofball. We're down to five years. Everyone left. <laughs> Listen, Mayuri does wardrobe changes in the game all the time. Totally fine when she does it. People really mad that I got. <laughs> I started joking around at a serious scene. All right, hang on. I'll try and think of a way to make this work. The curse to cosplay brought in the views. Yeah, maybe. Now that I'm not cosplaying anymore, people are like, "Fuck that shit." Not a real streamer. God, this shirt's a little small on me too, but I guess that's fitting for Daru cosplay. Is the shirt just being a little too small for you? That probably makes sense. I'll, I'll try and figure that out. Later though. Actually, did the stream crash? Was that the response of the user, uh, or the stream viewership drop? Or did, are people just not interested in the, uh, the cosplay? <laughs> Taru is here, the tension's already gone, that's true. Stream looks for me, or stream works for me, just let me have my copium, Vimin. That there's external reasons why people lost left the stream. Not that I'm uh, not entertaining enough to keep people around. <sighs> Alright. Down to four now. Big you big rip 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 rip. <laughs> Alright. Come on, Suzuha. Not worth it. Dad, you know what it is. What's that? Actually, I think the viewership count is just wrong, though, because there's more than four of you in the chat. Maybe refresh the stream if uh, you're on a delay. That actually kind of fucks with it sometimes. I would just... Yeah, go ahead and I'm going to ask everyone to refresh the stream. That might do it. There's clearly more of you chatting what the thing says. What's uh, that? The worldwide change. Russia has started to experiment with the time machine. You sure? Chat outnumbers viewers. Yeah, now it's down to two. I don't know why the fuck this up with this. It's so weird. There it is. That's why I'm doing this. God, it's so hot when a woman would just fucking kill me. Please, Suza. Just take me out, girl. Literally. Never mind, now it's one. Right? It's like fucking deleting everybody. That one is probably wrong. I know, but the problem is is that YouTube metrics totally think that that one is right. Which is what annoys me. And they take me out of the algorithm because there's like, no one's watching. They totally fuck up my... They fuck up my analytics. That's why I'm doing this. We were never real. The stream is on another world line. Goodbye, guys. At this rate, it'll be too late to do anything. We won't reach Steins Gate. We won't be able to stop World War III. Lots of people will die. Mom will die, and I won't be able to stop it. That would be bad. But still, 
Even if you threaten Okri, you force him to go back with you. Is that really gonna work? Daru's normally easygoing expression suddenly turns serious. Since I've started to research the time machine with the world lines, I've kind of figured something out. I think Okari might be right, and it might be impossible to save Makise in the normal way. How has Daru been researching world lines? Isn't there, like, no fucking documentation that signifies the world line shit at all? What? Now you're saying it too, Dan? If the rules and causality of the world lines can be changed so easily, Okari should have been able to save Mayuri in the Alpha world line, right? Then what am I supposed to do? Daru brought his fists up to his chest. That's what we're researching, right? There's no time. Just leave it to me. I'll figure something out. I promise. I wish you'd listen to your dad once in a while. Daru's voice was strong and kind in a way you'd never imagine he was capable of. He softly took the gun from Suzaha. She didn't resist. Here, you forgot something that's way more important than a gun. On cold days like today, you should be wearing these. Daru took something out of his pocket, and he pressed it into Suzaha's hands. Hmm. It was a pair of handmade gloves. It was the present that Yuki had given her at the Christmas party. I remembered well. Uh, I, when he gave her the gloves, tears started to flow from her face. I don't know what to do anymore. Yeah. Help me, Dad. Help me, please. Her shoulders shook as the tears poured down. I turned my eyes towards the time machine, a silhouette in the darkness. I decided I'm not getting back in that thing. Bro, why? No matter what Daru said, no matter how Suzaha threatened me, I wasn't going back. I can't look back. The next thing she knew, Suzaha was inside the time machine, wrapped up in a blanket. She must have been crying a lot, because she hadn't even noticed that she'd come inside the time machine, or that Okabe had left. Her dad was next to her. He was also wrapped up in a blanket and was looking at her. Said Suzaha. I don't like said Suzaha. This is the worst timeline. I wouldn't blame Suzanne if she shot Okabe. Yeah, I mean, he's literally, like, too scared to save 5 billion people. I don't know. I mean, I guess we know how it works. So, like, he's not, but, like, he is, right? You know what I mean? He's not, but he is. Have you calmed down? <laughs> what time is it? She wiped away the tears as she asked. Almost a new day. Sorry to keep you out this late. It's fine. I told you before, you can always count on your dad. Yeah. The time machine's hatch was still open and the cold air was pouring in. Each time they spoke, they could see their breath turn white. The machine was still silent. They could use the life support system of the cockpit to keep out the cold, but she didn't want to waste the energy. She rubbed her cheeks with her glove-covered hands. 
The gloves Yugi gave her were warm, and her hands were the one part of her face that wasn't cold, or one part of her that wasn't cold. I think someday Okarin's going to work with us. He's going to be our leader. I don't think Suzuha wants to go through an entire lifetime of fucking war, Daru. This is encouraging. Uh... Don't worry, Suzuha. You just have another lifetime of war ahead of you. Remember when you survived World War Three? Get ready. Get those gloves on for fucking world round two of World War Three, baby. Like, damn. Suza was a little surprised to see da uh, Daru speaking seriously. Normally, all Daru ever did was screw around. The future gadget lab only exists because of Okarin. He's having a hard time right now, but he'll get over it. And when that happens, Hoyuin Kyoma will revive, and he'll say, The Phoenix in my name isn't just for show. You know, stuff that make you go, Nice chuny, bro. Or something like that. And when that time comes, Okarin will probably get in the time machine without you needing to tell him. Oops. Sorry for your loss, Daru. That ain't happening. Suzuha realized Daru was trying to make her feel better. Suddenly, deep in her heart, she felt a little warmer. Do you realize how embarrassing the things you, you say are? Yeah, you're right. No way I could say that in front of Okarin. I'm going to write a letter to Okarin before tomorrow. If I try to talk to him directly, I'll end up acting weird again. I'll tell him I'm sorry. And then I'm going to keep fighting a little longer. So I want him to just think about it. But still, there's really not a lot of time left. Because Russia started their experiments. You see, the internal battery for the quantum computer that controls the time machine is just about to run out. Serious? I told you, I used the time machine a lot back in 1998 in order to look for Kagari. That wasn't part of the plan. Of course, that meant I had to use the computer that controls the time machine more than I meant to. And they drained the battery. The battery is actually closer to running out than the fuel. It'll, hard, it'll be hard to make the machine jump the way it's supposed to. <laughs> Surprise, this Dara. This is the Pikachu face! If it's just a battery, can we swap it or recharge it? No. Can I take a look? Dara always had potential of being a more relatable character. Indeed. Emote. Oh, I didn't screenshot it. Fuck. Suzuha nodded and pointed to a piece of the core of the machine. Daru leaned his huge body forward to take a look, but he soon gave a moan of confusion. What is this? The battery was the same size as a car's, but it was the product of 2036's tech, and Daru lived to the year 2010. There was probably no way he could understand it. From Daru's perspective, it might as well have been a black box of unknown technology. A quick look wouldn't tell him anything about how it was built or how it would work. That was the reason why Suzaha agreed to let him look at it. I don't think you can do anything with 2010's technology. It's basically the same as a disposable battery. You can't charge it, you can't swap it. Can you replace it with a battery or generator from this time? She shook her head. I tried that a long time ago. It didn't work. 
I asked Rumi to give me a car battery, one of the big ones they use in trucks. I hooked it up and it didn't last a second. What'd you say? I tried a gas-powered generator that didn't work either. I can't even imagine how much gasoline you need. We can't fit that much gas inside the machine anyway. Rumi went through a lot of trouble to get me one of the latest fuel cell batteries. But even that wasn't enough. Future tech is amazing. All that power and something this small? He was staring in amazement at the futuristic battery. If only we could use garbage as fuel, like in that one science fiction movie. How long is this going to last? Probably one or two more jumps at most. That's all? While the machine shut down, it's still calculating gravity fields and positional coordinates constantly. Even if we don't jump, the battery will run out. We've got another six months of battery at most before we lose the ability to do an accurate jump. So that's all the time we've got to save Makisa Kurisu. I agree that people shit on Okabe for what he does a bit too much. I guess that's what happens with trauma and coping with it. Yeah, like I said, I mean, I understand that he's facing trauma, but shit, man. This trauma is really coming at the cost of a lot of stuff. I mean, we know, like I said, I know we know he eventually gets over it, but, like, it's rough in the moment to be experiencing it, especially because we know the end. I think people would be more sympathetic towards the trauma if we didn't know how it turned out. Um, like, if there wasn't a true end in Steins Gate, I think people would be more sympathetic. Because we know what happens, it's harder to sympathize with his trauma. Because we know he can fix things. Um, so that is something to, important to keep in mind, I think. Suzuha grabbed onto Daru's back and took a deep breath. It was squishy, but it felt good. What happens if the battery runs out and we can't control the machine? We lose control of the Kerr black hole, are trapped beyond the event horizon for all eternity? Yeah, don't say stuff like that. It's bad luck. Yeah, sorry. I wonder what it's like. I wonder if it's calm and quiet like this. It just stays that way. Maybe that wouldn't be so bad. As she clung to her father's warm back, Suzaha started to feel sleepy. If she let her guard down, she was sure she'd fall asleep. She'd been trained to fight it on the battlefield. But this wasn't the battlefield, and she was exhausted from crying. Maybe it wouldn't be so bad to let herself sleep once in a while. Yeah, too bad that this is going to be a bad thing. Someone is watching them, so she really shouldn't be getting into this habit of letting her guard down. So I feel like this is being set up for a tragedy. And as we know, technically Suzaha, as much as we hate to say it, um, is kind of the disposable character, right? Because she's from the separate timeline. She sat down and held her knees like a child and closed her eyes. I see. So Suzaha's leaving before summer ends, no matter what Okarin decides. Just before she fell asleep, she thought she heard her father talking to himself.
Two days later, we're in the Akihabara shops. This is truly paradise. Maho's eyes were shiny like a little girl's. Not many girls would look like that if you brought them to a place like this. Makase is here, but we aren't talking to her, bruh. I was the one who brought her here, but she seemed to have forgotten about me entirely. She was wandering down the corridors where all the computer parts were as if in a daze. Then she came to a stop in front of them. Inside the shops were lots of plastic bins filled with junk parts of all sizes. They had been taken off of discarded PCs and appliances. Each of them was dirty, and a lot of them covered in dust. What's this board do, do you think? It's got a beautiful pattern. It's like a piece of art. It's made out of aluminum. Oh. Yeah? <laughs> An IFX 008's image sensor? I can't believe it! This belongs in a museum! What's it doing here? There's something about Okabe's sprite. His eyes look so dead and tired, and his face seems more pale. That's true. Uh, I mean, some of the other characters, when we've been at their perspective, when they've met Okabe, um, Fubuki's perspective, uh, specifically when she was looking at Okabe, she mentioned that like every time Okabe sighs, that she can sense there's a sadness behind his smile. So that's rough. That his smiles don't seem genuine. Yeah. Akihabara. Akihabara is more amazing than I'd heard. Watching the ecstasy on her face creeped me out a little. This is who Maho really is. AI Kurosu spoke from my phone. Maho had said she wanted to go out with the AI Kurosu today. So I ended up going on a strange date with the two girls at once. Maho's a Kremlin, indeed. This might be another test of Amadeus' capabilities. I've been here a few times, but I've only ever seen one person stare, at loving, stare lovingly at computer parts like that. You're talking about Hashida, right? Uh, no, Ferris. Yeah. What? We saw how thirsty Ferris was for the PCs in this area. Getting my fucking timelines mixed up. I kind of feel bad for Senpai if you can't compare her to him. How does she know Daru is an asshole? From what you said, he's an incredible pervert. That's right. That was rude to Hiajo. It was early afternoon on Sunday. There was a reason I'd come with Maho to the computer parts shop. The doctor and Maho were heading back to America in a few days. Uh-oh. Good things do not happen. She was leaving soon, so she wanted me to show her around Akihabara. Like I promised. That's what her message said. So we met in front of the station in the morning. And I asked her where she wanted to go. This was the result. By the way, our first stop was Yodobashi, and our second, Soft Map. I'd already taken her to a lot of used PC and retro PC shops tucked away in tiny alleys. Do you like these kind of computer parts? It's not the plastic part. It's not the parts, really. I just like building things. I used to make plastic models all the time when I was a kid. Do you make crystal radios and stuff? I burnt myself soldering all the time. Me too. I guess everyone's the same way, aren't they? <laughs> Probably not everybody. 
Actually, I assume it was the minority of people who soldered in their homes growing up. It's still nice that even though Okabe is traumatized, he still goes out to have like normal days and stuff. I could stare at this stuff forever. Why didn't I come sooner, I wonder? I felt like she was never gonna leave unless I dragged her out. I finally managed to succeed in getting her away from the part shop by telling her it was time to eat. Was Kurusu, AI Kurusu still trying to hook us up with Maho? Awkward. We went to the main road. This area was close to the station, so it was especially crowded. I really want him to talk with AI Kurusu about, like, the other world lines and shit, man. I'm sure that'll probably come later in the game, but god, I want it soon. Thanks to the crowds of people waiting across the street, you couldn't even walk in a straight line. They're scared of me getting sailing lessons? No reason to get sailing lessons. Just watch streams of video games on YouTube. Especially people doing visual novels. Now, where should we go to eat? What if I watched those streams in a boat? Then you would be outside, gross. My first idea was the May Queen, but after the way she reacted last time, I thought it was best to avoid it. They should make an ending where Okabe snaps and confesses his love to the AI. Indeed. But like I said, that's the uh, secret route that you get for uh, when the game detects that you have My Darling's Embraced save data. Did someone say boat? <laughs> hey, Matt. Still, Sampo wasn't a good choice for someone new to Akihabara. Gansen? Or maybe the kitchen gyro? Gogo curry would work too. As I stood there thinking, something wrong with boat? Uh, Matt has an obsession with boats. Did you make that Okabe World War 3 Pikachu face thing? The final CG is him kissing his phone screen while everyone was disappointed. Oh. Oh. Hmm? Huh? Maho stopped moving in front of the arcade directly ahead of us. Sash? Yeah, that's pretty <laughs> that's pretty good quality if you made that. Evidently, she was looking at the crane games on the floor. Dude, I'm a fucking beast at crane games. I'm so good at these for no reason. I'm so good at crane games. Can we take a look inside the arcade? I nodded. I am, like, actually so good at crane games. If you uh, watched my video that I posted, like, uh, for Thanksgiving, uh, that was my apartment tour, the two stuffed uh, animals that you can see on my, um, like, arcade cabinets are uh, stuffed animals that I won in Crane Games. It's the, like, Rainbow Dolphin and that Kirby. I'm just, like, really good at them. I've also won other things that, like, uh, I've given to my friends or whatever. Like, if I, for whatever reason, if I've been at, like, an arcade game, or, like, an arcade place with my friends, 
and they're trying to do something with a crane game, I'd be like, give me your give me your money. I'll get it for you. Of course, you can't get everything in crane games. You gotta like know your limits of things that you can actually get, because obviously some items in the crane games are like gimmicks and they're like pinned in like specific ways, so you could obviously never get them. So you can always like look at the crane game and immediately like evaluate, like, okay, you could get these items. Inside the glass were characters from at channel memes, all of different sizes. <laughs> at channel memes give stuffed animals. They pin stuff. Yeah, so you'll notice like some things in the crane games are like um they're not pinned to the floor of the crane game. Um, but they're like they're pinned underneath other stuffed animals, right? So like say you got two stuffed animals and on top of a third one like in the center you're not able to get that third one in the center because the two other ones it's pinned underneath the two other stuffed animals i explained that horribly but you get what i mean because the crane the gripper is not like strong enough to actually like go down past multiple like stuffed animals you basically can only ever get things that are on the top level or surface level. Maybe Maho was a secret at channeler like Kurosu. They were pretty close, so it was possible. Let's ask AI Kurosu. I leaned over to Maho and whispered a magic spell in her ear. Nurupo. Nurupo. Hi. Huh? I just confused her. Oh, we can't bring up their cell phone. I was gonna ask it to AI Kurosu. Damn it. What's a, a null what? And this is why Maho and Okabe are not the same couple. Nothing, forget it. Hmm? Amadeus Kurosu. AI Kurosu was glaring cold daggers at me from inside the smartphone, but I decided to ignore it. No, I want to talk to her. Hiyajo, did you want that stuffed animal? Yeah, it's cute. Isn't it AI Kurosu? Senpai? What? Why do you look so flustered? Uh, nothing. Is the pin intentionally made like that? Yeah. They're usually, like, intentionally crafted by the person setting up the crane machine to bait money out of people. Just like carnival games. I'm just surprised, honestly. You just talked about how much you like computer parts, so I figured your tastes would be more boyish. Okabe, you need to learn some tact. Say something romantic. Like, the gap between my expectations and your reality is really cute. Well, sorry. <laughs> sorry. It's fine, really. Actually, Kurosu had one of these stuffed animals in her bedroom. Did she? Uh, senpai? Maybe. Did she buy it off the internet and have it shipped to America? Does it matter? I guess you can tell she's a secret at channeler. What's an at channeler? Never heard of it. Nurupo. Nurupo. <laughs> Even as part of Amadeus, she hasn't changed. Did Kurisu ever tell you what kind of character this was? No, I asked several times and she kept answering the question. I'm sure. Someone just kind of wondered. This was a different reference in the anime. I noticed, especially in the OG Steinsgate anime, 
Um, the references are localized a bit, so it's something that's uh, a bit more relevant to Western audience. Um, not that you, like you wouldn't get the ones in the Japanese dub, like the original dub, um, but they they get a little bit more localized, which is fine. I mean, I'm a basic ass American. I want shit localized for me. Like I talked about, um, actually, in the Steins Gate anime, one of the things, one of the jokes that was localized for my simple American brain, um, when they kept calling him Super Hacker Daru, uh, they're like, he's a hacker, but he's a hacker. And I was like, what the fuck does that mean? And then I watched the anime, and they were like, yeah, Daru's a hack. And it, like, finally clicked in my head that they were calling him a hack, like someone who was, like, a fraud. And I was like, oh, that makes sense. But, like, when they just kept calling him Super Hacker, but he's a good hacker. I was like, what does that even mean? You're just calling him Hacker twice. But you're saying it with, like, a weird inflection. But then in the English dub, they were like, yeah, he's a hack. And finally, like, I was like, oh my god, I get it. Which I know it's something simple, but, like, just small. The English dub is actually really well done for Steins Gate, where it's got, like, those subtle, like, localizations just to make it a little bit more, like, you for sure get it, even if you're not super into, like, the culture. Which is cool. I like that. Do you know, Okabe, what kind of character this plushie is? Mm. Well... A chill ran down my spine as I heard the angry voice coming from the smartphone. Uh, I, I don't actually know. <laughs> I see. Sheesh. I defended your honor, Kurosu. You better be grateful. Can I give it a try? Play it back on the backlog, can you? I didn't know you could do that. It's that little <laughs> that gets me at the end. <laughs> Kurosu is way crank here. Yeah, well, I think it's because she doesn't have as, um, like the same romantic feeling. AI Kurosu doesn't have the same romantic vi uh, vibe. Um, or like secret crush on Okabe, because she obviously doesn't know him as well. So she's, uh, like more prone to get cranky. Whereas Flesh, uh, <laughs> Flesh. <laughs> Real Kurosu. Um, has a little bit of more of that Sundere like bashfulness around Okabe that the AI Kurzu doesn't have. So we get more of that raw, like real Kurzu rather than Sundere Kurzu. I mean, she's still obviously that's part of her personality, but like it's not to the same extent because she doesn't have a crush on Okabe. At least at this point. Maho took her wallet out of her pocket and put a hundred yen coin into the machine. Kinda mess with the backlog? Only for AI Kurosu, I think. When she does fun stuff like that. You move this arm back and forth to grab the stuffed animal, right? Have you never done this before? Maho only ever plays racing games. That's right. That's so specific. I also like this CG a lot. Oh my god, I just had a good idea for a thumbnail for this too. 
the YouTuber brain in me can no longer look at, like, fucking wallpapers and never, like, not think of a good, like, thumbnail. I just like can't help myself. Maho nodded and pushed the control button, managing to move the arm directly over her target, and she smiled satisfied. It's simple, so you just wait for the arm to automatically grab it, right? Mm. Well, normally, yeah. The arm was slightly uh, straight. The arm went straight for the doll, but the angle was slightly off, and it didn't grab it right. <laughs> Dude, I fucking I'm so glad I predicted her gremlin energy, cause goddamn, if she's not a gremlin in every moment. Okabe's actually on his knees in this pick. I have to keep screenshotting all of these pictures of the game because the CG library doesn't unlock it so you beat the game. That's, <laughs> that's what happens your first time. <laughs> Maho gave it several more tries, but didn't seem to get the hang of it. Oh, rip viewership, by the way. Yeah. She groaned and took out her last 300 yen to the back of the arcade. She walked over to a game with a red and white uh, two-tone Formula One car on the side of the cabinet. She slid it inside, still angry. I remember that one it was a CG game based off of a real circuit. Why doesn't Okabe just win or something? Isn't he good at these games? He was a gamer, right? Before he became depressed? Oh. Uh, Curtis, he was gonna tell him to, yeah? Hmm? What is it? Now's your chance to show your manliness. My manliness? Get the stuff an animal senpai couldn't. And then give it to Maho was what she was trying to say. Manliness aside, after seeing how badly she wanted it, I did want to try and help. I took some coins out of my pocket and checked how much money I was carrying. It's been a while, but let's try it. Honestly, I'm not very good at these games either. <laughs> Mainstream alert. Even so, I was sure I could do better than Maho. Might as well give it a shot. Oh, I thought I was going to get to play. <laughs> uh oh, Chris is getting angry at us. This reminds me of when he was, like, going to play against, uh... Um, Ferris in the Radicon card game. After trying several times, whether it was luck or skill, I managed to get the stuffed animal easier than I'd expected. Yes. Okay. Nice. Nice. I stuffed it into a bag and went back to the racing game Maho was playing. what I found. <laughs> That's similar to what the idea I had. Uh, Vivin.
For some reason, there was a crowd of about 10 people around the game. Wow, who is that girl? Don't ask me. Is she in elementary school? I can't believe how good she is. I think she'll set a new record. Crown, what was your idea? Uh, basically that exact same thing, but with my face. So, very similar to the meme you just posted in my Discord, which anyone can join. Link in the description. If they want to see the meme that Vibin just posted. All of them seem to be amazed. I made my way to the crowd and looked at the screen. The game Maha was playing was one of those where you had to clear each stage in a set time or else it would be game over. With each, uh, with each race, the course got more and more difficult. She was placing first every time. watched in awe, she finally made it to the end of the last stage, well ahead of the other racers, and set a new record. <sighs> Whew. She had a satisfied smile on her face as she looked at the flashy congratulations graphic on the screen. Then she noticed the crowd around her and jerked. <laughs> hey, you set the new record for our store! An arcade employee walked over and started to clap. Then the crowd started to clap. Uh, uh? Her face went beet red. I should probably help. I pushed my way through the crowd and grabbed her hand to pull her off. Let's go. Yeah, weak ass claps. She doesn't even get a prize for setting the record. They just went congrats. I never seen her this obedient. We made our way through the hustle and bustle and finally got out of the arcade. She sighed in relief. That was careless of me. What was? I got mad and got serious. Because of this? I handed her the bag with my primes in it. Huh? She opened the bag and took out the stuffed animal. This, you got it? I got lucky. You can have it as a present. Really? Won't do me any good. See how the thing is happy? I don't experience that anymore. So, you might as well have it. Uh, oh, okay. I'll take it then. She hugged the doll tight to her chest with the innocent smile of a child. Seeing how happy she was made me happy too. I think you just remembered where the route split. Oh, did I miss it? After Kurisu died, her mom showed me a lot of the things she left behind. But this was something Kurisu really loved. Her mom kept it in her own bedroom. This AI person, no. If you didn't know it was from an at channel meme, it was actually pretty cute. I could see her keeping it as a memory of her daughter. But after what happened to Kurosu's house, I'm sure it burned up too. So can I give this to her mom in America? Of course. Do you think she'll like it? That's what would be best. Thanks. What next? Any place else you'd want to see? I guess you wouldn't be interested in any anime or game stores. Why is Karisu blushing? Because it was a nice gesture for her? Hey, I, Karisu. I'm sorry, but can you leave me alone with Okabe for a little while? Huh? 
Hey, you finally decided to be honest with yourself. Okabe, don't screw this up. Huh? Good luck. Bye. Uh, there's one more place I want to go. Yeah? Where? Is it someplace she didn't want Kurosu knowing about? You can guess where, right? Oh, she's gonna say the Radikan. The smile was gone. She looked like she'd come to some kind of decision. Then I realized where. Take me to Radikan. She wanted me to take her there? I understood. Because that was where Makise Kurosu had died. I had gone up to the roof several times since then. The time machine was there, and Suzuha and Daru would go up once in a while to do maintenance. Just a few days ago, Suzuha had called me out there and pointed a gun to my face. But even so, I'd never been back to that soul room, or the eighth floor where it happened. So he's gotta be really careful when he shows her around here, right? He can't know where she died. I mean, he does, but she can't know that he knows where she died. I couldn't bring myself to do it. Just remembering what happened was enough to cause a severe flashback. There was no way I could visit the site of her death. Are you okay? You look really pale. Are you thinking about Kurosu? Yeah. You don't have to come with me if it's going to be hard. I'll go by myself. Her face was colorless. Going there had to be hard on her, too. But even so, she was trying to come to grips with Kurosu's death. And I wanted to help her remember our friend. The Radikan was going to be renovated. There wasn't a lot of time. Yeah. No. I'll go with you. Hey, I remember this place. Half of the shops had already been moved to another building to make way for the renovation. But many of the shops on the seventh floor were still open. <laughs> Six months ago, on July 28th, I killed Kurosu on the floor just above where I was standing. With my own hands. Is this the place? Yeah. No, it happened on the next floor. That, that, that's what I was told. I wasn't supposed to have been at the scene. I had already asked Mayuri and Daru not to tell anyone. What's upstairs? An event hall and some storerooms and stuff. Can we go? Should be off limits now. The rope that always blocked off the way to the 8th floor wasn't there. I could hear loud voices and laughter. Since it was a day off, there must have been some kind of event going on. Looks like it's okay. Maho headed up. I dragged myself up. We passed the event hall and into the back. It looked like there was no one around. Nothing has changed. This is it. There were no lights on and the place seemed dark and lonely. This time the storeroom was locked. So it was a place like this. I could see her lips trembling as she whispered. It seemed strange. This was the place where Kurosu had died, covered in her own blood. And yet nearby, the rest of the world continued on like it didn't care. Now I'd come back, even though this was the place where the one I loved had died. It's frustrating. I'm not a physicist, so I don't know all there is to know about relativity theory, but... If space and time are the same thing, 
Then why can't we move through time as easily as we can move through space? Spatially, we're on the same axis as Karizu's death. But that tiny little gap on the temporal axis means there's nothing we can do. <laughs> you asked AI Karizu. I mean, Amadeus Karizu. An interesting question before. Whether or not it was possible to create a time machine. Yeah. I'd love if you could look into it. I volunteered for the first man test. I couldn't tell from the tone of her voice if she was being serious or joking, but she laughed, sadly. Time machines are real, you know, and there's one right above us. What would she do if I told her that? Would she blame me for giving up on saving Kurosu and say she'd go back to the past herself? Okabe-san. Okabe, can you tell me about how Kurosu died? I don't know the details. I don't really know myself. Didn't I tell you before? But you know more than I do, right? I was in America. What was Kurosu doing at a place like this? On the day she died, there was an event going on like the one happening now, right? We could hear the occasional sounds of laughter coming from the hall. I mean, I feel like this would be a good time to explain that her, that, um, uh, Kurisu's dad was having an event here. And it would kind of shift with suspicion off on us. Off from us. Because the obvious, like, victim... Or the pers the obvious person who committed the crime would be Kurosu's dad. But then since he's under Russian protection right now, there was no way Maho could do anything about it. So we just explained, yeah, her father was holding an event about time travel. Oh, never mind, she already knows. Careful, this might be an interrogation. Well, luckily he had the world line slip just a little bit ago where the person tricked him into saying something he didn't mean to say, so he should be at least kind of aware of what that kind of situation happening again. Especially because Maho is smart. Dr. Nakabachi made the news last summer. I heard that he sought asylum in Russia and wrote a paper on time machines. <sighs> Supposedly, the paper itself was terrible. But that made me remember something. Those guys who set fire to Kurosu's house in America were speaking Russian. Is that a coincidence, you think? Okabe about to have that fucking heart attack. Better take his anxiety meds. I think these two events are connected somehow. So I decided to look into Dr. Nakabachi. Strangely, there's barely any info on him. If you look online, you won't even find his real name. Most blogs and websites that talk about him are gone, and all of them disappeared in the last six months. Tell me, what was Kurosu caught up in? Is it perhaps still going on? Are you hiding something? Don't dig too deep, yeah, right? Her eyes were pure and sought the truth. Kurosu used to get that exact same look in her eyes all the time. You shouldn't get involved out of curiosity. I'm done with this. It's too late. I'm already involved. And I've been wondering if the reason we were attacked before wasn't because of me. Because of you? Is there a reason someone would come after you? I... She paused. I have some of Kurosu's belongings. Oh, is she the one that went to Daru to get the computer hacked? Belongings? What does she mean? Mahu had said that after Kurosu had died, she'd gone to her home in America and received some of her belongings from her mom. Was she saying now the attack was because of that?
my mind began to race. Russia. Where Dr. Nakabachi had sought asylum. The people who attacked Kurosu's home speaking Russian. And a few days ago, the Russians had experimented with changing the past. Suzaha had said that World War III would be set off by the time machine. The time machine. Nakabachi's paper. The paper he'd written about the time machine. The cause of World War III. Oh, does he not know in this timeline what Kurosu's paper is? I thought when he did the time loop and killed her, he still figured out what was on the paper. That's how he knew to switch the Upas, right? So he still knows. A, mirac a miraculous and nightmarish paper which would cause the death of 5.7 billion people. The time machine he discussed at the press conference was a ripoff of John Titor. But the one in his paper was different. I never managed to read it, though. Well, my guess was that Kurosu had showed him the original that she'd written on July 28th, and his paper was a copy. Kurosu had written down instructions for making the time machine. I shuddered. I quickly booted up the Rhine program on my smartphone. I paged through chat logs. That hard drive and the laptop contained the data for the original version of Nakabachi's paper, or more accurately, Kurosu's. Kurosu's laptop and hard drive, which were given to Daru, was the person who gave them to him. I looked at Maho. She looked back at me without smiling. <laughs> she nodded. Yeah. yeah. It was me. From her perspective, there were too many things about Kurosu's death that didn't make sense. Maybe that was why she decided she had to look into why Kurosu was killed. Of course, she'd assumed there were hints hidden inside her laptop and hard drive. But if my hypothesis was right, that laptop was too dangerous to be allowed to exist. It was Pandora's box but with the power to unleash World War III. Why didn't you tell me? At first, I didn't know you and Daru were friends. It was really just a coincidence. It seemed to me like you were hiding something about Kurosu. Do you really think I'd tell you everything? It's not that I didn't trust you, but... I thought it would best to be cautious when it came to Kurosu. You were right about that. Was letting me test Amadeus part of your plot? Don't call it a plot. You were Kurosu's friend. I wanted to know more about you. To find her secrets? I want to know more about her. She glared right back as if challenging me. Has Daru cracked it? Not yet. That's why I wanted to talk to you before I head back. That's why she brought me here. I need to call Daru right now. Phone or Ryan, which was better. So this must be the, um... He's gonna tell Daru not to crack it, right? If I do the call, I'm not going to. Oh, I don't have a choice. Hey, mush mush. Yeah, hello. Ima. You at the lab? No. Yeah. Where are you? At home fapping. <laughs> What's up? I want to talk to you about your part time job. Oh. You remember any info on Makise? Oh. Yeah. Daru moment. Of course, that was a lie. 
He could be in danger if I didn't get that laptop back right now. I glanced over at Maho. Hey, you send it over Ryan, then. Let's talk in person. Can you meet at the lab? I'm tied up right now. Can you wait till the evening? Play your hentai games later, man. So I, was, I lied about the age games. I'm actually busy. Your job? Well, I was lying to him too, so I didn't really have room to talk. Gotta sleep? Hey, have a good night, man. I'm probably gonna wrap up this stream pretty soon too, but thanks for stopping by and chatting, dude. Because I imagine the end of the chapter is here, because we just had, like, this is the chapter split moment, I'm pretty sure. Tomorrow I'm, I'm playing a different game, but still stay tuned for the stream regardless. Okay. Where are you really? If you can't leave, I'll come to you. I just need to talk to you right now. Yeah, we're going to play Muck tomorrow. Because <laughs> why not? I was promised big views if I do Muck, so we'll see. I really don't want to tell you. I do a lot of dangerous work. I have no idea what muck is. I really don't either. Don't make Joe sad. And I won't. I won't. Well, whatever. Come to the address I'm about to text you. The location he gave me but still was still in Akihabara, less than five minutes away. We just left? We didn't even, like, talk to, uh, Maho about it? Seriously? That seems weird. Down an alley and a few turns off the main strip, all the hustle and bustle of the crowd disappears. We are on the seventh floor of an old mixed-use building in Akihabara, at the center of Tokyo, in the middle of the day on Sunday, and still the alleyways we'd come in seem abandoned. There we found the shop Dara told us about. Oh. Oh. Cosplay Media at Akihabara! We're open. There was a cute anime style sign on the steel door that read Cosplay Media. We're open. Really? Where are you now? Akihabara. Then we sh uh, then should we meet you and we're once we, you and Akihabara when we're done shopping? I'm heading home once I'm done. Meet me there. Don't come to Akihabara under any circumstances. Why? Because I said. Just wait. But if I don't contact you by evening, give up and go home. Got it? What happened? I'm fine. Don't worry. Okay, if you say so. We'll wait till evening. See you later. I just saved their lives. <laughs> Lamau, if you look at the cosplay, this is a Kurosu cosplay. Right here. I'm sure a lot of these are references to their other games, but this one right here that I'm circling the mouse around, that's a Kurosu. I don't recognize most of the other ones. This place would be heaven for Mayuri. Yeah. This store was jammed full of cosplay outfits. The wall near the entrance held the new arrivals corner and popular cosplay sections, as well as wigs, ribbons, jewelry, and props. The other wall held the used outfit section, and a masseuse section stocked with socks, shoes, heels, and boots. 
Even further back, I could see rows of school swimsuits and competition swimming outfits. It looked like the place mainly sold to girls, but this clearly wasn't a location where women would feel comfortable. The other tenants in the building were all shady shops with names like Drops of the Spirit God, Space Radio Receiver Sales, Flower Petal Video Project. You ever been here before? No. Last time we met it was a different building, but it wasn't much better than this though. I see. I felt like I'd just seen Daru's dark side. The shop was silent. There were no customers. There was a thin man with long hair at the counter who looked like he worked there, but he didn't even raise his head up when he came in. To be honest, ever since I'd entered, I worried that someone would think I was up to something illegal. Anyone who saw me would think I was a pervert taking a middle school girl to a shady cosplay shop. Oi, Ocarine, good tea. Hey, Ocarine. Daru appeared from the back. There had been no sign of him a second ago. Hey, Mao's with you? Hey, Kyler. Would you stop calling me Mao Tan? Route change coming up? Okay. Why? It's cute. I actually already saved a bit ago. I feel like I'm being insulted. Look at that. Where'd you come from, Daru? The man at the counter still hadn't said anything. Which meant they knew he was here. Come with me. Daru headed to the back. One of the rows of hangar racks, holding idle cosplay outfits, was pulled forward. And behind him, I could see a curtain. Past the curtain was a tiny space that led to a door marked staff only. If the hangar rack hadn't been moved, I'd had no idea this was here. It's like an old ninja mansion. <laughs> Behind the door was a cramped office. Why does Daru have like three different offices? I don't recognize any of these. I recognize this is an iPhone. But yeah, I don't recognize any of the figures or anything. In six screens, dude, he's a hacker, man. Well, the room itself might have been big, but the darkness made it feel cramped. It was honestly hard to breathe. There were four desks in the uh, center surrounded by metal racks. The desks and floors were piled high with all manner of computers and peripherals. There were boxes and bags littered everywhere. I couldn't tell if they were trash or not. There were towers of magazines and games and plastic models and figure boxes. And the desk was covered in garbage, just like the one at the lab. It was too dark to tell, but I sh was sure the figures he had on display were covered in dust. What did he need six monitors for? Each of them displayed an image of the store. Evidently, it was footage from a security camera. Given the size of the store and lack of customers, even three cameras would have been too many. Yeah, sit down, I guess. There's no place to sit down. I'll make you space. Daru kicked aside boxes to make room and set down two chairs. What's the deal with you and this shop? I'm kind of like the leader of us part-timers. I work for a lot of underground places like this. Sometimes they let me use their office. For your secret job. Yep. Maybe there was a lot more to Daru than I thought. 
ここにあるものは全部お前の私物かいや他のバイトのみんなとの共有財産的なやつ。そんなにこんなにたくさん買えるほどお金持ってない。Or so he said, but who, know if, who knew if that was true? Hmm? hmm? So this must be the.、Uh... I'm answering the Amadeus call. Hi, Kurusu. Nanda. What is it? You're still with Maho, right? Oh, oh. oh yeah. Why? What's up? Wait a minute, isn't she not supposed to contact us? Like, aren't we supposed to contact her first? I just heard from the doctor. The office in Waco City has been ransacked by someone. Huh? And he got a call from Maho Senpai's hotel. Someone raided it too. What? You should hear from the doctor soon, but I wanted to tell you ASAP. Thanks, AI Kurosu. Daro and I are out looking, er, are looking out for Haijo, so don't worry. That's right. I'm counting on you guys. Bye. Maho looked down and bit her lip. This is what I was afraid would happen. They're after Kurusu's laptop and hard drive. Seriously? I should really. I think this place is safe, though. I've got a bad feeling. Intuition, you could call it. Got him. Where is the laptop and hard drive? He sighed and grabbed a locked fire resistant case off one of the racks and opened it. Is that where he hid it? It was a deep red Japanese model with a 12 inch LCD screen. The hard drive was American, from a brand known for equipping its drives with a shock resistant rubber case. Let's take it and get out. They both nodded. As soon as we left, I could see a car coming down the empty alley. It was a big American RV. We quickly hid ourselves in the shadow of another building. Intuition was right. The RV stopped in front of the building we'd just left. Three men came out, none of them Japanese. They were all dressed in、uh, black suits, almost like MIBs. Whatever they were, they weren't tourists. Close. Maho went pale when she saw the men go in the building. She seemed to be shaking a bit, too. This is like a movie. I can't believe it's real. How'd they find out about that place? You sure you didn't screw up somehow, Daru? Who do you think I am? A super hacker, right? Yeah, I make sure I don't get caught. Either that or、uh, Maho and I were tailed. Don't scare me. They raided your office and hotel room. I'm sure they've been watching you for a while. Right. She seemed to suddenly remember something. She took out her smartphone and made a call. I need to contact the professor. You should tell him to hide somewhere. If we meet up with him, we should put him in danger. How are you liking Zero? I'm enjoying it a lot. Okabe took Maho to Ferris's home. It was on the top floor of a high rise building in the center of Akihabara. If nothing else, it was sure to be more secure than the ancient building they'd just been in. Ferris welcomed the two of them. Offering them food and a place to sleep. Daru returned alone to the future gadget lab to meet up with Suzaha. The mere existence of this laptop could bring disaster. So why doesn't he destroy it? 
手放した方がいい。We should get rid of it. Still on chapter two? Uh, no. We're technically on chapter three, but chapter two was super short, like only two hours, so. I think we ended chapter two, like, right after you、uh, went to sleep. So I decided to keep going, but now chapter three is overstaying its welcome. Because I'm trying to make dinner. Just kidding, it's not overstaying its welcome, but I'm too stubborn about going until the chapter is over. Oh, and stretching. Anyway, once they both calmed down, she started to talk to him about what they were going to do with Kurosu's computer. He didn't budge. Usually, he was an introvert who never pushed too hard for anything, but this time he was stubborn. Of course, so was Maho. I want to at least crack the password and see what's inside. Couldn't Okabe just say what's inside? Like, yeah, I know what's in here. Fuck this shit. Hang on one second. Thanks for the emojis, everybody. I think this is the first time we've ever had an extended conversation looking at Okabe. It's almost weird that there was a perspective shift for this. Right now, we can't do that, but. There's no time for that. We should get rid of it now. The best thing would be to destroy it. It's not like. The, like Russian people coming after them would know he destroyed it. This is something Chris who left us. You know? I thought you were more logical than this. I didn't think you were so cold. His words, or er, Maho's words, made him flinch. Something bad had happened to him. That's how it seemed to her. It was easy to assume it had something to do with Kurosu. So she decided to ask him what she hadn't gotten to earlier during the fuss this afternoon. You seem like you're hiding something about what happened to Kurosu. <laughs> what I know doesn't matter. Maho could tell he wasn't going to share. If they hadn't been up interrupted this afternoon, would he have told her? Anyway, what should we do with the computer? That computer isn't just something an old friend used anymore. It's at the center of an international power struggle. What kind of crazy conspiracy is this? You, think it's, you still think it's a conspiracy after what happened today? You saw those foreigners in the black suits, didn't you? Your office and your hotel ransacked. So it's a fire to Kurosu's house? And then after that, your lab was visited by mysterious men claiming to be from the FBI? And the attack on the hotel might have had something to do with this too? All these impossible events keep happening one after another? It's not a coincidence. But still, an international power struggle? The whole, thing seemed, the whole thing seemed like too much of a stretch. Trying to connect every single event was a trap that conspiracy theorists often fell into. But in fact, most things that happened didn't really mean anything. 
When she began to tell him that, what he said next surprised her. John Titor's prophecy is going to come true now. John Titor? Aho had never heard that before. A time traveler from the year 2036 who appeared on American message boards 10 years ago. I know for a fact he's real. I've met him myself. John Titor says World War III will occur in 2015. The cause will be the time machine. Are you making fun of me? I'm being serious. You wanted to know about Dr. Nakabachi, right? He's Kurusu's father. It's possible that Kurusu may have been involved in the paper he wrote. What'd you say? Maho had read Dr. Nakabachi's paper out of curiosity. Last summer, he proudly announced his paper on time travel to the entire world before fleeing to Russia. The paper itself, however, was so poorly written that it was of no value. She couldn't believe Kurosu might have been involved in writing it. What if his version was an inferior copy of an original that Kurosu wrote? What's inside Kurusu's computer doesn't matter. What matters is there are people who want it. Again, though, they just, if he just randomly destroys it, like, what good will that do? Give me a second. I need to process this. Could what Okabe was saying be true? She took a moment to think. Normally, she wouldn't give something like this a second thought. But what had been happening lately wasn't just normal. She couldn't outright deny it. Besides, she was nursing a conspiracy of her own. I also thought someone might be after this. But what you're saying is so different than what I expected. What did you expect? I thought it might be about using Amadeus for military purposes. Kurusu spent a lot of time with the Psycho's uh, physiology lab. She said sometimes she'd be visited by people who looked like they didn't belong. She said she thought they were from the Department of Defense. Can Amadeus kill someone? How? For example, you could take the memories of a veteran pilot and copy them to use to control uh, drones. Remember what I said about the medical applications? Copying memory data back to the brain. If you can alter memory data and send it back to the brain, you can make soldiers who didn't feel fear. Or you could carry out any kind of unethical mission without hesitation. My thought was that Kurosu had found proof that they were running experiments like that. And Kurosu was already wrapped up in all kinds of conspiracies before she came over here. Hey. Hey, morning from Denmark. Well, good night from mid uh, Midwest US. Welcome, man. The U.S. military isn't involved in researching Armadeus, are they? Of course not. Are you sure? You're just a scientist, not head of the project. The doctor won't let the military get involved. You're right. All that happened in another world line. World line? What are you talking about? Forget it. I'm overthinking it. It's 2 a.m. in my area. He didn't seem like he really meant that. And that really bothered her. She wanted to hear about, more about John Titor, but he didn't tell her anything else. 
She couldn't crack the security on Kurzu's laptop and hard drive. It did Maho no good to carry them. And just like Okabe said, the attackers scared her. So she decided she had no choice but to give them to him. He didn't tell her whether he was going to destroy them or not. Maho, Bujide Yokata. Keep that ominous for a bit. Maho, I'm so glad you're safe. When she arrived at the office in Wako City, the doctor was already there. He came over and gave her a big hug. Jojo. Professor, you're hurting me. Oh, Sumanai. Sorry. <laughs> She'd heard that the office had been ransacked, but whatever had happened had already been cleaned out. Did you clean this place? It was ransacked, but only your and my things were, so there wasn't a lot to begin with. I left the rest to the hands of the police. Two days had passed. Nine a.m. Oh yeah, you're just waking up. Maho had spent both of the days at Ferris's house, and only today had she gotten in touch with the doctor, gone to Wako City to get her things. They were both going back tomorrow, just as planned. That meant they were saying goodbye. They still haven't caught the guy who did it, right? Oh. Yeah. It's been one thing after another since we came to Japan, hasn't it? Sure has. The two of them looked around the office. It's been busy for the last two months. So what do you think? Japan's your other homeland, right? What'd you make of it? Can't wait to get back and start my research. I feel like I've been doing nothing but putting reports together for the last two months. <laughs> You're so serious. That and I'm glad I was able to experience the place where Kurosu spent her last days. She still hadn't figured out why Kurosu had died. Actually, she had more questions now. It bothered her to go home with so many questions left unanswered. If only Okabe had told her everything. Come to think of it. The thought suddenly occurred to Maha. What are we doing with the Amadeus tester? Of course she meant Okabe. If they both were heading back to America, that meant his time as a tester was over. That's right. For some reason, the professor was taking a moment to think it over. She wondered what there was to think about. テストはこのままは続けてもらおうと思って。え?本気ですか?いや、serious?実際、ウィンターロと、あ、そうか。It'll be fine. I believe in Lenta alone. Not about whether you believe him or not. If he stays on as a tester, you'll still be able to talk to him, you know? I don't have anything to do with this. You sure? I'm sure. Then I'll take over dealing with the low. But that doesn't bother me. It seemed like he wasn't telling her something, but she was too embarrassed to question him further. It surprised her, though, that she was so focused on Ritura. He seemed to have taken a real liking to him since they had first met. Did he simply like the guy? Or was it because he was Kurosu's friend? Or was it something else? She didn't know. 
I'm really hoping he just stays a, uh, a good guy. I don't want there to be any dramatic plot twist around him. I need one stable good guy in this game. And I want it to be him. They'd return to America via the Narita airport, just like they planned. Okabe had come to see them off. He was very surprised when the doctor had asked him to continue being a tester. And then half a year passed. Wow, okay. The stigma beyond the hidden mirror. Oh, we're at VCU now. All right, guys. After eight hours, and all these different fucking saves I got here going, I think it's time to wrap up the stream for the day. It's been quite the stream. We uh, finished up quite a few chapters, technically two chapters today, right? I think one might have been shorter because of uh, one, some of our like route splits or something, but because route chapter two was a lot that hard or a lot shorter than I thought. But we completed both the X Day Protocol and Pandora's Box. So hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, there's a reason there's so many save spots. Yeah. I can see that. Ah, don't worry, Kyler, it'll be fun. You can leave comments as you watch the VOD, or you can just talk to us about it on Discord. Live reaction. <laughs> I'm just messing, of course. I'm assuming you're probably gonna play Fortnite while watching the or while listening to the VOD in the background. But that's why I read all of the uh the lines anyway, so you kinda can not like hundred percent focus on the stream and still get what's going on in the game. Uh but yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed. Tomorrow, we're doing the Muck stream, finally. I'm sure some of you guys have seen Joe show up a lot to donate money, requesting the the, uh, the Muck stream, but now that he's finally donated enough money for me to purchase the game, I've decided we can do a Muck stream, finally. Why not? Uh, the game is free on Steam if you want to uh, join us. Uh, so feel free to come tomorrow, hang out, chat, Muck better not suck. That's what I'm saying, gamer. He promised me lots of views and an amazing game, so let's see it. Uh, so come for the stream tomorrow. It is multiplayer. Uh, as far as I know, anyway. It might be on console, but I downloaded it on Steam. And then uh, I probably won't return to Steins Gate until um, next... Do we... Yeah, technically it's next week. You don't read verbatim? I pretty much do. I pretty much do. I mean, I stop and go on a tangent every once in a while, but then I pretty much read verbatim. I guess I do ad-lib a couple things here and there just to make it so I don't have to repeat the same fucking words over and over again, but, you know, whatever. I make it better. Uh, yeah, so tomorrow we're doing Muck. Monday I haven't decided what I'm doing yet. Uh, maybe Pokemon, because I really want to get to the post game so I can play it more. I'd farm some of the Paradox Pokemon off stream. And then um, Tuesday I usually don't stream, but I guess Wednesday we'll probably be back with Steins Gate, or maybe Wednesday I'll do Pokemon. Undecided. But either way, whatever I do decide on, of course, you can subscribe and hit the bell button to not miss out on whatever I do decide to stream. Like I said, if you like my inane commentary, um, on whatever, you know, on this game, you'll like me in other games. I'm kind of the same. You're gonna miss the best Pokemon Charizard? I actually got surprise traded at Charmander already, so whatever, close enough. Um, yeah, subscribe, hit the bell button. Like the video if you could. Helps boost me in the YouTube algorithm, though I actually don't think that'll matter this much because of all the copyrights I get on these streams, but whatever. Um, it makes me feel good inside. Every time I get one of those likes, a little bit of dopamine goes off in my brain, and as you know from Curse's brain science, dopamine equals brain good. Brain feel good with dopamine, so drop those likes. Um, 
But more importantly, join the Discord channel to chat with everybody. <laughs> the mock stream is not copyrighted, but who knows? It might have some uh, crazy music in there. So who knows? But yeah. Thanks for watching, everyone. I already did all the outro stuff. You don't need anything else from me. Subscribe, bell button for stream notifications, like the video, join the Discord. And yeah, thanks for hanging out and chatting. See you over on Discord later. Have a good night. Well, I'm probably falling asleep immediately after the stream, but it's 2 a.m. where I'm at. But when I wake up, chat with you guys then.